Okay, enough of that Tetras, Tetras hole music. Because it's Space Marine time. It's been ages since I've played Space Marine, so I've been really looking forward to it. Funnily enough, hmm, I hate this label by the way. Why do they put labels? Don't be removed. Um, funnily enough, I uh, bought another copy of Space Marine 40k from CX on the weekend for Xbox 360. And uh, when I got home, I realized I already had at least one copy of it already. But I think for one pound or one pound fifty, whatever it cost me, it's a good investment to have as a spare, isn't it? Now, this is the PC version. And of course, I haven't played the PC version in donkey's years. So I can't remember actually how you play it. I was really hoping to play a different game. Uh, I'm really into kind of trying to get into Rage at the moment. But my kids are on the Xbox, so I was just like, okay, I just I just need to shoot something. So it's going to take me time to get reacquainted with this. So I guess that's the mouse wheel. I have to admit, it doesn't seem optimal way of choosing weapons. Oh, but you can use number keys. That's one bolt pistol, two bolter, three stalker bolter, and vengeance launcher. They all sound exciting. Again, can't remember how they work, but let's see if we can figure it out. So I'm pushing Q, doesn't seem to do anything. Pushing E, doesn't do anything. Right. <laughs> That's probably just not the way to go. Now, and if I recall when we were playing this last time, which is probably uh, many moons ago, probably like six months ago, we got to the point where we had destroyed some of the... Uh, bad guy's infrastructure by loading a dodgy bullet into a cannon. I think that was the, the mission. So this is... Oh, I tell you what, it does feel weird trying to get used to these controls again. Pick up purity seal. Oh. Okay, so I've got my purity seal. Marksman mode. Fury allows you to enter marksman mode. Time slows down. Use T to enter fury mode. Then left control to... It's, oh, okay. We'll try it. If we remember all these keys. Oh, no. I think this is that mission with the gun. Oh, you're learning Arabic. Well, how are you? How are you? I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to remember some Arabic myself. To be honest with you, now you've you've typed some in. Um, I'm trying to think. How would you say how are you in Arabic? Kifa. Right. How do we do a zoom? Zooming would be good. It good. No, oh my word, that's not what we want. Ah, left control. Remember, we were talking about the marksman mode. That was left control. And do tell me if you'd like this. Uh, oh, Kiefer, Kief Harlek. See, I was kind of there. I was kind of there. Oh, my word. Now, that what just happened there is that, and the reason I'm dying, or about to die if I'm not careful, is there's these weird little pig things, and if they attack you, they blow up. They're like bombs. Kill it all! Howard, kill it! Do I need to turn this brightness up? It's feeling a bit dark to me. The old ga- Oh, what's the difference between gamma and brightness? Does anybody know? Is there a difference? Ooh, it does look a little bit better. I'm quite good at Arabic. Because I knew Keith Harlick. <laughs> Shukran. Right. Oh, 
Oh, there might be a run button. Yeah. So I'd really want to get into the... Uh, the frame rate's a little slow. Tell you what. We can, we can deal with that. We can deal with that. Options. Uh, I say we can deal with it. There's like nothing here about the whole uh, video. <laughs> oh, maybe you have to quit the mission. Let's try. Let's try that. Oh, fair fight. It might just be you. Howard says his frame rate's fine. So. So it's at 16 by 900, 1600 by 900. Twelve eighty by seven twenty. We could try that. Oh, it's made the window so tiny now. That's fine. I can use my uh, amazing OBS technologies here to uh, compensate for that. They always say I'm compensating for something. There. Let's try that. Otherwise, I'm going to be playing in a teeny tiny window rather than full screen. <laughs> oh, right. So it's the game. Hey, happy Friday to you too. Bugger off. Do any of you ever play the games with the Xbox controller? Because I think sometimes it might be better. You know, like they might just be optimised for that now. And I think it's gone dark again. Because um, I don't seem to have too much trouble with these games on uh, consoles these days. Whereas before I used to hate it originally when you'd play on a console. So I think consoles have got really good. Maybe they cheat. Right. We're good. And you have checkpoints in this game, so you don't have to worry about... I can play uh, full screen, uh, Jason, but I wanted to composite a bit nicer because you see this text up here. Often it wasn't very visible, and in fact, with this back office show do for here. Ah, what the hell is that? Woohoo! Hello. Hello. Hello, you. Oh, look, you can have a little logo. Isn't that sweet? A little logo. I like that. I'm going to put a little logo there. What I mean is that um, this writing here, if I get rid of that off somewhere, off this screen, you see now you can read this text because the people complaining that this part here wasn't visible but now it should be really visible because well I've done that it's done it's good back to the game so there should be loads of people going to the play exp oh f hang on a minute That was left shift I pushed, and it brought up the Steam menu. Right, so we've got our ammo. We've got to load it up. Where do we go? These guys want to go in here, so it's probably this way. So if something's glowing in this game, I think it... Uh... Oh, use your left hand for the mouse. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Microsoft Flight Sim. I, I'm really curious to see what that's like. Okay, so so far I was doing really badly there. At least I learned how to reload. Come on, Neil, you got to try the odd modern game. These are really good. It's not modern because if you can buy it on Xbox 360 for a pound, it means it's retro. Gun firing in three, two, one. Get the shell into that loader. I 
God, I love this game. I, I think space marine suits are awesome too. I don't really... I used to like want to. I used to want to play the game, so I had all the models, but I didn't have any friends. So I used to just spend all my time painting them and nobody to play with. And I started to like a little bit about the whole mythos of it and the uh, characters and whatnot. Holy smokes! Run away! How did that? I was gonna say, how did I ever do this? Clearly, I never done it before because otherwise we would have been further in progress. Holy schmoly. Look at the state of it. See if I can pick some people off. Whoa, little fudge bandits. You're not getting my fudge. Yeah. I don't know if it's the games. Is it really that bad? There must be something between OBS. Recording. Do you see what I mean? Like the screen capture or something. <laughs> right, okay, okay, let's calm down a bit. So, what I'm hearing is that the frame rate is suffering somewhat when the action is getting a bit frantic. Am I hearing the right thing? If someone can tell me then, how many kilobytes per second it should be? I will up my bandwidth. Because maybe OBS isn't just giving up enough bandwidth. Right. Let me check this out, guys. So you're saying the streaming output is stuttering like a very stuttery, stuttery thing. Um... Let's up it a bit, shall we? If I may. And we'll see what happens. Wave your arms around. Wave your arms in the air like you just don't care. Oh. Okay, so let's science this. You're saying it's dropped again. Okay, the game's paused. That's that's fact. Hmm. All right. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it science-wise here. So the game is... You're saying it's maxing out... Oh, well, it is using quite a lot of CPUs, thinking about it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can we set processor affinity anymore? Do you remember that in the olden days, you used to be able to set processor infinity, infinity affinity, and uh, give each task its own processor? Why don't you want your own processor? Stop 
stop sh being selfish. I think it wants to be selfish and just use up all my CPU bits. Game playing is bad FPS on everything. And that's playing it in teeny tiny res in a window. So D-type Jag. Um, yeah, well, I, I guess I could quit the mission because I didn't get anywhere again. Ah, this is the modern gaming. Modern gaming and streaming. And Neil, I think you're right. Back to Specky Games. I was thinking of playing some Manic Miner anyway, to be honest with you. Might be the only option here. So let's just knock all this down to nothing then. Shadows low, visual effects low, post-processing off, vertical sync off, ambient occlusion off, everything off. It's like we're gaming on a Xbox original now at this point, aren't we? I don't know, D-Type Jag, if it's the game's fault or if it's maybe my driver's fault or if it's the OBS. OBS does have the you know the issue on occasion in fact OBS is saying that it's only getting 15 frames per second anyway even when I'm uh, just sitting here looking at it it just said it definitely says it's only doing 17 frames per second so I think it's OBS's fault really it's it's having an issue um, let's see what resolution it's trying so it's using its software encoder because you don't have a, really an option for that Hmm. It's streaming a 1080p and it's not scaling the output apparently. So yeah, OBS itself is only managing a measly 22 frames per second. So I don't know. <laughs> There's a bit of RAM pack wobble happening. So you think the best approach here is just to go back to those Spectrum games? You might be right. And I was I was really hoping to get into that, but that's fair enough. Oh, hang on, we didn't try it yet. We didn't try it yet with all those reduced settings. Admittedly, we're still only at 17 FPS, but at least we can try, right? Let's see. You tell me if this is totally crap. If it's like it'll, ne then I'll know it'll never be good, and we'll never ever play this again. And that way I can actually hide how rubbish I am. What does the V-Sync do though? I, I, I isn't V-Sync, is that good or bad? I thought V-Sync made it faster, but then I guess if it's an option that you can switch, yeah, it obviously has a potential negative effect. 15 frames per second according to OBS. bugger that's it done stream is over i'm going home oh yeah i am at home <laughs> so we need a game that's less visually appealing so it doesn't max things out that's that's the trick yeah play by mail no oh, i don't know now i don't know what to do i'm going to reset my transform so we get the full full desktop glory there and uh, Hello. Hello, me. Get out of the way. I want to get this out of the way, do I? It's going to be over everything. No, it's fine. Just leave them there. Right. What shall we do then? Syndicate. I don't think I've got Syndicate. If I had Syndicate, I'd play it. But honestly, I don't have Syndicate. I'm not even sure I've got all of these games because I ran out of hard disk space and I just started arbitrarily deleting folders which contain some of these games. Should we pay XG TL662 Plus Pro? This is my EEPROM programmer. It's It'll be an exceptionally fun game. We could do the uh, EEPROM programming challenge. <laughs> uh, what graphics card do I have? It's a couple of uh, Radeons is. Uh, fair fight, but they're not in uh, SLI mode. The reason they're not in SLI mode is because I've got three monitors and it doesn't like it. It, it does. It, it, it's upset with that. I just don't think it, it's happy with those. Mm. So we've got some open red alert, which I think is one of the ones I deleted. Let's see what happens when you try to run it. I'm pretty sure I deleted this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Um, you can't see it, but it's gone full screen. It says I've already deleted the content of it, so that's no good. You've got the option of uh, hmm, Carmageddon, F Fuse Basic. That'll be exciting. Or we can just try some Sinclair Spectrum games. If I bring out a web browser, we can do that here. Always incognito. Always. Right. ZX. I don't know if we like the Spectrum version. Manic Miner. Neil's favourite game. What's Red Team? Oh, so you can change uh, specifically. How about Sonic? That's not a bad idea. How do you even play Sonic now? I've got Mega Drive things on the... Uh... Can you play Mega Drive games in a web browser? I have to say, by the way, on the 3DS, I do have some Mega Drive games, right? Check this out. Mega Drive games, and they're like 3D, because they're on the 3DS, and they've done all the Streets of Rage and every Mega Drive game with a sort of a 3D version. Let me plug in my pad my satin pad which by the way I've never actually got working um, but <laughs> we'll see if we can get it working Sega it's all in the game play the game supersonic and hypersonic sonic sonic javascript emulator yeah go on this is interesting isn't it Can I play with my... See, I've got the same pad. Load the emulator. This is exciting, isn't it? If it works. Which it's not. No, it's doing something. Maybe we can get this full screen. Oh, I heard that. Ooh, hello. There's a bit of a naughty ad there, but that's fine. I'm just moving the window so it's a bit better. There we go. The music does sound a bit... No, he's like jumping, but he's not running. Okay, let's see. Some work. The world's first adult game. Um, connected gamepad. Number one, USB gamepad. Yeah. Cl Close. Might as well just play with keys. This is amazingly bad, by the way. How do you do the turbo? Oh, maybe that's a different Sonic. It's literally running at like four frames per second on my desktop. we're so sensitive to playing Sonic over the years that you can hear instantly when something's not right. Yeah, Dr. Eggman face. I love how I'm getting 18, 18, 1, 8 FPS. Wrong game. Pump it up. There, pumped up.
Oh, it's laggy. So what do you think, guys? I, I'm actually getting into this. Is it worth just quickly downloading an emulator to play this? So I think the web browser one's a bit poo. Unless, unless any of you know a better web browser one that actually has accelerated graphics. This is probably doing as best as it can updating the uh, DOM canvas. <laughs> right, that's it. That's it. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna play Sonic properly. I'm, I'm into it. You've got me into it. I'm hooked. I'm hooked, guys. Um, just looking here. I'm just going to see if I have happen to have it because sometimes I do have these things. Sanic, Sanic the Hodge Hig. I think that's what we want. Name a uh, Sega Mega Drive emulator. <laughs> see if I've got one. Good, good gen. Genesis. I definitely got a. Um, I definitely got Sonic on a ROM. Because I always have backups of ROMs I own. Just in case I get an EverDrive. But a Mega Drive EverDrive are crazy expensive, aren't they? Sonic. Sonic the Edge Og 7 Zip. There we go. Bang. Drop that on the desktop. Sonic the Edge Og. 7 zip. So we can get rid of that. Now we've got Sonic the Hedgehog. ROM. Holy smokes, what is all this? That's basically every every Sonic the Hedgehog thing it looks like. Right, so now we need a Mega Drive emulator. It's Pico Drive, RetroArch, Ages. I I may have some of these installed already um I say i've got i'm very delete happy when i'm looking over here by the way i'm looking at another monitor just so that you don't think i'm just staring off into the distance I tell you what my pc is being sluggish as hell um it might be down to something mega drive emulator Nope, I can't find one, so we're going to download one. Lots of Sonic, all the Sonics. So what do I download? Just Retro Arch, and that's all it. All I need to do. Retro Arch, go. Download front end for emulators, but it's not an emulator. It says it's a front end for emulators. Are you sure it's going to work? Now Retro Arch is the one I think I did that Mega Drive Mini thing I made. Do you remember I did it and I made the little Sonic cartridge that works when you shove it in? I think um, that's what I did it with. Oh no, on Discord. There's a lot of stuff going on on my Discord that I'm missing right now. Oh dear, tech support. Opening in 10 minutes. You must be joking, guys. What have you sent me downloading? How long is this, this going to take? It's very complicated. So what's the simple one? I just want something to work. Something that's that's just simple. Sega. Mega Drive. A way of plugging in my actual Mega Drive. Actually, I've got a composite capture. We could play it from composite. How quality would that be? It wouldn't be, would it? So you've got Fusic, Fusion, or Gens, or lots of things. So Fusion has a picture of Doom Guy. So I can only assume that that's going to be good. So I'm going to put Fusion right down here. The destination of five files of the same names. Replace. So it looks like we actually had Fusion sitting on the desktop already. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> And it comes with Golden Axe Warrior. Run. So it's running. Now we're cooking. This is starting to look a little bit better, isn't it? Uh -huh. 
Uh huh. Okay. So now what do we do? We just take a, a Sonic game, which we're going to try to. I think hopefully this is the original. Check some incorrect. Off to a bad start, guys. And then, yeah. But if we have a Raspberry Pi, how would we do it? Would we? How would we? You know, capture that. Oh, that's running in a whopping 60 frames per second, apparently. That's what that's telling me. Let's get this over here. Tidying up my windows. Uh, yeah, okay. So file. Load Genesis ROM. And I'm going to put the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog folder in. That's my searchy thing. There we go. Look at that. Metal Sonic. Metal Gear Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Open. Genesis. Sh oh, that's better. Good. Much better. We're going to see if my pad works again. No. Pad. I think I did use this emulator before, and it had this really annoying thing where you have to set the pad up in a certain wiggly way. Set config. Was that it? Genesis. No, that's fine. I think the controls come in in somewhere else on this. Uh, uh, joystick. Come on, guys. You've got to work with me here. There's got to be a joystick setting somewhere. Okay. Config. We'll try again. Controllers. There we go. Use USB gamepad. It's a six button pad. Apply. Okay. That's not me playing. <laughs> Set a config. Define. Should we do define? How does that work? Oh, okay. Define. Up, down, left, right. A, B, C. Start, X, Y, Z. Oh, is there a mode? Okay. Boom. Yes, finally. Let's see if this is slightly less jerky than what we experienced earlier. Good. Whoa. Marble zone. What's it on about? Okay, come on, guys. Let... I'm pushing the button, but it's not actually. There we go. Okay, that's it. Oh, better. got crazy lag but it's fine and the picture's a bit soft I could probably anti-soften that with some, turn off some filtering I reckon my graphics drivers are really shafted because considering this is emulating a Mega Drive the, the screen is still pretty jerky so I, I think I think it's definitely got some issues. Maybe there's something here. Scan lines, normal. Filter. What does filter do? Unfilter it. Use NTSC aspect. Yeah, okay, now I could live with the NTSC aspect actually. It's a bit bigger. Isn't it? Oh, that seems a bit better. I love how it's saying it is saying 60 frames per second, yet yeah, it's definitely jerking around on my screen. But... Oh, the thing to get now is the Mega SD. So is that just an SD card you shove in? Because I am really annoyed. 
remember I have that game of um, Alien Soldier. It's like Alien Soldier. I love Alien Soldier. Yeah. And the cartridge art is starting to wear out. You know the sticker on the cartridge? And it's one of those games that I think could be worth some money. So I don't want to wear out my Alien Soldier anymore. So I don't play it. It's sad, isn't it? But Jason, were you streaming your uh, Pentium Mega Drive onto YouTube at HD? <laughs> Gosh, can you imagine what it'd be like playing Neo Geo games if this is stuttery? Oh no, I didn't. I didn't get to penetrate the big ring. Hmm. Oh, it's a cart that does Mega CD as well. <laughs> you know I could be playing bloody Castlevania instead. I need a ring. Give me a ring. Somebody give me a bloody ring. Oh, phew. So, I'm gonna try again at that. <laughs> Useless! Oh yeah, so back to rage. Back to the conversation I started 38 minutes ago. Was, um, it feels to me very much what Mad Max, you know the Mad Max movie that we had not so long ago, Fury Road? It felt to me like as if it was a game that was going to be Fury Road. Oh, you... I'm so glad there's so many checkpoints here. And I'm glad it's a game made for children's. Now, I don't have enough wall penetrating ability without a good runner. Fair fight. I'm pretty sure I hacked my SNES Mini to play Mega Drive games. <laughs> At least you could do that. I think it was Retro Arch, actually, I put on it. It's a totally legit experience playing Mega Drive games on a SNES controller. Eggman's throbbing ball. Boom! Boom shakalak! Ah! I did that on purpose. I wanted to give him a fair chance. How many hits is it? Bloody hell, I thought it was like three hits. I'm thinking of Mario, aren't I? Boom! Give me the bunnies. Give me them. Boosh. Okay, I think we're warmed up now. Sonic. I should put Sonic in the title of my YouTube title, shouldn't I? That's what we're playing. Gaming Sonic. Am I going to drown? No, I'm alright. I'm alright for the minute. How come if you just put Sonic into YouTube, it almost gives you every other variant of Sonic other than Sonic the Hedgehog. But to me, Sonic Hedgehog is the only Sonic game. All the rest are just... Nah. What's your favourite Sonic game? Next time I might have to go to original hardware, guys. I'm not sure I can face this on emulator. Or, I could get a... Um, I've got the collection on Xbox. Maybe I can emulate an Xbox 360 emulating the Mega Drive? That might emulate better. Sonic 2. Mm. Oh, 
one of these days, guys, I'm going to actually show you what retro computers and hardware I have and consoles. But not today! I just, just want to see what can you do with all these things. So if you move the block, does it stay up? Still seems to go down pretty damn quick. Oh! How do I get down? Have I screwed this up? I don't... I honestly... I honestly don't remember this bit at all. And I, know, I, I appreciate it's on a timer as well. Oh, dickhead. Yeah, <laughs> thanks D-Type Jack. Fair fight, I do. I still haven't um, got a monitor. Um, Stuart uh, Ashen said he uh, had one that um, he could part with. But I've not um, secured it from him. He's a very busy individual. Mm, don't, don't trust those wobblers, do you? To be honest, this is a lot uh, less stressful than playing V V V V V V. Hang on, V V V V V V. Yeah, V V V V V V. Oh, that's super bloody meat boy! What an awful thing! Yeah, I I I, I was a bit silly. Come on, it's been a long day. get to play a bonus round. Mm. So fair fight, well how how much of a detour would that be? Because in my car where I'm lucky to get like 16 miles per gallon or something, it could be an expensive friggin' detour. <laughs> it's high res! It's high res! I do like an Atari high-res monitor, I have to say. One of the games, I think it was... Oh, no. I think it was Sonic 2 had actually a 3D... Uh, bonus. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Ugh, yes. Oh, lucky. I think I'm going to have to run, aren't I? Run away, run away, run away, run away. Oh, no. I think it... Oh. I'm in a bad way now. I think it's the next level. There's one where you're underwater. Let's see if that's the next level. And he continues. What? Are you joking me? Right. I'm doing it. In, I'm going to play angry now. I didn't. I didn't realise you didn't have bloody continues.
speed running it now. Right, I'm really annoyed. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat, by the way, if I can. If I can. F5 is save state. There we go. And F8. So F5 is save state. F8 is loaded. That's it. Speedrun ruined. Welcome to Games Master. Today, Dr. A will be conducting a speed run. Oh yeah, you, it doesn't matter if you're invincible when you fall off the bottom of the screen. Can I just do that? Nice. Managed it that time. Right, be careful here. Be careful, you young Timothy. Nice. Boom. Oh, was it F5 or F8? Got to be careful. Hit the wrong one. Give you a bad day. Safe state F5. Run in Visual Basic. Always hit run in Visual Basic. Hmm. Play one of the mods. I will. I will. When I... I will play one of the mods. That's a good idea, actually. I feel, though... I feel I've got a few more regular minutes of Sonic in me, though, if that's all right. Just, it's, this is like a warm-up. You know what's a good game, actually, on Meg Drive? Strider or Shinobi. We never, Nobody ever seems to play those anymore, but I would definitely play those. I can't even remember what the best Shinobi game is on the Mega Drive, because it had, like, a couple at least. Shadow Dancer. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Shadow Dancer was the one with the dog. Good game though, wasn't it? Right, let's see if we can do this. I like how my YouTube chat window has totally disappeared this time. No, you fudge! Why didn't I put a save point at that point? Alright, sod it. <laughs> right, let's try, let's try one of those other ones. So, there's a bunch of options here. Some of them sound really weird, like Splats the Rabbit. Sonic Christmas, Sonic Weird, Sonic Remix, Metal Sonic, Knuckles in Sonic, Hyper X V1, Gaslight, Eggman, Chaos Walker, Psycho Sonic. Come on, there's some names here, guys. You've got to decide. Sonic Ultima. Super Sonic in South Island Adventure. There's so many. Tea pie. Sorry to see you go, but see you next time. Mm. I feel like I want to write something on my little label on the bottom of my cup so that when people see it, it seems legit. Hey, Costado, how are you? There we go. 
I've got better things actually. I've got better things to try and put on that. Hello, I'm very close to the mic. Sonic Weird, so we've got one vote for Sonic Weird. Do I have any other? Yes, sir, please, may I have another? I'm thinking, by the way, guys, what I'm trying to do is think maybe I should stick that on here so then when I have a little sippy sip, mm, out of my sippy boy here. Desert Strike, I don't think that's a Sonic hack. <laughs> right, Splats the Wabbit, Metal Hello, Okay, so we've got Sonic Weird, one for Sonic Weird, one for Splats the Wabbit, one for Desert Strike, one for Sonic Xmas. <laughs> yeah, so Castado, these are Sonic hacks. Not, uh, not, unfortunately, it's not an Atari ST stream. But one day it will be. I'm going to go for Sonic Ultima. You choose what's next, because Ultima sounds interesting, because I want to see if it's like Ultima as in the Ultima games. It won't be. Okay. So far, so bad. Two mints. Two minutes. This just looks like a colour palette hack. Although that does look a bit odd, doesn't it? Haha. <laughs> Okay, it's messed up, Sonic. Wow, I think they just messed around with the memory map. Yeah, CPC Sonic. Alright, that's terrible. Alright, we're gonna go with what was the first one searched by Sonic Weird by Fair Fight. Sonic Weird. Weird, where the hell is it? Sonic, uh, you sure Sonic Weird was a real one? Oh yeah, Sonic Weird. Sagat. So far, looking pretty similar. Okay, apart from the sort of high score being messed up. I just think, does Sonic himself look different? I'm failing to see the weirdness. I just think Sonic might look a bit more aggressive in this, I don't know. Is it time for me to derail this stream? It is, Mr. Dalton. Hello. Hello, you. Mr. Dalton is in the house. Now, before I continue I'll need to set the correct microphone ah. so now you should be able to hear me I can hear you very well thank you. okay well I think that sonic is is crappy guys that that I well there's something wrong with the rings hang on where it's just messed up guys it's just messed up so mr. Dalton how have you been today Ah, oh, fine, thank you, sir. Fine. Had a had a reasonable day. Had a, a reasonable day. Had a reasonable day. That sounds like a uh, an interesting Wallace and Gromit type movie. Wallace and Gromit's reasonable day. That's right. That's right. I'm going to just uh, try to find a ROM that actually works. So that was that Metal Sonic, Sonic Fusion, Metal Gear Sonic, all the Sonics. So I don't know if anybody can hear Andrew. So Andrew, can you hear me in the chat, please? I can't 
can't see my face appearing on the Discord OBS integration. Oh no, I think you are there, Mr. Dalton. Okay. Just to chat to him. Let me, uh, let me turn myself, let me turn my volume and I'll see if uh, I'm actually there. Your music's far too loud, sir. There we go. Ooh, You're getting... Good. Uh, you and I are both getting drowned out by the music. Well, I think I've just tweaked it now, so it should be okay. So D-Type Jag, how about now? <clears throat> is, is Andrew audible? Or do I have to turn the Mega Drive sounds way lower? No, I think I'm better now, apparently. I can turn my Discord up microphone up if it helps, but... Well, you I can see what I'm playing that. with here on the, the sound mix. Yes. So this is the Sonic thing here, and it's down to pretty much mm -hmm. one. It is literally on one. Oh, but you mean I can ah. actually just turn up... Oh, apparently I sound like I'm in Custardo's room now. Well, strangely oh. enough, Custardo, if you look up to your loft, oh. guess where I'm sat? Wi-Fi is a marvellous thing. Apparently I'm louder than you, so you need to turn your mic up again. Hello, hello. Okay, I don't know how to test my mic's full sound, so... Um... Let, me, let me have a listen. Hello, hello. How are you? Hello, hello. No, I think it's about I, right. That'll I can, do. I can, I can see you're peaking a little bit. Are you peaking? I'm, I'm peaky today. You're very peaky. I am. That's good to hear. I am. I'm also irritated. Why are you irritated? Well, I think the, I, I, I think potentially the garage is lying to me. The car garage. Yes, my company car is being serviced at present. Ooh, Scott's in the room as well. And Ooh. um, why do you think that uh, they're lying to you? I think someone's telling me a porky pie, or they've broken something. My car went in yesterday for its service. And of course, the lease company pays for all the repairs, so Mercedes are rather generous in the work that needs doing to it. Okay, yes, they <laughs> So, they identified that it needs four tyres, brakes and discs all around, and it needs a suspension arm replacing. Okay. So, fine. That's... I'm surprised you were able to drive around in it before. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, hey, not my money, not my problem for them to sort it out. No. However, no. They said, oh, we haven't got the... Oh, well, this is one of the other things that we've spoken about in these streams before. Uh, the, again, not my money, but it's very wasteful. The suspension arm, the rubber gaiter in the arm, has worn and perished, so it's squeaking and needs replacing. Do you believe no. Mercedes make the rubber gaiters and sell them? Or no. do you think they have a whole new arm? I, I just had my Range Rover fail an MOT for a part that I had literally changed only a few months earlier. And I mm -hmm. have the old part in my hand, and I have a brand new part in my hand, and I could not tell the difference between the two. Yeah. So anyway, I'm always a little car. bit cautious. <laughs> they had my car. They had my car yesterday, okay. and then I got a phone call today saying because they said we'll call you about lunchtime today, seeing if your car's ready. And I thought, wonderful. Got a phone call from them. Well, Mr. Dalton, the uh, the problem is uh, when we brought your car in yesterday, it wouldn't start. Oh. And I thought that's strange. That's very strange. In the in the year I've had my car, I've it's never all... had it fail to start first time every time. Perfectly, not a problem. And uh, I have a video from their mechanic because what Mercedes do is when they're showing you the work to your car, they send you a, a video. The count like he has a GoPro and he records a video showing what needs changing on the car I'm doing. Yeah, I have that video from the mechanic. And at no point did he mention we had trouble starting your car. Oh really? Yes. But today. They found, when I spoke to them, we need to change the ignition switch in your car because it won't start. That is terrible. Hang on. But there's something else that they mentioned very briefly to me yesterday and they've kind of glossed over, so I think I know what they've done. Yeah. They had to do a major firmware update on my car. Oh, really? Mmm, so I think they've broken some of the coding of my car. Do you think it's they... It's all um, canvas, isn't it? Yeah, what, what it sounds like to me... Perhaps they applied the firmware and it actually locked or knackered all of the um, key, ignition, all that stuff out. See what happens. See if you get back a different key as well. That'll be interesting. Uh, yes, it's a company car, D-Type Jack. But uh, yeah, very interesting because they also said to me, um, oh, you'll hopefully get your car back to you maybe Tuesday or Wednesday next week. I'm thinking, it's very strange. 
because you know, an ignition on a C class is a fairly common part, and it's a fairly common model of car. Yeah. For, for Mercedes, anyway, you would think that if they haven't got the parts on the shelf, they would be having them by next morning on the you know daily parts delivery. What I don't get is right. Why why would mm -hmm. you even lie about it? Do you know what I mean? If you're the garage, mm. why would you lie? Or is it because they did lie because it means they actually get to f charge your company for all the fitting of the new... No, I don't, and... doubt, I don't doubt that for a second. But like I said, 12 months of owning the car, well, having it assigned to me, I have never once had a problem starting it. Very odd. And it's not a very mm. old car, is it? That's only 64. Hang on, saying that, I've got cars which are like 15 years old that don't bloody have problems. In fact, when have you... I, have had a, I don't think I've ever had a problem with a key. No, Barrel. no, I've never, I've Ever. never had a problem. With it. No, I think, like I say, because it's a CAN bus, the car. I mean, this is this is your your company's field of expertise. Um, yes, I I, 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 I think either they've just busted it or they've they've flushed total... it wrongly and wiped something or or it's just a total porky pie. Hmm. This is very very strange. Mm. Now I think we've got a few people watching. Not many, but that's fine. It's standard. Um, 11. 11. A whole 11. I've got a story about something I did this week. I've already got lots of things I do in a week. But this week, mm. I have mostly... No. This week, I uh, received in the post a package containing broken glass. Ooh, was it intentionally broken glass or? Not really. It was just something that broke that was badly packed. But that sounded way more dramatic, didn't it? <laughs> no, Costada, there was a story I was going to say, but I, I'm a bit embarrassed to talk about that one, so I'm going to keep it in, under my hat. Uh, in case there's liability issues. <laughs> did, did, w more importantly, though, was anyone hurt by the, by the broken glass? No. Um, oh yeah, no, but I will, I will, I will continue that. Actually, let me set the set the scene. Hmm. I receive a package from a postman that is, I, I realise, is an EEPROM programmer that I've ordered a few like a month ago. You know how it is, and right. um, it's really rattly and it's wrapped in a thin bag from China. You know the the type, mm -hmm. and I. I open it up and it's just full of glass. Like it's got a yeah, save it up for the Blackpool Castello, and it's got a uh, broken lamp in it. And this is the weird thing: when you buy things from China, sometimes on eBay, it says mm -hmm. buyer pays return shipping or whatever, right? So yeah. you get something that you've paid a tenner for, um, and it's broken, and then you go to the post office because it has to be recorded uh, post. Otherwise, eBay and PayPal don't honour it because they can't track that it's arrived back in China. It costs right. loads, so it costs you like mm. twenty quid to send back a ten quid thing. But it's all it's all deliberately manipulated that way. Yeah, and it's like I was I was in a quandary. I was like, either I report this as broken and take photos, or I'd be really nasty and just say it never arrived because they don't send it tracked. Do you see what I mean? It's like you you're yes. each side is manipulating the system or has to to get it. The other side not to kind of cheat. Yeah. Um, well, the Chinese government are trying to screw the British uh, economy over with um, with eBay because they pay effectively for the shipping to the UK. That's how they can afford to sell like yeah, it's MP3 state shipping. players for 99p with no post charge. But I don't know if they're trying to screw it. I think that's just being in a communist country does that. You have that. That's like one of your perks. No, it's it's it really is. They're trying to. The, the Chinese want to devalue the British currency. Well, I think we're doing a pretty good job of that at the minute. Oh, let's not go into politics, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. So, in the end, I'll tell you what I did. I just took mm -hmm. photos and said I want to return it as a defect product. So, mm. what I've done, though, in the meantime, uh, on the Discord channel, the lads sent me mm -hmm. uh, the actual lamp a company in eBay selling the lamp because it's a standard mm. lamp you use in a, an aquarium apparently and it costs three quid so I've ordered that because to be honest with you even if I don't send it back all in it will cost a, it will have cost me 13 pounds for my EEPROM programmer and right. my time is far more valuable than going and dealing with it anyway anymore at this point I'm, I got a video out of it which I've rendered I might upload today or tonight or whatever 
Um, so yeah, let's call it quits. But if I was a regular schmo, yes, I'd be really annoyed at that. Uh, I bought a new toy. Really? Good evening, yeah, Mr. Agony. Like, I'll uh, I'll show you my toy in Blackpool. I think you might like it. Is it a sex toy? You could stick it up your bum. Um, probably wouldn't be preferable. It's a 4K gimbal camera all in one. Oh yes, I know the kind. It's a um, DJI DJI Osmo Pocket, and it is fantastic. It is about the size of a massive microphone with a camera. No, stuff. No, on. not at all. No. It boom, is boom, 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 boom. Geezer. Probably not. It's probably not much bigger than like a king size Mars bar, if that. Oh, so it would fit up your bottom. It would fit up your bottom. Um, I mean, that's that is an essential criteria on all cameras. You have to measure if it will fit up your bum. Um, but this one, it's got like a little. It's all in one. You can't remove the camera from the camera from the gimbal. So everything's all all built in, and it's like you turn it on, 15 seconds, oh, straight to record. Wow, that's good. Good stuff. Um, I got it. I got it for a holiday in. Um, in no, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, because I haven't. I got one for my holiday in Florida, you see. So I'm walking around the theme parks, so I want to record lots of videos, and I hate recording people recording walking around videos on phones. Don't you wish maybe it did the gimbal on a hat? On a and hat? You, yeah, you could just wear a hat that records anything. Well, it's got looking. it's got a tripod mounted at the bottom of it. You know, you like the screw hole. Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. So what you could do is, could you get a hat now then, that's a wish. Now this is a question for the chat. Wish.com, AliExpress and eBay. Go guys, who can <laughs> find a hat with a camera mount? Like the, the threaded the thread, the thread threaded screw for it. Me at this hour? <laughs> Ooh, was that another voice? <laughs> Hello everyone. Oh, that's a, it's a voice, but it's very quiet. It's that's Scott. Cool. It's yeah. Scott, but there's no. I didn't recognise you. There was no profanity. Yeah, I'm trying to be more family friendly and shit. Oh now. wow! <laughs> I thought I thought it was. Uh, I, th I thought it was um, Larry Bundy Jr. Or, uh, or uh, but Hello, I discovered. You. There you Hello, go. You. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, not yet. I've not completely sold my soul to the devil. Uh. You don't. You're, you don't uh, comment on every single uh, video on YouTube. That's no. why. That's why you don't get anywhere in life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I know that's why I don't. <laughs> D-type jug. Good. Good idea. Look for a racing helmet that will fit the gim the camera on it. However, I don't potentially. I don't think I'm allowed to wear a racing helmet walking around Disney World. What about a racist helmet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> is it LA or is it Florida? No, it, it, Florida. Oh, well, that's a bit more. That's less of an yeah. issue there. Or is it? Now, I, I want to ask you something, and this is to the chat as well. Mm -hmm. Have um, have you done this? Last night, I get bored in bed. I'm oh, watching yes. my Netflix, and I get bored. I'm watching YouTube. I'm watching Scott on YouTube, and I, I don't get bored with that. But then once, once I've finished <laughs> all of his videos, I've got nothing else to watch. And um, then I go on Amazon. Because I always feel there's some, there always seems to be something pressing that, oh, I need to buy this thing and I need it to come tomorrow with Prime. Mm. Um, yes, and I'm probably going to go to the US this week, next week, whenever, soon. And um, I was like, you know, I don't have a neck pillow. I don't have a comfy looking neck pillow. And sometimes Ooh, I see... got a couple spare. Oh, there you go. Well, sometimes I see people on the aeroplane with these fantastic looking neck pillows and I'm going... Do they work? Because I remember those crappy ones you get, and they're not really that good. Um, so I went on Amazon, and I spent about four hours researching neck pillows and adding loads to my basket and shortlisting them. Was, will it be an inflatable one? Will it be, um, you know, one of these oversized memory foam ones? They don't pack up very well, but they're meant to be comfy. Will it be one that looks like a draft excluder that you can wrap just around a few times and your chin can rest on it? And then in the end, I emptied the whole basket and didn't buy anything. Um, but do anyone in the chat, do you obsess over anything once you once you get into it? Do you do obsessive Amazon research? Oh, yes, without a yes, doubt. Yes, I do. Without <laughs> a doubt, yeah. So if I'm buying anything, if I'm making any kind of purchase, I will do the research. In fact, I've been doing that right the last three days looking for a race wheel. Oh, really? 
yeah. I can't, can't blame you. So I'm again going back to going on holiday. I've been sorting out travel currency. Do you think as a currency broker, I haven't been looking at the rates and comparing? <laughs> I don't know why, it's just like, okay, I want to buy a race wheel, it doesn't, it's not matter of life or death, but I want to find the one for the best price. Because you don't want to buy another one, right? You want to buy it once. Mm. Yeah. And then exactly. spend, well, I spent last night, the night before, looking at race wheels, and I got to the point where I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and play some F1 2012 and come back to this, and <laughs> that's what I did. It's like, play half an hour of the game, come back and try and find a controller, it's madness. But do you feel that you're going to buy the controller and you'll have already blown yourself on the game you'll play, with it. you'll play with you'll play with the controller for maybe a week or so and then be like yeah yeah okay put it I on the shelf i kind of did that with elite dangerous when i finally bought a hotus flight stick mm. I, I think by then i sunk about 400 hours into the game because i was trying to grind to get an anaconda once i got it i finally got the joystick i'm playing that for a few hours and that's it i stopped playing and i ain't touched it since oh you'll exactly. be able to try that on that new microsoft flight simulator that's coming out microsoft what flight what? simulator 2020 um, now here's a youtuber who yeah. doesn't really need any people going to his channel but his content is hilarious is air force proud 95 <laughs> have you ever seen his content yes i have it, some of it is he is the king of winding people up on flights. Then, isn't it? Oh no, I can't but remember he's... what I'm supposed to do on this. But you don't, you wouldn't think someone like that would have, you know, have an anti a, a troll channel for flight simulators. It does. No, but you watch it and you you're weak at it, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely yeah. weak at some sort. He says it's like there was one I saw where he had a someone had hacked it and they'd got a hot air balloon doing like ten thousand miles an hour past the control tower and stuff. It's just yeah. brilliant. Well yeah, worth watching, Andrew. It is. It's funny. I will check it out when I've finished my current season of Legal Eagle. Ah, uh, Legal Eagle, another great YouTuber. You know, because these big channels don't get many people watching them. No, they need that. No. They I honestly, them. I honestly, you know what? Uh, you know this channel that that you are watching now, and a few couple of people literally are watching globally ever. Um, I, I, I see it almost as sometimes as a stopgap till I actually start making my proper content that I always <laughs> intend to make. Yeah, like, been, <laughs> this is a, been a long, long plan. I've been trying to get my porno career started, sort of deal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I've literally, yeah. So you buy all the you buy all the equipment and get all the setup. But you're like, now nah, what have you got to do? Make a script. Oh, that's way too much work. <laughs> it's easier just to make these streams and film my fingers doing something that I was going to do anyway. I don't know, I, maybe I'm the opposite because when I do streams and stuff, I just feel like, why are people watching this? It's like, why would you want to hear me ramp for hours on end when I could be spending time like, writing some vaguely, if not funny, stuff down? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that a stream like this, I think, I don't know if the chat would agree with me on this, I think they find it can be quite relatable. It's almost like just hanging out with a bunch of yeah, mates. Yeah, just like about last year of gentlemen of our, our age mm. you don't tend to have lots of local mates like you used to have unless you're really into things like football yeah fuck that yeah exactly well i think i think that's true i think i i want to play some games and i'll just put a stream on and mm. if people are there it's great because i just want to hang out and chat so and like um when rob joins the stream sometimes he, he often comments. He says no one's actually watching you playing the game because I'm always trying to. Oh no, that was bad. It's like no one cares. You're not. <laughs> nobody... <laughs> Cause you're just chatting. It's literally as if you're sitting next to me eating your pizza and you're just sitting in the lounge. We're talking shit. Yeah, but that's the good thing about it all. People enjoy that. Oh my god. Where are you? Word. Where are you going in America then, Andrew? I'm probably going to be going to Detroit and Chicago. Yeah, I'm pissed off at Detroit. Why? Did Eminem Ro really not write back to you? No, the Robocop statue still isn't up yet. Is it supposed to be up? What happened to it? It's... Tell us the story about that then. I don't know. They the crowd, story. basically, you know, Detroit literally turned into the city from Robocop. Yes. The, 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 uh, the, the city basically went bankrupt because all the motor industry collapsed. Um, well,. As, an, as a mascot to try to have inspiration for the city, that they crowdfunded a like a twelve foot tall statue of Robocop. Right. Why? It, 
it's the most nihilistic movie you've ever seen. I not... know, I know, <laughs> but they, they wanted their own Rocky statue. Oh, fucking hell, that's total, that's Detroit right there, it's depressing as shit, so they're gonna mm. put a statue of an even more depressing fucking thing on. Yeah. Right, it is pretty kick-ass in places, but ooh, that first hour is, uh... Oh yeah, it's great, it's still a great watchable film. Oh yeah, great film, but... Ooh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they have a statue of Robocop, but they've still not got it put up yet. I, um, it seems like I haven't travelled for a while, though, doesn't it? Um, it has been a while, yeah. I, I say that, right? And then it says, Google says, this month you've been to three countries. <laughs> yeah. There's always... Uh, you, sorry, let's, let's rephrase it. You've not been travelling with work. Um... Yes, D-Type Jag, Robocop was filmed in Dallas, but it stood in for Detroit. Oh, is that right? What about that building? You know, it's got a weird shaped building that's some. Yeah, the uh, library, they put like um, some sort of painting. That's right, they did a matte painting on it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's only like four stories tall or something. So what they did was they did a matte painting to extend it up. I mean, that's incredibly skillful, the artists yeah. who can do that, though. I know oh, that, because I saw that on an 8 bit guy video when he was reviewing a camera. <laughs> <laughs> do, um. Do uh, Andrew, could you do some research and post the output into the Discord of the famous, the famous scene where Robocop chucks that guy, that chairman guy, out of the window, and his arms go really long? Yeah, that's because it's a it's a model, it's a clay model. Uh, yeah. And Robocop though is so hardcore, he actually knocked his arms long. Oh, that's yeah. what I thought what happened. <laughs> Not quite. How did they get yeah. it so bad? It's just what happened. It's Ronnie Cox's arms where the model of him is falling out the window and it just looks really like... Uh, there we go. Right. And I've even linked it to the correct time. The only problem will be is if people click on this, it may take them off your channel. Oh, oh yeah. No, let's not do that. Gotta Watch it later. <laughs> Watch it later. Anyone wants to have a look, just look for Robocop ending scene full HD. Uh, the clip's in there. So Scott, um, yes. rage, and I'm not talking about your personal rage. I'm talking about the game. <laughs> um, okay. I like it actually. It's all right. It's um, it, it's, it'll take a little bit of time to get used to. I thought, yeah, but it was I, all right. To be honest, I played it again last year. I made a video of mm. it, but it's been deleted. Uh, on the second playthrough, I'm, I'm never was pissed off at that game. I was more disappointed. Because you know it was id, and that at that time id meant something. Um, and then when it came out, it probably the game came out at the wrong time because it was just after Fallout 3 and and Borderlands. So there was a big like dystopian, you know, wasteland first-person shooter thing going on. So if that was subpar compared to the other games, I'm not saying Fallout 3 is any good, mind you. Um, it was going to be lackluster in comparison. I think that's what happened. But on the second playthrough, I kind of enjoyed it. I, you know, I really enjoyed the uh, shooting. I've not played the second game, though, because I can't be asked. <laughs> I'm so tired of shooters. So tired of shooters. I just, uh, yeah, that, I'm, in the, I'm in the zone now where I just want a bit of shooters. Um, funnily enough, though, I looked in another bedroom and I found another Xbox and it did have a copy of Rage with it, so <laughs> I had, I've got so many copies of it. But what I want to try now is apparently on Xbox 360 you had something called Link Play, where you can basically have like a LAN party. Yeah, uh, you, you could do that on the original Xbox, yeah, couldn't you? Like Halo 2 and Halo Sports. Definitely. Yeah, and it's still being supported now on the Xbox One, like, um, like Gears yeah. 5 is still using the system yeah. link, which is ridiculous. Because you had homebrew versions of Xbox Live, didn't you, like Carly? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and I use that quite a bit. And mm. In fact, I've st <laughs> it's still going now. You can still get games of uh, like Halo and stuff through that, which is insane. Well, I tell you what, what's disappointing to me though, I found a, uh, I bought a second copy of Terraria for my kids because mm -hmm. that apparently used to support um, multiplayer, yeah, you know, multiplay, um, and you d just with live, you didn't need gold. But I can't get the uh, menu yeah. to come up for multiplayer, so I wonder if they turned on a requirement that you need gold, but I'm kind of not really inclined to sign up for gold just to see if it'll work. It was a real grey area for a bit, because there's quite a lot of games you could play cooperatively online without the, the gold sub. Yeah, because at, at one point EA 
wanted so people didn't have to have a gold sub, but had to subscribe to their own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we're really going to sign up to that. <laughs> so you think Microsoft that. changed the end user license agreement then, and that's just what I'm experiencing well, I now? I think that... they kind of knocked it on the head of the Xbox One when that finally came out. Um, but I, <laughs> the time I, that came out, I wasn't really subscribed to Gold Service anymore. I, I kind of just gave up on it. Because all I was doing is I'm playing fucking Call of Duty constantly. I might try the uh, thing where you can get gold for like a couple of months for a few quid. You know, they always do yeah. those offers. And just well, see they if pretty it works. much give it away now, don't they? To be honest, and even with the streaming service, I think that's uh, thrown in for with the price, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Because I, yeah. th I thought that the gold, when I did have it, I thought it was well worth having. I bought it for a year, and I think it was like, was yeah. it 50 quid? And you just got like free games like every month and stuff. Like my hard I've disk was to, just I've bulging. To be honest, the Microsoft uh, monthly subscription service, the one where you get the games every month, that's not bad actually. Yeah, yeah that's the gold. And the cool thing is, I don't know if they changed it since then, but if you download those games and you, you let your subscription lapse, you still kept the games. It's not like the. That's PlayStation right. Yeah, they they're your games. They're on your hard disk. Yeah, it's not like the PlayStation one where if you let it lapse, you can't play those games anymore. Yeah, so. At but, least it's got something like that, but to me personally, uh, Microsoft now are pushing so hard on PC again. Yeah, it's not much point even owning a con uh, an Xbox anymore. They've kind of made themselves redundant. Yeah. So yeah, I PC gaming master race. Well, yeah, I'd rather play PC because at least I can tweak my fucking settings and turn off motion blur and all that crap. But this is the, the problem is with it, right? This is where things like the Wii really um, surprise them. Because um, I have had Wii's right up to recently. I think we got four Wii's. And you go, why have you got so many? Because we were using them as media centers as well, yeah. right? Because you had Netflix and YouTube. And it's only recently they stopped working on those. And I think yeah, that's just did. because Nintendo turned it off, not because Netflix turned it off. Yeah, stop. Yeah, but why would, why would Netflix turn it off? Why would they oh, do that? Well, exactly. Like so I kind of use... Um, the Xbox for that and I guess Amazon Fire Stick's coming in but if you've got a nice console that does everything like we still use the Wii U for those things yeah I've still got my Wii U here but what's weird is the Switch doesn't support those same things I think they only just brought YouTube on the Switch if I'm not mistaken or, but it, it's, it doesn't have the, all the apps like uh, yeah but I think they're trying not to I don't think they're desperate to make the Switch a media hub yeah but don't forget it's got all the retro games you played about two years ago Oh, the memories. Fuck it. That's why I love it. I just I only want to play the same game, so that's all right for me. I like <laughs> yeah. it when I like it when they make something with the same oh. IP and they say that's the same game and I'm like, yeah, I just want another Mario, I want another Zelda, I want another Metroid. All right. Yeah, I did have I did have a giggle when they announced Deadly Permission 2 because that's cool. I love to see a sequel to that game. But the original one was a janky piece of crap to begin with, and that's being affectionate towards it. Oh, this is. And so people were moaning about like, oh, the sound bugs, this bug, that bug. It's like, did you play the original game? Because it was a, it was a dumpster fire to begin with, and now that it's been ported to the sexy Switch, uh, people have forgotten that. Yeah, it was a buggy game when it first came out. And yeah, it's funny. Tell you what I do want them to do, and they, I don't know why they don't do it. It's a proper new. Star Fox for the Switch. Oh, that would be good, yeah. Oh no, because they tainted it the last time with the Wii U, the, the last Wii U game, didn't they? They completely. Um, yeah, that I, it's, it's weird. That it's, it's like it's, mm. it, it, it has the potential to be a nice game if it was friggin' controllable. Yeah, and I think the the uh, if I'm, I may be talking about my ass here. I think it was made by Platinum as well, which is the double like painful. I fucking yeah. love Platinum's games. I think they just had to try to make something use the controller and they ruined it. It didn't really need it. That's the worst yeah, part. Yeah, and I've, all right, even though I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the Switch, I've, I have previously owned one, um, they have, they're fully aware of what <laughs> what worked and what don't work. And for a start, we want to sit around while eating a bag of Maltese and not stand around trying to you know, wipe yeah. beetles off our face with motion controls and shit. All right, there's something new that come out of the... I was watching the uh, uh, the presentation yesterday, so like in the background while I was working on other stuff, and they had one bit where they were strapping the joy cons to themselves. I was like, oh god, don't you do it! Just stop it! Let it die! Just use a controller. Everything's good. But, you know, it, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm ranting. 
what I miss though, I do miss the dual screen aspect because I'm a big fan. Yes. I've always been of the DS, 3DS, mm. Wii U. I think it works. That works great. You know, you're playing like I've, Xenoblade I've, I've Chronicles got... or something, which really makes use of that yes. second screen. Yeah, I've got to be honest, and let's go back to the game we we did play for. We know it's a bag of shit. We've said this many times ah! before. Sorry. The the what they were planning to do on the Wii U with Aliens Colonial Marines. Oh, <laughs> me. Fucking Colonial amazing. French. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What was, what was going to happen, <sighs> Andrew, was, you know, the screen in your hands? Yeah. That was going to be the motion track throughout the film. Oh, that, that would have been, been cool. cute. That would have been a slam dunk, an absolute slam dunk. But, yeah. yeah. And you would turn it, move it around and it would do the whole... Yeah, yeah, yeah that would nice. be cool. That would be cool. All right, <sighs> it'd be, it'd be cool. It probably would have pissed me off after an hour, but it would have been cool just to... No, but what yeah, it is, yeah. though, Scott, as long as, you, going, as, long as oh you're not God. required to do it, right? That's what. That's yeah. the thing. So, you know, like, in all those games, it was always forward-facing, the motion tracker. Like, if you happen to turn it, it would turn, but, like, it doesn't affect the gameplay if you don't. You can still get by. I think that's that would be nice, wouldn't it? It's just like a gimmick to play with, Yeah. but you don't have to do it all the time when you just want to get on with it. Well, by the end of the Wii U's life, most of the games didn't even use the controller at all. No. But you know it was cool though, Scott? I've got like kids and they, they go off with that on its own. That's really cool. So you can watch yeah. telly on the thing. I'm, I, I think using it as a tablet really works really well too. Yeah, I think the only time... I haven't played my Wii U recently, but most of the time I turn it on to so render, uh, rendering a video. It's going to take two hours to what, you know what? I'll stick on Bayonetta 2 for a little while and play that while I'm waiting for the thing to to render. Yeah, that's probably the only time I really use the just the tablet as a screen. And because my battery is knackered anyway, so I've got oh. to keep it on my all the time. Oh, I like a bit of Bayonetta. Yeah. I think I've got... I, I need to get that. I've got it on... Um, I've got Bayonetta 1 and 2 on the 360, and I think i got one on the... It didn't come Wii out on the Wii U. It came out on the Wii U. Was it Wii U had two? Wii U and uh, Switch had two, yeah. But I think I need to update. I, I, th I, I just want to keep buying it, even though I've never <laughs> finished it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's such yeah, a yeah, like yeah, yeah. crazy game. And it's one any... of those games that you pick up like, I'm going to play that later and uh, never get around to it. <laughs> but you, you want to keep it because you never know. Fire Goose is asking the question, what is it on earth is happening? No one knows. <laughs> so Fire Goose, what, what have you pieced together so far? And then we can help you. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain from the beginning well, what's happening. Flying it, through the valley of dick mushrooms. It's Space yeah. Harrier, isn't it? It's just... Can you imagine how many coins you would have chucked in at this point? You literally put in like a million credits. I remember no. playing it a bit as a kid in the arcade and I was just... I die after like 10 seconds every time. Yeah, because you always have the wonky ass joystick as well. All right, it's part of the experience, but playing that game with that joystick does not feel right. No. Th this version you're looking at is the Sega uh, 32X, which is phenomenal. Oh, actually. great. Yeah. It's when the best you... port of it. And I've got a Sega Saturn controller, so it's it's kind of legit. Um, oh, if you play on original. Floating Fat Man in the house. Sorry. Oh, Floating it's Fat good. Man's here. Um. So yeah, Fire Goose, this is the Sega 32. There we go. Um, tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to a uh, gaming retro expo. Which one? Which I invited Scott um, on someone else's behalf, but Scott couldn't make it. It's in High Wycombe. I, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I'm, I'm at bloody work. Well, I'm only working for a few hours, but yeah, annoying. And I think it's going on for... Um, it's, it's session so you get a ticket for it and the ticket allows you in there for like so many hours um, which I think might be a bit like that game place near Blackpool that people go to or... oh is yeah okay there... club yeah. yeah is there any chance Andrew though you'll be able to say do you know who I am <laughs> I suspect I don't know you know now I'm not before I'd say don't be silly but no it, ha it does happen now so yeah no. I, I, I'm not I'm never yeah. gonna I'm ne say never on that it's one it's weird as well I, I, I just can't handle it I got recognised on the bus coming out of work yesterday and um, for a second the kid looked at me because I was wearing my back office t-shirt <laughs> and, um, and I thought and I was thinking oh right he's going to think I'm Andy he was like alright okay I just, I just stood there just mind my own business and in the end he sort of like Hey Scott, I love your channel. Right. No way. Well, awesome. 
but it was a bit i think he might have been like a bit autistic or whatever because he was very like very very uncomfortable oh, yeah awkward yeah and um i think it took a lot of courage for him just to say that and i'm like oh thank you thank you it was like that is so weird like, yeah. <laughs> Bloody <hell. laughs> <laughs> I had someone at Play Expo London come up to me and congratulate me for your channel. Scott. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I love your channel, Scott. But I'm... the ironic thing is, you probably do more for the community than I would ever do ever, and it, <laughs> you didn't get any credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been recognised before, and it is very yeah, weird. It's, it's weird. weird getting recognised. What were the jury like though when that happened? <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Yeah, yeah. we, we need to get one of those toilet joke books and just sit on the when you're sitting on the bog, read up on some really crap jokes, and that's what we should. Uh, every stream we should be injecting some of those. Oh, well, I have to be careful because I've got the I've got like the Cicopedia book of well the, the Cicopedia book of sick jokes, but a lot of them you just. You, I get about three, through about three of them, and the channel we stream will just stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just go, no. Nah, it just reminds me of my dad. Every time I used to stay at his house, he would have a Jerry Clarkson autobiography in his fucking toilet. And I was like, do I wipe my ass with a book or actually toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Go take a shit. I don't know if there was ever a. a, a um, this is stage eleven in Space Hour. I don't know if there was ever a yeah. difficulty setting in it, but it's bloody solid. <laughs> By now, I'd probably be punching stuff. <laughs> you did watch that stream where I was playing V V V V V V V. And yes, Vin and um, <laughs> and it brought back memories of reviewing it for Achievement Hunter, like <laughs> this nearly the... ten years ago. Oh my word! It was um, yeah. So, oh yeah, you can review this game. It looks like fun. And like an hour later, I just wanted to hurt myself with anything. You know, it's bizarre though. After that, I down uh, down <laughs> downloaded it onto um, 3DS because they do a portable port on that. Uh huh. And um, it's really good. I think I think you do get into its vibe though after a while. So, I mean, you really yeah. Because it... I don't know. It's like I did that with Super Meat Boy. I I played it originally on the 360. And I just couldn't get on with it at all. But then I played, bought it again, like years down the line on PC, and I was obsessed for like two weeks over it. I could get enough. <laughs> and I got nowhere in that. I tried that a few weeks ago on the stream. And it was lame. Oh, you gotta play it with a keyboard though. If you try oh. and play it with a controller, it does not work. It's like yeah, this it's... game here, Space Harrier. It works really well with a joystick, as in a proper waggly joystick. Yeah. With a pad like this, it is actually really hard. Well, I've never been uh, that sensitive to input lag, but recently, yeah, I, I can really feel it, especially, uh, I mean, the game, not myself. And uh, <laughs> trying to play a game with that sort of, like, like delay really annoys me. So, uh, RetroArch recently released a new patch where they you can pretty much reduce all input lag on anything now. Really? Apart from individual emulators, and that really helps when trying to play... Um, Legend of Dragoon, where the, one of the combat mechanics, you have to time your your button presses at the right time. Before that update happened, I couldn't do it because the input lag was so bad, you couldn't hit, get the timer right. But now, oh. easy. Is that why if you play games like, sometimes I'm playing Street Fighter 2 on a, a retro emulated cab. Yeah. Awful. I ran it awful. You can't let the moves out. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, like I said, I never really noticed it until recently, but now it's like any opportunity I can use to play it with less input lag, I'm doing it, you know. Kind of feel spoiled now. Oh, here we go. I've, I'm literally three quarters of the way through the sick book of jokes. To find come on, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> what's 100 yards long and smells of piss? What's 100 yards long and smells of piss? The post office queue on a Thursday morning. <laughs> God. Nice one. I know where Bernard Mang is getting his bloody jokes now. Oh, yeah. Do you remember when what's his name got his joke book nicked? Oh, um. Uh, Bob Monkhouse. What I always wondered was. He had a joke book? Yeah. <laughs> was it a basically like a notepad? It was like a A4 book. That he, like an A4 notebook. Yeah. I think he got it back. Good story. Everybody's <laughs> enthralled. 
That fucking anecdote was banging. Oh, That's <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. What we should do though, what I'm wondering is, is um, Scott, I, I, I should, um, I'm just gonna like watch one of your videos and I'm going to uh, read all of the captions, rip them, and then I'm going to just re-record re your video, but I'll do it. So no, you, I tell you what. Your no, script, you know, you, your footage, your everything. We'll see what, <laughs> how it Yeah, but, but Andrew, what you need to do to make it more interesting is put on auto, YouTube auto subtitles. What, you have to do the auto <laughs> subtitles? Script. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. That would <laughs> make you look mental, wouldn't it? They don't, yeah. especially, I don't know why, is like they don't know my accent. So if I have, because I have pretty hard A's and R's, they when you see them pop up on the screen they're completely wrong and then people take the piss like oh why you got it's mostly americans because they don't get it it's like why you gotta pronounce a and r so hard it's like because it's my accent you don't you prick <laughs> who is this scott this scott is scott from scott's game asylum you're you're allowed to post your url we will allow it post your url scott all right okay let the but you're not allowed to click on it <laughs> till later. <laughs> yeah, because it clicks off your channel. <laughs> Open a new window. Target equals new. Put in, the, put in some HTML codes in there. <laughs> All right. Oh, go. Word. God, I hope this game ends soon because I want to play Shinobi and my fingers are bleeding. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, play some Shinobi. Which one? The first one or the third one? Ooh. Shadow Down doesn't count. No, it does. I love that game. <laughs> I want to play the one... I don't know now. I, I kind of forget, to be honest with you, which is which until I try them sometimes. Well, the first one is, like, if you want to cry into your pillow at night. Three is if you want to cry into your pillow, but sound and but the soundtrack would be completely awesome. And Shadow Dancer if you love dogs. I think Fire Goose has got it. Revenge of Shinobi. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the one. You know what's on nice? The Shinobi on the Mega uh, Master System was pretty convincing. If you, it, what's really weird is when you play Master System games, you go, oh, these are pretty good. It was actually yeah. quite a bloody good system, <laughs> really. It was one of the first games I had in the Master System. I played it to death. Oh, let's try. All right, I'm going to try to remember games I had on my Master System. You tell me if you had them. Time Soldiers. Yes. Dynamite Ducks. Yes. Uh, Rambo Free. Uh, yeah, I did, actually. Thunderblade. Yes, well, it's Thunderblade, come on. Um, what else did we have? Sonic, that was good. Yeah, no, I've never been a big... Yeah, Sonic was all right. I've never been a big fan of Sonic, to be honest with you. Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion. I have yes, that. but it made me rage like no tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else we might have had. No, I can't think of any. Go on, you, you, your turn. Oh, Timebot. Right. You must have had... No, Transbot, that's what it was called. Do you remember Transbot? Um, and uh, Cyborg Justice as well. Oh. Which was a uh, side scroll beat em up, which was so hard you can get off the first level. Um, well, my early, like, my favourite, like, Mass System slash Mega Drive memory. <sighs> Mass System would be uh, Fantasy Star. Um, I can't it might have been Fantasy Star 1. I think I was the only one on Mass System. Whatever. It was a Japanese car, and I remember because I couldn't read any of the text. <laughs> I tried to play the game, and I couldn't understand what was going on. Um, Mega Drive though would be like Chak and the Forever Man. That was one of the first games I bought my own pocket money, and I hated that game. Look oh, really? Um, the Immortal, which is probably one of the games that got me into RPGs, and it's well, it's friggin' hard. Uh, uh, I used to play uh, Fatal Labyrinth a lot as well. I think that was like what super me, hard then? as well. There's tons of games, absolutely tons of games. Do you know Probably what, though, Scott, I have to admit, I've always, always, always wanted to get into JRPG, but I just can't. I don't know <laughs> they, why. They're a very acquired taste, especially depending on which era you want to go for. Like, early games, like Fancy Star and all that, are pretty straightforward because they're basically knockoffs of Western RPGs. But, you know, the closer you get to now, the more fan servicey they become and just more trite. Fudge! Sorry, I just can't believe right. I did that. <laughs> Seizure inducing. 
So would you give, what would you say then? You know, you've got these modern platforms. What would be a JRPG I could try on a Wii U or a Switch or something? Um, I don't know if it's available on the Switch, but Tales of Bizaria is probably one I'd play first. Ooh. Yeah, and I've got loads of portable. I've got loads of the uh, Nintendo portables, so I'm sure there's a few for those too. Well, even like, like all right, you know, I don't care much for the Switch. They do have the uh, updated Port of Fancy Star One, I think, and that is pretty much the, the definitive version now. So, and it's a lot easier for newcomers because back then that game was hardcore. You had to make your own maps and all that shit. It was very like in the same vein as CRPGs like Ultima. So, yeah, that would be your best bet. Or, like I said, uh, I don't know if Tales, Tales of Zeria is on the Switch. Or uh, Tales of Zestereo I know is on the Switch. That would be worth picking up. Oh, I'll have to have a look out for those. What do you think of games, though? We were talking about Xenoblade Chronicles briefly. Uh, sorry, Xenoblade X. Um, yeah. What kind of game is that? I'm not even sure how what, what category that uh, falls in. <laughs> To be honest, it felt, it felt like an, an MMO without the massively multiplayer part of it. It felt that kind of style, um, very monster hunty. Uh, monster, what's it called? What's that fucking game called? Monster Hunter. Yeah, it's very much like in that. It's weird. It is really weird. I've never, be, I've never played it to completion, but every time I picked it up, I've always enjoyed it. But I've never like, huh. I want to play that to, to the end. Yeah, it's, I see the mm. interest pretty quickly. Yeah, because what I noticed in it, you, you, I think you're right, because it, it, if you play Breath of the Wild or Grand Theft Auto, all those, your, your characters got... The physics are really good, aren't they? You know, like how you can do certain things. And in uh, yeah. Xenoblade, it doesn't have that it's finesse. It's so stiff. It is it's really rigid. Um but I, I just love it. I just love it. It depends what you, you like. If you like collecting, you got it. If you like exploring, you got it. If yeah. you like combat, you got it. It's got everything for everybody. I grind it up to when you get to unlock mechs, and that's when I stop playing. So oh. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. It's going to be great. And then as soon as I started playing the mechs and all that stuff, I'm like, oh, this is just what I was doing before, but in a heavy 20 ton mech suit. Fun. I, oh, I, Castano actually had a good uh, suggestion. Yeah, Dragon Quest Eleven. That would probably be your best bet. Sorry, what quest? Uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Dragon Switch. Quest Eleven. Yeah, that would be a good... Well, because it's basically the mashup of the old and the new. And it's got a brand that is not been completely thrown through the... <laughs> shoved through a fine picket fence right now, like Final Fantasy. All right, here's a funny thing. A little bit earlier about we were talking about my Amazon OCD. I've also got a little bit of a gaming OCD, um, which I find yeah. very hard to break. Do you know what I'm going to say? Very picky. Yeah, I'm well, no, 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 the same very picky pickle, but it. here's one thing, though, Scott. Here's my particular one, and tell me if this is what you do. You just told me a game that's number 11 in a series. Yeah, I will now but... feel say, no, I'm not going to play that. i got to start <laughs> at one and work my way up to it in case all the others were good. You, no, you really don't need to. Uh, with Dragon <laughs> Quest and Final Fantasy, they are pretty much insular. So you don't have to know ten games beforehand, right? Okay, uh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, so you can. All right, if you can get over that hump, you'll be fine. So I tried doing that with Final Fantasy one. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll play the very first one. I've never done that before. That'd be fun for a video. I think I played it for an hour, and I thought, fuck this. I don't think it's I've ever my... played a Final it's, Fantasy. That's my. It's way too archaic now. Uh, I, I, I have most of them, but the, I think the only ones I haven't played is the two MMOs and uh, 12. But uh, I, the thing is with Final Fantasy, especially if you're reviewing JRPGs, everyone knows it because it's basically a frame of reference. So do I really need to talk about them yet? No, because I've got hundreds of other games I could talk about beforehand. So yeah, that's why I've not really done anything. I want to do a Final Fantasy 13 review because uh, I don't think it... Yeah, everyone's still slapping that pony. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I remember it's watching awesome. the Final Fantasy movies. Were they were they anything to do with the games? Apart from uh, children, which was basically when they were trying to milk Final Fantasy VII like five years after the fact. Um, that had somewhat of story tied to that game. The other ones, no, not really. Oh, apart from Kingslave, because it's basically the prequel to the fucking Final Fantasy XV, because they can program the fucking thing into the game. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that was one, lads. 
I Even like. I kind of like that game. <laughs> Do you like games which have other games inside them? So I remember if you played um, Might and Magic Six, you had a game inside it called I think Arco Mage, which was basically like a Magic the Gathering card game. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not really in like with. I'm playing The Witcher recently, and the first game doesn't have Gwent's, but yeah, I get what you mean. It depends on the game, because um, like those card games just drive me mad. But like if Shem, if I'm playing Shemu, yeah, I'll play some <laughs> games about running and um, space area. Why not? Yeah. There's something satisfying about the meta-ness <laughs> of it. Is <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's well, like with Gwent, especially he broke off into his own thing, and Hearthstone. But it was Hearthstone even part of WoW? I don't think it was. Whatever. I'm talking about my ass. Oh my bloody bloody hell! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> slammed everywhere. This is insane though. Seriously, I bet there's some guy on Japanese Twitch playing this right now. And he's just yeah, got like a with, one credit. With his toes, with, yeah. <laughs> probably playing it with his tongue or something like that. And he's on like Twin Galaxies. Is there two you know, Japanese videos? I only found those videos of like the girls eating like six kilos of noodles. Really weird. I think it is it, yeah, for sure. But well, what about the people who are it. tipping them? That's the weird bit. Oh yeah. Yeah, but they, I don't know where they put the food. To be honest, I mean, logistically. Do you think you could have eat, you can always eat more food when you're younger? That's <laughs> eat a good more food question. When what? When you were younger, could you eat more yeah. food? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can yes. drink more beer. You can eat more food. So maybe they're using youth is on their side, and you don't remember being able to <laughs> do such feats. No, I still couldn't eat like whether well, what the girl like eating like ten packs of noodles in one. What go. about the girl who's trying to eat like an octopus or something and it's sucking until, on their face? Yeah, until they wake up at thirty-five and bleed fucking noodles out every orifice. <laughs> <laughs> I remember though. I remember when I was younger. I used to be able to. My stomach was a lot stronger for like spice. I mean, I like spicy stuff now. Oh but yeah. When a, but when I was a kid, well not a kid. When I was eighty, about kid. 80 yeah. Plus. I would eat just ridiculously hot things and all the time. Yeah, so I, 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 I used probably to fucked my stomach up. I used to down like sh shots of hot sauce for the fun of it. But oh now, yeah, I used to, I, I used I would, to... not now. I'd be out for days if I did that. Yeah, I used to do that kind of shit. I used to like like for a dare. Someone's like, oh, I'm gonna drink this bottle of Tabasco. I'm like, all right, yeah. yeah. You know, I do all that stuff. I mean, someone once dared me to drink all the vinegar out of a jar of pickled onions. Oh, oh lovely. That's that. I don't, I'd quite oh, like yeah. to do that. But did you have to chug it? Down yeah. one, down in, yeah. Yeah. Was... I could do all that kind of stuff, but now it's like I... that's probably now why like I get crippling stomach pain. With yeah, I can't do that do. now, especially with a recent like health stuff. I can't do that shit. Like before, like oh yeah, I'd drink some bong water, that'd be fun, but no, I couldn't do that now. No yeah. way. So, uh, Scott, I'll I'll tell you something. I'm going to admit, I was actually going to call you tonight. And, oh, you uh, were? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Booty I, was call? I was going to see if you wanted to go to the pub. Um, but I think we're doing the next best thing. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you joined the stream and I got my Scott fix. It's alright, I'm having a Diet Coke break, so yeah. to, uh, you don't have to witness me wearing no shirt. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, there's. I'll tell you what. I a YouTuber who's just created one of the most amazing pieces of content I've seen in ages. Have you ever seen Atomic Shrimp? No. Nope. No. Is that a does, game or a person? Like, scam he, he's a bit like Ash. His videos are either a bit like Ashen's, or he's a scam baiting. Right. Okay. He's, he's quite good with the scam baiting. But he made a recent video about what are the best type of hot dogs you can buy in the UK. Okay. Fairly boring. However, one of the essential parts of his video he built was the Wobble Dog 9003i. Mm. Mm. Right. Okay. And I will have post this link in the chat to this video. And it is brilliant. He's created a machine to test how wobbly hot dogs are, and it's hypnotic. As you skip through it, and you watch it, you think it's a machine, you watch it, and you're going like, oh my god, this is amazing. This machine he has built. Oh, I almost want to watch that now. <laughs> Let's all click off your channel now. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone looks at the wobble dog. Can't, can't, can't anybody convince somebody to raid my channel? Someone famous to do do that thing where they all just jump on. Wow. 
Interestingly whatever. enough, though, I've um, on the Discord. There's been a lot of posts of uh, Limmy. Limmy has a Twitch channel, which I didn't mm -hmm. know, and I I quite like that. Kill uh, just off. I don't get. It. I've tried streaming in the past. I was like, why is everyone watching my boring fucking ass and voice just yap about nothing? It's like, what am I doing? Yeah, but sometimes it's nice not to have anything to be talking about. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I guess when I'm doing like video stuff, I try to have an objective, and streaming yeah. is too like loose. Like, all right, I, I did stream a little while ago, editing one of the videos, and that was quite a lot of fun because yeah, you know, we're just talking bollocks while I'm trying to fake that idea. Oh. I'm doing, you know, <laughs> I should um. One of these days, I'm going to do a show the stats for my channel on how what videos actually get the subs and stuff, and it is all the most stupid, mundane, dross videos I have. Yeah, um, yeah the CPU. And that, which I, yeah. <laughs> which every time I watch a video, I see that on my feed for like a week afterwards. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. That used to be like, I think it was reddited. I used to get thousands and thousands and thousands of views of that every single day. And then when that video went away, my channel dropped by about 80%, which is <laughs> for the last year, it's been sucked, stuck in the doldrums because of that. Well, I think you did it before everyone's cool. And now like Linus did all that shit and <laughs> everyone's doing it now. So yeah. Oh, yeah hey, we... Jason. Holy oh. smokes. <laughs> Woo. So intense. did you also hear about the YouTube change that uh, is going to be imminent? What Another one. To do what? Subscriber counts, public subscriber oh, counts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, What's that do? They're just consolidating them, aren't they? Instead of showing you an actual number, you're going to just be... Say, yeah, like, one... you're on 13,001, you're going to be 14,000. No, it, like it rounds down. It rounds down to the yeah. 8,000. So you, for example, on 13,574, Andrew, what it will do is it'll say, it'll just, 13. if anyone looks at your channel, just say 13k. Which right. is what your subscribe button says anyway. But the actual, once you click on about on anyone's pages, anyone under a thousand will have only an approximate number of viewers. It's not a big deal, channels. but I think it would, it would, it would probably be upsetting to you if you're, um, got small numbers right yeah for a smaller channel yeah or definitely. does it just keep them okay anything under a thousand is anything under a thousand stays uh, the same yeah otherwise how do you, you would like to feel you're progressing yeah yeah but really like whoever watches your channel doesn't really look at your sub count the only person that it's gonna do is you and uh <laughs> well I, yeah that I, I when i see the other people looking at it it's like well i don't think they really care no People the care idea, the... if it's like zero. That's how I think it is. Yeah, possibly. But it also means that YouTube won't even recommend those. So it's really difficult. I don't even know how... I can't... How you? If you're starting a channel now, I don't even know how you'd start. It's just such an awful... How does it work? Well, you... you know, I see people start channels all the time. And yeah, you, you just got to hit that stride you gotta find that audience and all that but i think they have they put a lot of good work in outside yeah. of youtube that's the only way you can make it work yeah the only time i really get annoyed like i've had someone i'm not gonna name names i had someone send me a message on twitter and say oh hey i just subscribed to your channel can you subscribe to mine oh sub for sub they'd still do yeah it's like all right uh, here's that's really gonna look. help one extra like, ha yeah have a look at my channel see what you think and i'm like I really don't want to eviscerate this guy because he's got like 900 odd subs, which is cool. You know, he's, yeah, he's put the work in, but all his content is dry. Um, let's play the games. There's no um, personality put in. There's no like him talking about the game. It's like episode oh, yeah. 57 of The Last of Us, and it's like I really don't care because you you've not put any effort. It's like, yeah, you may have uploaded those videos, and it would have probably had. It probably would have been great if you were John God Games or whatever, and you was doing this in 2007. But now, like, put some fucking effort in. And I'm not saying I'm fucking talented and shit, but it's, it just winds me up where people think, oh, I deserve to get credit for putting no effort in whatsoever. And I don't mean everyone has to make a big production. I think you, I be... think it's one of those things, isn't it? It's it's your. If they do something and you don't like it, right? But yeah. 
it's like the cre the credit will be there by the views, isn't it? People will vote with their time. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, and people will vote with their time. They'll watch that video in thirty seconds. They'll check out and never come back. Um, yeah, I, that just annoys me sometimes. Where I see channels that can barely uh, can barely string twenty fucking views together per video, but they do everything they can to be engaging and. For someone like that has put zero effort into his <laughs> into his work kind of just irks me for some reason maybe i'm being an asshole about it but you know that's my personal view on it you know i've been doing this for a long time i think i think to... yeah you know it's, it is scott as well you forget how it was at the beginning how yeah. it's hard it is to get any traction you know what i think is weird i i um i realize now that a lot of the things i did i did very wrong um, but this is the, it's the same in life, same in business, same in your career. Yeah, but you, learn, you know, you eventually adapt. you mellow out, don't you? And you yeah, go, oh, yeah. Just... Like so, now, yeah, I put a lot of effort into a single video. You know, sometimes it takes like a month for me to make one. But I don't take it myself seriously. I'm not gonna influence anyone. I'm not gonna do the hey guys and all that shit. Hey guys, hey guys, now. what just... is up? Yeah, I'm just doing it now for myself make you know if, and if it entertains everyone else who's watching it great you know i it, for, and since then my channel has exploded so maybe it's there's a gimmick for maybe it's a benefit for not really giving a shit about being the best or whatever you should change the name to scott's self gratification <laughs> and see if the that helps <laughs> You could save that for your chat <laughs> Not that I know what that is. <laughs> but I don't have to, maybe. No. That would just be so awkward. Like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Fap, fap, fap. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> going to go away now. <sighs> oh my god, how many levels is in this game? Hopefully not many more. I, I kind of feel I want to see the end, even though this is effectively like a computer assisted speed run because I'm using save states every two nanoseconds. Um, but I think we want to see what happens. <laughs> well, it, it, Scott, it'll be well, one of those like, messages like, that says you have one, one, yeah, it one will did. Be, yeah, congratulations. 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 Yeah. <laughs> well, cheers. We've got this far. You can't even spoke congratulations. But your yeah, mission is not like... finished and then it starts again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking ghost and goblin style. <laughs> oh my word! I do every now and then. I do watch um, AVGN's play of that. I, I like his video <laughs> on that, and I, I I just have to watch it over and over. <laughs> yeah, I love that video as well. Oh, Craig says, "Have you got unlimited lives?" No, I'm not. I haven't got unlimited lives. I'm actually on my last life, but I'm using save states, as Scott's kindly mentioned. Yeah, saves got me. I use it all the time in video. <laughs> when I'm recording games cuz how could you even crazy. do this without them i mean look at this i remember once i played through this with an arcade emulator and i just had unlimited credits cuz i kept pumping in more and more virtual yeah. creds and it's exactly the same as this but without the um delay of the, the but, <laughs> falling to the ground dying <laughs> I don't know if this is me but when i finally bought uh, bought near geo mvs one slot a few years ago and I thought, oh, right, great, I can finally play Neo Geo games properly, carriages and all that. And then once I started playing it, I was putting everything on the free play and just kept pushing the coin button. Like, well, well I might as well just go with emulation if that's the case. <laughs> it's like kind of uh, the luster of once I got it finally went away. So here's on. the question. Does having the unlimited credits take away some of the desire and the, the urge to get better because it's not costing you in a way yeah i don't think arcade games work at home no at all um i think especially that's... some games it's like i've played like even though i love it i love altered beast but playing it at home sounds so weird because you don't have like the ambience of an arcade or you know you can't hear people sit shouting and screaming and when you try and just listen to it on its own it just feels <sighs> empty it's weird there is something about an arcade with its kind of Poor lighting, yeah. And smoke, smoke, and... especially like like gun games as well, like House of the Dead. Yeah. If, if we're at Play Expo and I'm playing House of the Dead, I'm at home. But if I play it at home, it just feels weird. Yeah. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if you can play through this without shooting. 
I mean, that might just be the solution, because at least there's slightly less going on then on the screen boss if fights. you do that. Just the boss fights, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know, maybe you look on like an awesome Game Zone quick video. I imagine that you can do it. I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> look at that. I'm actually that am doing better. That's the irony of it all. Yeah, but doesn't it? It doesn't, prog bleh, it doesn't progress unless you shoot certain uh, enemies, doesn't it? I think, I don't know, let's see, I think you might just have to get the bosses. Well, I think that one still would be there. Whoa, 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 whoa. we're doing all right. There's the boss. Let's, oh, the end boss. I think this is the very end of the game, thank God. <laughs> it's the sort of person in the sp spunky mm. thing. That's interesting. I've been offered a pay promotion for my next video. <laughs> Is it from uh, Grammarly? <laughs> no. In fact, I do use it. It would be nice to have a fucking <laughs> sponsorship for Bear. Cause that's a, that monthly sub is friggin' expensive. Is I it, use no. Grammarly, though. It's very good. Yeah. Um, no, it's from like some sort of Chinese. Woohoo! Oh, that wasn't it's from the... some Chinese mobile game. I'm not going to look at it. Can't be asked. <laughs> Zelda's trapped in a sperm bubble. <laughs> you, that sounds like Nintendo's no, next game. Still going. I think this is the boss rush, uh, the boss rush level. Yeah, doesn't it just do all the different bosses, doesn't it? Yeah, then... I think so. I don't know, I think I've only completed this game once, and that was using an action replay. Oh, on the Mega Drive. You... <laughs> a long time ago. Scott, is Alien Isolation any good? Because I picked that up for yes. the Xbox, and I thought that looked very good. good. It's very good, but it's also very, very, very empty at times because the get the the game itself, the alien, is randomized. Mm. So there's no two places you go will be the same. So sometimes he'll stalk you every five fucking minutes, and it's a pain in the ass. And then other times, the alien won't appear for hours, and you're just yeah. doing grindy stuff until it appears again. The only thing I would say about the game is it was actually designed with VR in mind. And there's a yeah, hidden VR they, mode they, within they it. They never implemented it, did they? Until yeah, but that guy's time. unlocked it, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have played it in VR. I have. I played I it for like 20 up. minutes and that was enough. I played it for about 10. I actually had to take heads off and go be sick. Yeah. Because no, the, yeah. It, it, it's a <laughs> horrendous <laughs> motion sickness. Well, yeah, it was weird as well, because when I tried that with my uh, DK2 Oculus, it was stuttery. It was, it was stuttery as all fuck. But then I tried it with tried this with a PSVR and it was fine. So mm. no, it's fun. It's fun on my Rift, but it was just it was too smooth. It's it's the same with any game I find in VR where you are walking or gliding. It invokes the motion sickness of the way you move. Ah, it's nice. weird because when I first started playing games in VR, yeah, I would get a bit nauseous. But now I don't feel it at all. The only time I I, I felt like violently ill. Mm -hmm. was when I played Skyrim VR. I played it for like 10 minutes. I had to take the headset off because I, I had a hurl. It was that bad. Mm. But other than no, that, a... I've, not had that, I've not had it that bad, to be honest. No, I've had two, two of them that made me feel ill. It was the um, Alien Isolation and the other one was um, with the Rift, the Skycar demo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't put it in I forgot about the sky car. Yeah, that is uh, nauseating. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, well, saying now, I'm still saving up to get an Oculus, uh, the new one. Not the Quest, because it's shit, the other one. Yeah, the one. With, with the internal tracking. Yeah, Yeah, that, that sounds good. Funny. I can't stand all that bloody wires. Well, I just want to play Robo Recall without punching my walls. I fucking love Robo Recall. It's <laughs> so good. Yeah. Did you ever play, play that game with the, there's like a cowboy shooter in the store? It's really good. You play like a dead oh, um, ghost skeleton. Yeah. It's one of the packings that you get with uh, the Oculus, if I remember. I remember and I, I was playing that. I was just trying it in the office at work. And I just joined a game and it was actually a, it's an online game. I didn't realize that you're, t you're, you're shooting real people. Yeah. Yeah, it was addictive are. as hell. I just like... <laughs> And some of the staff were like moving the chairs out of the way for me because I, I, I was like, I refuse to exit the game. I'm like, no, I'm in this now. Yeah, yeah. Have, have you actually played Robo Recall, Andrew? I don't think so. Oh, Robo Recall, fucking What's sweet. it about? 
Oh. It's basically um, your uh, robot recallist. You're, you're trashing robots like no tomorrow with extreme force. Have you oh. seen the film? Have you seen the film My Robot, where all the yeah, robots go rampant much. throughout the city? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much that. And made you're... by the people that made Unreal Tournament, so <laughs> it's pretty fun. And it is just fucking insane, isn't it? Because it's yeah. so like you can grab robots, rip them apart with your hands, then use your body to beat another robot, grab yeah. a bullet out the air, throw bullets back at people. Oh, it cool. is just But that's amazing. the coolest thing, is like until I got a CV one, which I've now sold on unfortunately, I had a DK one and DK two. Mm. And the definitive quote unquote games then were like simulated. So Elite Dangerous, which is still excellent in VR and it's very hard to play it without it. And like other sort of sit down experiences, as soon as I got a CV1 with the motion controls and everything, boot it up, Robo Recalls, like, oh yeah, this is it. <laughs> yeah. And since then, I've been, I've loved VR. Yeah. Um, kind of, yeah. Nah. I'm missing Beat my CV1, I want it back. And of course, but Beat Saber is great as well. I haven't played Beat Saber, I've played a lot of Audio Shield. Um, Beat Saber's great, but you have to have Beat Saber for Beat Saber. Yeah. <laughs> It's fuck paying for content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, congratulations! You win! <laughs> congratulations. Well, that was anti-climatic. <laughs> yeah, there you go, you won. But I think my, my personal favourite VR game <sighs> at the moment would... Pr well, uh, I think uh, out of all of them would be Farpoint. Because it absolutely got what a VR shooter is supposed to be. It may be a little bit too dry for some people, but man, I love that game. And <laughs> it's uh, kind of hilarious as well, especially when the aliens uh, walk in front of you to make sure that you see them before they jump at you so you don't get startled. So if you're a complete wussy, it's a perfect game for that. That sounds good. <coughs> What's all this talk now in the chat? We've not There's a lot of hard drugs talk we've been missing. No talking about grannies who like the song Major Tom. Oh, really? Is talking it, is... about the, the bit of Bowie love. Is Major Tom um, like slang for something? No. No. Probably. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I've got to put my name in. Hang on. I might have just put it, it as Dr. It's not, it's not like... Yeah. So there wasn't any other versions of this space house. Right, so what was that other game I was talking about? It was one of the shin would be the arcade. Um maybe. Right, let's see. Aerobiz Supersonic Alien Storm Battletech. Oh, Alien Storm. I remember playing that game quite a bit. I don't know why. I never liked it when I played it. It's not that good, is it? If you play it now, no, it's awful. it really isn't. It's one of those games you get on from the mega cartridges. And you're like, yeah, this is pretty fun. And then you play it for five minutes. And I'm like, oh, I'm bored now. <laughs> I'd rather play Streets of Rage. Revenge of the Shinobi. There you go. Oh, a, a, a seven zip in a raw. It's a, zef a seven zip in a raw in a zip. <laughs> Come on. God. Crossing the compression in the streams. There. And I can see the, the. Oh, there we go. I can see the. Uh, the thing spinning. You know, your little Windows is trying to do something and it's trying to unarchive all of the, the, the chain of these things. Oh, what are you running this on? A fucking paperclip? Should be extracting <laughs> quicker than that. Uh, Revenge of Shinobi. There we go. Major Tom Tom is slang for a very adult subject. <laughs> I'm not down with the kids, I'm afraid. D Type Jazz says, Where do you get these ROMs? What where do you get Sega Mega Drive ROMs? Oh, don't post anything. You'll get banned. Oh sorry, this is it. Yeah. You go to you go, go, to, go Google. to Google and just type Sega ROMs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think even Google just email them to you. The <laughs> Hello, Google. Just email me all the ROMs, please. Yeah, just sign no up the G Drive. It'll be on there. <laughs> because earlier tonight, we just even... Earlier tonight, we um, were playing Sonic in a web browser. So it was like literally they don't they don't care that much that you can actually just... There's websites which are letting you play, letting you play the ROMs. Oh, you meant sar that sarcastically. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Oh, I posted that. 
<laughs> Do you remember when Bad. when let me let me Google that for you used to look really legit though? Yeah. Yeah, but now it's just a a, a passive aggressive thing to say like just fucking Google it, you asshole. I don't, but I don't like, need to explain this to you. Do you remember the website Gizoogle? Or get oh no. We always do that, don't we? First do thing you remember. <laughs> oh, no, I don't actually. Boom. So there's a website called Gizoogle that used to and turn you your um, website into gangster speak. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I vaguely remember that now. But yeah, back when you thought that was cool at 12 years old. <laughs> 12 years old. I think <laughs> I was like 20 something then. But I think yeah. it might have been about 15, 16 actually, <laughs> now thinking about it. I forget that you're a youngster. Fuck off, 35. <laughs> Yeah, a mere babe. Youngster. Yeah, my, my digestive system's still barely working. <laughs> You've still got a digestive system. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Andrew, did you ever contact that man on Gumtree who said for a pair of like dirty knickers he'd do your patio for you? No. No, but we ought to have. Cause I, what? I, I, you I say can... that again? There was a guy, wasn't there, Andrew? We found him on the streams on Gumtree, and he was, was like a Gumtree? builder. Was it um, Craigslist? Craigslist, sorry. Craigslist. He was a builder. And he'd do, he'd do like a patio, put a shed up, or like you know, put some decking up and stuff here, in exchange for a couple of pairs of dirty knickers. Well, I wonder how his fucking business is going on now, <laughs> Jesus. Pervert paving. <laughs> I do your paving for your dirty knickers. <laughs> yeah, why not? Well, yeah, I guess, but you know, I'd rather get paid out for a hard days of work. Hey, hey, if someone if someone wants to do your do your, your foundation for your shed, for a dirty pair of boxes, hey, you, let him. But that might just be like something you might just do on the weekend, Scott. Like, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got nothing better going on. Why would Parody you? and paving. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. A question to the chat: Is there anyone in the chat? Who wouldn't exchange a pair of dirty pants in it for someone to do their like, you know, decking or patio or paving or you know, or a bit of pointing maybe on the chimney? I tell you what, if 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 it was like literally somebody just said, "I want to cut," I'll do that for you. I would just do it. Yeah. I've got loads of like, you yeah, know, to be honest, I've got quite a lot of pointing show... that needs doing, and pointing is one of those ones. It's like, uh, it's, but it's... would you want to show your face? It's like, yeah, I'll agree to that, but you're you know, a fucking gimp mask or some shit. Because <laughs> you know? if you try and work legitimately, they see you. That's it. You know? I've got no problem with someone doing that. For, you know, for me. Yeah. yeah. Blow me. That's the question. Says Jason. These are. This is what back office chat on a Friday night is about. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, I think. He, I think he's right. Um, yeah. Oh no, I can't use any. My, I've got no magic powers. How do yeah, I kill these it, friggin' you, shinobi you, bastards? Because you used it straight away, like most. Fucking people play Shinobi do. Press the wrong button. I said Shinobi. Well, if you want a Shinobi Samurai. game, play. If you want a Shinobi game, play Shinobi X. What's what platform is Shinobi X? Staten. Ah. Staten. Staten. Yes, it's fucking hilarious, especially the uh, FMV. It's pure eighty schlock. Sorry, if there's if if I'm gonna switch games, there's only one game I'm switching to. Rise of the Robots. Oh. God. <laughs> well, I'm just pretending that that was your favourite game, and you have a YouTube channel called Rise of the Robots channel, and you just well, yeah, you would do persist. That well, like, oh, like when I think when I did my um, top thirty Mega Drive games video years ago, everyone was like, "Why have you put Pitfire at uh, number 30? It's like because I actually like that game. <laughs> it's crap, but it's fun crap. It's a lot better than the fucking Super Nintendo version. Jeez. Oh, in the chat, I just saw that. I wouldn't give him a pair with skid marks or anything. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't wouldn't you just say to him, you, you have that, but you, you wait till you get home before you use that. There's kids in this neighbourhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here you go, take him. I never want to see you again. Yeah, done my paving great now. Fuck off. Yeah, but what warranty do you offer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's extra. How do you do the, the swordy bit? You can definitely do yeah, a sword. Ah. Melee range. 
Yeah, that's why you are in trouble with the samurai. Go near him, slash him. I'm gonna do that magic. Wow. I I'm I'm way worse at these than I used to be. <laughs> well, Shinobi, the first one, this one, very stiff gameplay wise. That's why Shinobi Three, probably everyone, you know, considers the best. Do you know what was in? Oh, I found a computer scam we could play with. <laughs> okay. What? On Craigslist, dial Canon printer helpline, and it's got a big 0800 number. Uh, fix to fix Canon printer offline. www.canonprinteroffline.com. Why is my Canon printer offline on Mac? Get in touch with Canon printer experts to fix Canon printer is offline Mac error. Call toll free Canon printer customer service. It's got the numbers. Or visitors at Canon printer offline. Me no speak no English. Oh, that could be some. That could be fun. <laughs> Can you? Fun. <laughs> How do we get we... a... I, I think I need to get a hold of a VPN and a... I've got a VPN. I can spin up a VPN. I might spin up a VPN. And some sort of um, phone number, anonymized yeah. phone number, and then be yeah. in business. Maybe just the GIF gaff. Got plenty of those GIF gaffs. Yeah, you just get in. It's just, there's a few things you can do for numbers. Oh. <laughs> this is good. This could be good fun. What happened to your um, movie night? Is that hardware? No, it's going it's, it's to happen. I've just got to get my arse in gear and get stuff sorted. Life gets in the way at the moment. Can you explain to Scott the the whole it's amazing no, technology? We're going to watch the crying game or some shit. No, we're going to watch a movie on Netflix all together and have a Sega! stream. Okay. Hey, Peter, how are you? Not seen you no. not around for a while? Nostalgia nerd in the house. The nerd is in the house. Yes. We've been doing a lot of. Um, have you noticed in the Discord? It's been very Atari heavy the last few weeks, and I, I suspect we're going to be banging more Atari ness going on. Oh, yeah. Can you mm. bang on about the ST? <laughs> Someone's got to defend it, but all of a sudden it feels like there's. A massive community now. Everybody seems to be getting STs. I, I don't know why. Is like when I was growing up, I was around STs all the time. I never really sat down and played one. Oh, everybody's weird. doing that all computer museum, them, Peter. You know, I had all right. I had the weird friend who had a Super Nintendo and an Amiga and stuff. But everyone had STs, and I never really like had. How the hell them. do you? <clears throat> And I only have the table scraps. Like, oh yeah, I okay, get 2600. Great. This. Right, now here we go. We've got the big shinobi. <laughs> Kick him in the leg. I say big shinobi. Big samurai. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with him. Yeah, and he's this... pushing your shit in as well. Oh, should I choose a different ninja magic? Is that where I'm going wrong? Um, no, you got to attack it. you got to hit his head. So every time he strikes... His sword down, you gotta dodge it and throw shurikens at his head. He was changing colour and I was kicking his knee, but I don't know. My, no, he definitely was. I'm gonna change a different Gitsu. We don't want. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, you just <laughs> scum at his knee and limit his shield. I That's only you. just, I only just remembered I had that. <laughs> oh no, I haven't played this game in like, I don't know, 15 years at least. I play it for like five minutes, like, oh yeah, this is fun. No, let's play something else. <laughs> So, Peter, you're going to uh, that Cambridge thing. Everybody seems to be going to that. It's going to be crowded. Yeah, I really want, <laughs> I want to go as well. But Did you really? Can... Yeah, well. You know. Have you... Cambridge is such an ass to get to, though, especially where we are, yeah. right? I was going to go a few weeks ago, actually, to the museum, but I never did. Parking know. at the museum is a bugger as well. And it's in well, the middle of the, the most... It's, 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 got... it's in the most random location. It, yeah. You're going well, down, down this estate, and it's like, what the heck is this? I was going to take yeah. a train, but then all the trains got like delayed and cancelled and shit. So you know what? I can't be asked to spend my whole Saturday trying to travel to that Ooh, place. Oh, this could work. Jumpy ninja magic. Mmm... What the hell? He, I, I... Die! <laughs> I, on, I honestly am amazed at how craply. Oh, there, got him once in the head. Well, Andy, it is the Dark Souls of Shinobi. 
Do you type Jaguar? What do I think of the Highlander films? The first Highlander is great. There are no other Highlanders as far as I'm concerned. Oh, what about the Highlander source? That's a classic. No, it's... Uh... <laughs> I think the best part of that is the uh, video made by Spoonie. <laughs> Spoonie. Yeah, before yes. he went to shit. Yeah. He's kind of had this multiple year long public explosion and meltdown, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, I I wouldn't know because he blocked me on Twitter like two years ago. What did you say to him? I didn't say the thing. I said to him, mate, stop it. You know, you, everyone loves you. Why are you being an asshole? And goodbye. Yeah. So who who or what is a Spoonie? He was a very very notable YouTuber. Yeah, no Antwire. He was one of my like the one of the first uh, creators I really got into and pretty much inspired <laughs> what I do on here. But then he turned into a proper nasty yeah. piece of work. And... Yeah, really? Yeah, pretty much. He imploded big time. It was him and uh, Total Biscuit. It's like, oh, okay, maybe I can do the YouTube thing as well. All right, nowhere nearly as successful as those two, but yeah, they're, they're the ones that got my like my head in gear of making videos and stuff. But yeah, Spoonie unfortunately completely imploded, and uh, yeah, he still I think he still does like streams and stuff, but I don't think anyone really cares anymore. Nah. I think I'm going to play this, the Mega Drive version of Super Mario Brothers because oh, I couldn't handle that. It's got that music from, remember Lemmings? The Can Can. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Revenge of Shinobi's pretty, some pretty hardcore shit. <laughs> yeah, I did rage quit Castado effectively. I wonder what game this is actually. Because it's just going to be a sprite swap or something, isn't it? No, it's actually, well, it's basically the fucking Atari 800 version of Super Mario Bros. No, this is a friggin' sprite props, surely, because when did Mario do that weird fireball? And I've run out of p m the power. Yeah, that's a bit strange. <laughs> and you can't jump on the bad guys. Is it like Wonder Boy? Or no, it's definitely not Wonder Boy. Cause it isn't... It's basically Super Mario Bros. has been made in RPG Maker. That's <laughs> what it looks like. Oh, no, I don't have the Hulk hand fireball apart power. From the... Oh, apart from the badly drawn tits. <laughs> yeah, pl Jason playing uh, yeah Nintendo on Sega. What was that thing <laughs> they said? S Sega, oh, Nintendo, something or another. Yeah, Sega does what Nintendo, and that's because uh, Americans have no subtlety. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Americans. I love you, really. Sorry, Americans. Well, that's the majority of my fucking viewers on my channel. Oh, so really? Every time I make jokes, I feel like, oh, God, I'll bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> I think that uh, my, I'm the same, but I don't think any watch the streams because it's still work time. Nah, whatever. It's all jokes. God, the fucking level designer. What the fucking piss when he made this? <laughs> How are you supposed to get that? I quite like the old um, Gianna sisters. Mm. That was more, well, was it? Just a rip off of Mario. Well, in fact, I think I played Gianna more than Mario in my time. Anyone played the remakes? Yes. I, they were. I like yeah, the I um, the one on the DS or whatever it was. It, I've got a portable version of it. <clears throat> yeah, I think I've got like um, one of them on Steam, but I've never ever installed it. Oh, it's really good. You play both the sisters as well. You, it's one of those games where you swap characters out in mid. It's like there's yeah. a light, a dark and a light or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and then the world I changes think... when you swap over. Yeah, because I played that on my friend's 64 when I was a kid. Played that quite a bit actually. Whoa! Apparently, it's a hack of Squirrel King, according to Nostalgia Nerd. Oh, Squil Squillil. Squillil King. Squirrel King. <laughs> it's, it's kind of alright in a way. Um, makes me want to play Squirrel King. See what how it should be. Ugh. Nah, you won't get that immortal spinning up. Ooh. What was it? The Immortal? The Immortal. Oh, God. I love that game. So but... you really, honestly, if, it, if, it's, if it's worth doing, I will just play that because this is... You might... Alright, okay, yeah. Put it on just to try it because I want to see how far, how long you last. Is it the immortal with a, a t yeah, or just yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the immortal? The mortal. 
yeah and it's it's a cool game it's got some it's really yeah the it's it's cool looking but the uh it's designed just to fuck you over every turn you're gonna have to delete all these bros off my desktop as well later <laughs> but i'll forget right disclaimer you own all the cuts of these games so yeah don't worry we're not pirating or shit yeah Mm. I can send you the cart if you want. <laughs> Guys, has anybody got a copy of Immortal I can borrow very urgently? Right. Made by Will Harvey. Back when Electronic Arts had eyes. New game. Not here to kill oh, and steal I was, your money. I was playing this the other day on the Atari ST. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it well, it started off on the computers. I think the best version of it is the Amiga version, if I'm not mistaken. What, I've that's better than the Mega Drive? Yeah, the only one I've played is the DOS version, because that was when I first played it, and the Mega Drive version. Because that was the first one. That was the, first, that was the version I completed, anyway, when I was a kid. But I played this game for months. Don't on interfere! Whoa! I'm not duck and weave, give it the wiggle! Boosh! Oh, that was cool! Yeah, the gore is insane in this. So how does the combat work? Because I wasn't really sure what I was doing there. It's um, it's it's a, basically you got to weave out of the way of the attacks, and then just repost. It's very simple, Try again. but it can fuck you over as well because uh, sometimes the enemies just beat the shit out of you, and you don't know why. Like this guy's about to, because he's got way loads of um. But this even had an NES port, and that's pretty good as well. All right, there's no gore whatsoever. But yeah, I kind of went on a deep dive. Actually, I'm not um, really sure what the buttons do. He seems to just be fighting regardless. Yeah, it's um, it's not very uh, refined. Just, I'm just mashing at this point. Yeah, most of the time you're better off just mashing. Ah, okay, got it. Hello, I'm Jimmy Jim Jim Jim. I see. What? I, oh shit! I was going to do the voice and I couldn't read it. You must rescue Mordemir. Oh, what? Here is a key you will need. I must go now. What? He just, that was I, it. And he disappeared. Every time I see, I just see the dialogue in this game. Just, I just want to hear it in Decker Kane's voice from fucking Diablo. Oh, how did he oh. sound? What? I'm trying to think. What? Oh, the, hello. No, that stuff. The Haradri Hello, the Hara the Haradri Cube. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Oh I love Diablo. The basement and all that stuff. I can't Can, Oh, I tell you what, Scott. Figure it out. Figure out all the technologies. Get all the hooky <laughs> versions. I wanna play Diablo or Diablo 2 online multiplayer. Let's just do it. Make it work. I'm not even sure yeah, you, you can. can. I, I don't know if the GOG port supports multiplayer, probably. Oh I died. I think you do. Do you explode? You do something. I thought you die in an interesting way. It's a bit boring. You're just lying down. No, you die in multiple ways in this game. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Being eviscerated, dropping through pits, getting blown up. Yeah, it, this game's designed just to fuck you over every turn. But Peter, it's Peter if you addictive. do it, show us. So yeah, so you just you're constantly dying. Peter, yeah, show us your it, Nez play. But probably the most messed up thing about it is that the Mega Drive and the Amiga and ST ports and the PC... No. The Mega Drive, the ST and the NES port have infinite continues, mm. while the Amiga and the PC have one life. If you fucking die, you've got to start all over again. Oh, so it's a bit like Rogue, isn't it? Didn't all the yeah, Rogue get angered? And in my whole life, I've only beaten the game once, ever. And I think I might have been cheating at the time. <laughs> Alright, I was a kid at the time. But it's See, one of those games I always want to do a video on. I've just never got around to Whoa, that. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I got Rick Dangerous. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, even watching the footage now, I'm like, oh, man, I'll do a video for this. I I don't remember it being this frantic on the ST, actually, to be honest with you. This this room, I remember being in this room, but it wasn't yeah. like this. No, nah, this game is brutal. Oh, it say, so it says game around. over, play again, new game, no. Oh, you have to put your code in. Yeah. It sort of uh, saves a checkpoint at each level. Mm. But, <clears throat> yeah, if you don't make that checkpoint beforehand, you're screwed. I'll tell you a game I was starting to get into on the ST, though, was Loom. 
I'm not sure I, I missed that first time around. Did you ever play that? What, Loom? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I remember seeing the box quite a bit in, in shops and stuff. I don't yeah. I don't remember I actually played it. Yeah, I remember it going... It's a bit like mist in a way. It was like ubiquitous. Every time you went to like a computer, like a PC world or whatever as a kid, or Toys R Us, you always see a copy of it. Yeah, but you didn't really know what it was because you thought it was some sort of boring yeah, text yeah. adventure or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly that. I remember going to Virgin Mega Store in London. Cause that was I was going to say that's our local computer game oh, shop, yeah. and I affect it probably was. Um, and then go to Tottenham Court Road to look at some Casio tiny Casio computers and four inch tellies um, and yeah it was always in there yeah I used to go to the local Virgin Meg store in Reading and uh, they had all the stuff uh, I still vaguely remember they had those horrible characteristics where it was joysticks based on like Terminator and uh, Alien and all that and they oh, always had them on comfortable ones you can yeah, imagine and they always had them on sale every time I went in there they had them on <laughs> sale because no one fucking buys them <laughs> I'd look at them and thought, oh yeah, that's cool, but it's not worth 15 quid. Not when I was only getting like 20 quid every fortnight in pocket money. I just realised, guys, I've got save states like a bloody knob. -o. Yeah. We <laughs> should just be using those, which well, I am be, now. Yeah. yeah you I forbid you to come any closer. All right. Well, I'm going to slash you up. You oh, he's up. literally just standing there, but he's not guarding anything. He's guarding a corner. He's guarding... Oh, no, he's got a pile of gold. My gold. Oh, no. Oh, so your health doesn't, like, regenerate. I kind of assume for yeah. some reason that when but you the get... The trick is, like, quite a lot of the items you do pick up in this game are completely useless. Oh, that's a good point. How do you actually <laughs> use the items you pick up? Um, spores. I've got some spores. I've got bait. I've got a ring. Uh, I, I, can't, I, bet, I can't remember. But honestly, you probably just have to select it in the menu. Is drop the... the bait on the ground here. No, I don't want to drop my bait. Yeah, because I Matt. think you've got to use that to lure out one of the Goblin King. Oh, I drank like the that. water and it's restored me till half for half health. Yeah, it's not like an old school dungeon crawler where drinking water will probably end up making you dehydrated. Because that always makes sense. Fucking like Ultima Underworld style. I've never actually um, played an Ultima game. I love Ultima, but mm, it, I, <laughs> it's one of those games, a series I play through like the cracks of my fingers because it's either going to be really cool, like Ultima 1 to 5, and then on the 6 and 8 are just fucking trash fires, and a 9 especially is a... Is yes! Cool. Sorry, just... I That's just, fine. Yeah, just, especially in Ultima 8. Oh, nice man. RPG, let's put platforming in it. Yeah, like... Oh, really? Yeah, it's awful. It's really bad. I think Neil, Retro Man Cave Neil, he's, he's very much was an Ultima fan. He likes an RPG, does our Neil? He likes a bit yeah, of a Lord I think, English. I think that's... Well, Lord British. I think, when, um, I think on the last expo, we were talking about Ultima 4 for like two hours. <laughs> Oops. Now, let's... I'm going to study the patterns. Oh, Andrew, something very recent uh, and exciting has happened in my household that you will you will be very approving of. Something very wholesome that a father and a son can do together. And that is my young lad, my eldest, mm -hmm. has started... Well, actually, both of them. I was watching a bit of Star Trek last yes. night. And they both came in and started watching it with me, and they were. What hooked. track were you watching? Or what was their introduction? Right, let me. I'm trying to think which one it was. Um, Data got knocked out, and he was damaged, and he was all blind. Picard, Picard found himself in a shuttle. The, the, the crew found him in a, a shuttle abandoned in space, but it was actually Picard was in it from six hours in the future. Because oh, there was a weird. giant. That's a weird season two episode. Yeah, it's actually I remember now. They were they were rescuing another Enter uh, Starfleet ship, which was in the neutral zone, and that it was apparently mm. trying to find a planet so it could stop the Romulans from stealing an ancient technology. Yes, it's called I think it's Times Squared. The episode. Hmm. No. 
I prefer better better than life. That was a good episode. Oh, sorry, I lost my troll before. It's Red War. Yeah. Where I Did that. I actually just make a Trek. save state on a point where I would died? No. Get out the hole. He kind of. You do realise, Andrew, you were willingly willingly watching an episode of the second season of Next Generation, which is known as a Pulaski episode. It was. It had Pulaski in it. Yeah. I. He's all right. She 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 <laughs> seems to be less of a pushover than. Um, Crusher. Yeah. But my bugger. favorite Beverly episode is the what? My favorite episode of uh, Next Gen with Beverly in is from season seven. It's an episode called Sabrosa, where she has sex with a ghost who's to, who's to have sex with her with a grandmother. Oh, really? <laughs> say that <Yes>. again. <laughs> she gets called back to the planet where her grandmother was living, and for years her grandmother had been shagging a ghost. And then she died, <laughs> okay. and she ended up falling in love with the ghost who was shagging her instead of her grandmother. Very <laughs> weird. Didn't, didn't something similar happen okay, to um, um, Troy? Mm, not ghost sex. There wasn't. There, there, there weren't many ghost sex episodes of Net, of Star Trek in general. <laughs> the ghost, and I like it. Chat question to you. What's everyone's favourite ghost sex episode of uh, Star Trek? <laughs> list, list the episode title. Was there multiple? I don't know. I think normally when they go to ghost sex, it's pretty much they run out of ideas. It was in the last season. It was All the right. last season <laughs> of the show. Fair enough, then. Oh, this is futuristic. <laughs> this is very much that same game we were playing in VR. I don't know. Voltage software. You could be playing the Deep Space Nine platform game. Or the Deep Space Nine shooter, that's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. The only sort of Star Trek I've ever played. I, I, it's, it's actually making you watch all of this wankety wank talking. I do like yeah, the uh, Starfleet. Yeah, in. Troy had a sun fair fight, and that was. Oh, yeah, the space gas got Troy yeah. up the duff, and then she wanted the to child. keep her son. Yep. But it only lasted like a couple of hours, so it's alright. Fucking yeah. hell, that's more sex action in Star Trek than fucking Game of Thrones. No, no, there is a lot in it, and it's all interspecies, the best kind. Uh, JJXP, you're thinking, of, you're thinking of Voyager. <laughs> interspecies or all like a fuck all. Uh, it bring back fucking clerks too. Oh, I yeah, think JJ. I was just watching that because my mouse, my, my joypad, uh, I hadn't focused on the emulator window, so the buttons weren't responding, so I just <laughs> suffered Cast through Castado all ghost, as in Patrick Swayze style, not a goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. This has got preset names oh, for male and female. Corey, Daryl, Scott, or Jeremy, Mike, Jason. It's got to be Daryl. 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 Kind of... oh, I'm kind of Ensign Daryl. Daryl. Shame, shame we can't call him more Melvin. Daryl Taylor. That sounds like a tire fit. Daryl Taylor. It's like Dennis Taylor's nephew or something. He got fed up with, <laughs> with the snooker tournaments and ended up joining the court. <laughs> oh, this is just like Bridge Crew. Oh my gosh. Well, hang on, have you... Oh, yeah, I see. I was, I was going to say, what's the point of those people at the back who are facing away from the screen? But that does actually exist in, in Star it's, Trek, doesn't it? Well, it's basically the same as when you're playing the VR game, because you're just spinning around in the chair, and then you lift your headset, and oh, where the fuck am I? How do you fire your fruit-on torpedoes? Well, with probably 15 button clicks. <laughs> you know what it's like with these sort of games. Right, so B, B accelerates, I think. A goes backwards, like puts it in reverse, like a car. C doesn't do anything. Start. Ah, that's what we want. Engineering. Oh, bummer, dude. Sorry, right. I had a Command and Conquer flashback. Right <laughs> oh, that's a great game. Yeah, they're remaking it now. Uh -huh. oh, are they? Or in 3D? But, mm, to be fair, uh, Starcraft was I good. Wanna see, I want to see... I want to see... I'm hoping it's good, but it means I'm going to have to buy a game first party from EA, and that really makes me cringe. Yeah, I would rather shit in my hands and clap than buy a game from EA, personally. <laughs> but that's the thing, is like, I feel sorry for the people, the hard-working devs, making those fucking games. You know, they're sweating 
full it's they're working 20 hour days whatever the hell mm -hmm. but it's like i don't want to support ea i really don't want to support ea i no, rather exactly. buy i instead of pirating i rather buy a game from, i'd rather buy one of their games from g2a and play it that's how fucked up that whole thing is that's why yeah because um, i did that recently when oh I... no my i broke my starship <laughs> <laughs> so I've been working on a review of Need for Speed Shift, so you're gonna have to suck the dick of the bat, the, the devil, before you get anywhere. And I played the first game on Steam because it's still available on there. So all right, cool, I can just play it on there. But the second is cheaper on Origin. I'm like, ah, oh, do I have to install that crap again? Oh no, I'd rather have VD than have Origin on my PC. Well, I installed it, and then I was like, have they ever updated this UI? Because the UI looks like it's 10 years old. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, why bother? It's like, all right, you, you, basically just a front end for fucking Battlefield, but... Mm. There's nothing I worse, though, than having to install somebody's, you know, sandbox. It just yeah, drives me nuts now. But even yeah. what made what made me laugh though is that I try to run that game in 4K because that's what I played games in, and the frame rate was t completely tanking. I thought, well, this game came out in 2011, so it should run fine. I put it in the 1080p, and I still barely got like 30 frames a second. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This game, the game must be completely balked. I did a little bit of digging, and found out that the Origin in-game helper, like Steam has actually tanks the frame rate of the games mm. so, so you turn that off it ran smoothly you're like oh that's ironic ea get in the way of press again <laughs> yeah i think so jason says he prefers you steam i think steam and discord are actually pretty good each yeah and gog i use gog quite a bit now and i've in the way sort of if i buy anything new i try and buy the gog version now not like I'm a sponsor or anything. <laughs> this episode of Scott's Game Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny enough, I am working on a, a review of The Witcher, so <clears throat> never know, might get one. Um, I think oh, yeah. I might have that. Is that is that on Xbox 360? Yeah, The uh, Witcher 2 is, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've not, the not original tried Witcher. it. <laughs> I think I barely run with PC, though, or anything else. Bless his heart. I just double tapped in Worms on the Mega Drive to do a backwards jump and it didn't work. I'm trying, and it's making me wonder did the backward jump in Worms only come in the later to versions? And also, yeah, I'm noticing. I think, so. I think it was on. You well, should ask Mr. Pinkett, he's the king of worms, don't you? Is yeah. he really? <laughs> yeah, he absolutely adores it. But look did at this, all of the worms seem to be on the same have the same colour? How do I tell apart who's the enemy? Well, it was the colour of the names, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's they're all white on this. I haven't played the original. I played Worms on the Mega Drive quite a bit, but I think the last time I played it might have been about 20 years ago. Even more. I think once it once everyone got a PlayStation, it was pretty much ubiquitous to that system for that while. You know, everything else was forgotten. See, I wasn't a, a, a PlayStation gamer so i never really have any love for it but i find it when i see uh videos of playstation games now they look terrible yeah they look so bad well it's the limitation of the system especially the textual war like, like some games are like, some like the first party games are fine mm. but then if you go off the outer ridges and play some other stuff it's pretty bad yeah but i think it put me off on that to be honest, the playstation era towards the late 90s was watching off gaming for a few years because everything just started to go 3d for the sake of it and it looked and played dreadful but it had to be 3D. yeah i get it it was that had like no chill it had everything going to be 3d yeah and it kind of hurt uh, everything for a while it was like platforming games <laughs> everything yeah. was 3d and it had to be the horrible well like croc i used to love that game growing up but playing it now who no way i can't I can't, was, I can't fucking deal with it it's just yeah it was it was 3d for the sake of it not because yeah. it made the game better yeah 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 now it's like oh yeah pixel art for days and now <laughs> ironically i'm sick of games with pixel art so it's like it's so fucking easy because everyone does it now. Ooh, i remember playing the original of this game which is splatter house so 
Oh, I'm hoping yeah. Splatterhouse 2 is, is okay. I love Splatterhouse It was a good game. Yeah, this is one of the few, I think, that are really, really good games that, that I, I enjoyed at the time. I think that guy's well, going to get even up. Even though not many people do, but I love the free. free Splatterhouse 3 I played ages. All right, it's a complete departure of the first two because you know the first two are just linear beat em ups. Well, the third one trying to do the open ended. But yeah, it's just, it's always fun. Like even watch you play it is making me smile. Like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's it's yeah, it is nice. And even the remake they made years ago is pretty fun as well. It's Ooh. within the. The taste of the day is very God of War, but it's still a lot of fun. So, um, Fire Goose says Zelda Link's Awakening on the Game Boy is the greatest game ever made. I have to say, that is a good game. I really, it, it's, oh, I got, I've got a tiny Game Boy story. Um, if you watch my earlier videos, you'll see I converted my original Game Boy, which is a blue one, um having a backlit biverted screen and all of that and it was amaze balls right watch the video on it it looks amazing and the screen is blue tinted it's just perfect i was playing Link's awakening i put the cartridge in erased all the previous save games or whatever it did oh, and uh, no. sat down to play that and then the screen totally shagged itself <laughs> so i think i've broken my original game boy Oh no! And I'm gonna have to sort that out. And I've got really bad form because uh, the Retro Future sent me a, a Game Boy which had a faulty screen on it, which I tried to fix, and I to totally ruined that as well in the fix. So I've, I'm not sure I've got the appropriate skills. From what I hear, though, I think Neil might have killed one as well. It's one of those hit and miss things. You might break it, you might get it going. But that's certainly well, one, one that disappointed me. <laughs> people enjoy a, a video where you break things just as much. <laughs> that one where you nearly set your, your face on fire with the uh, the light. With the what, sorry? With the lighter. Oh, Jesus. You could, I couldn't even <laughs> see the flame. I, I only, when I watched the video later, the flame was more obvious, but not in real life. Um, today, actually, it's not on video. I did um, my EEPROM programmer. Um, when I finished the video, I decided to put it back together and put it away, but I forgot mm -hmm. to unplug it. <laughs> Whoops. So I actually did trip the RCD in the whole back office. Uh, so, again, cameras were off. But I could have gone whole, all electro boom, couldn't I? Maybe got some people <laughs> like that. Have you seen they? that electro boom where he comes to the UK and he blows the hotel power? Oh, I yeah, love yeah, that. that. Like, but did you see that? He, he plugs that thing in with the wire and it just goes like black bang across the wall. It's like that's all his channel is like trying not to fucking get electrocuted. And he makes probably millions from it. Yeah. <laughs> And he's got he's got quite a good setup. It's not um, necessarily as dangerous as you think, but no, um, he's doing no. I think some of it's put on. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, it, which it is why he hasn't looks, killed himself. Yeah, it just looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. And by the way, Jason, yes, Civ on the PlayStation was pretty damn good. Is is is, is Civ pretty much standard? On PlayStation, like every every other um, version. No, it, well, they had us water it down for to play on a controller, but actually, it made the game more engaging. It's a bit like Civilization Revolution on the sixty. Mm. Like, I I sort of went off Civ after the one on the PlayStation, and then I played it again when Civ Rev came out, and I played that for months, and now even playing the new games it, it weirdly if i can't play it with a controller i just can't be asked to play it this is weird really yeah i like, like the idea of know, being able to chill out and play Civ, like plug it maybe yeah. on a switch or something if they do well, that's what i mean that. it's like that, it's it's built for that type of game you know you don't need to be like high highly ready for it you know alertness and all that shit you just sit on a couch bag of maltesers and just play that you know and that's and I think sometimes they miss the trick with that game. I think I've got a Civ game on the go on my other PC, actually, at the moment. Um, the funny thing about Civ is you start the game 
and you start playing it, right? And I think, certainly on however I'm playing it, the difficulty curve is brutal. So I'm like mm. struggling, struggling. But it's a bit like that, isn't it? I think sometimes, unless you've done particularly badly on the start, it'll feel like it's an awful the struggle. And then you'll realize yeah. this is the game. You're well in it now. You know, you're putting yeah, a few... It's the luck of the draw. Sometimes you can play the game for literally forever. And other times you can't get off the fucking ground because you're getting sh you're getting your shit pushed in within five minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, kind of the the passion and the pain of the Civ game, pretty much. But I was kind of like that with, I, I, especially on the PlayStation, going about the PlayStation memories, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, I and Front Mission Free, and those games are very slow paced as well. And I put hundreds of hours into those games because I would just pop them in and just play them when I'm like half unconscious from whatever. Yeah, and it was just fun. And um, I kind of miss those types of games. Yeah, you still get them now, but they just don't do the same like relaxation. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it's a bit like I quite like games like Sim City and stuff, but not trying to actually progress just building oh. stuff so it's pretty much like <laughs> minecraft i quite like minecraft yeah. as well and terraria probably for the that reason i used to play a lot of civ 2000 but it was mostly just to load up the default city and then just like kill everything with giant aliens and earthquakes and shit that's the only time i really played it what's your feelings about the game rampart have you ever played mm. that I think I might have played on a mass system. Maybe. So at play, we've got to have another go. We'll have a multiplayer go at a Rampart. I think that was on. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> if oh, I did, no. it was a vague memory. There's two kinds of video games, though, I think you'll both agree. Those games where you can walk up to the spikes and not damage yourself, it's only when you jump on them, or those that where you damage yourself if you try to walk into them. Or like Prince of Persia, after you've fallen down and cracked your spine in three places, up comes the spikes! <laughs> like, as like the final fuck you. Oh, JJXB says recalls having Rampart on the Master System. Yeah, I think, I think, I think you were. I'm, 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 I can't remember fully, but yeah. I think I played Rampart on the Master System too. The version I probably played the most is Atari ST, and that's probably only now, because uh, I don't remember. I never had that when I was young on it. You kind of feel that Atari games should be really good on the Atari ST. Like they would have put a bit of extra effort in, but I don't think they did. Ah, that's Tremel for you. He didn't want games. He wanted bloody business machine stuff. It so does make a good business machine, the ST, though. I think it's a shame it wasn't marketed. The thing is, I never saw it as a business machine. Even when I was growing up, I had just friends playing games on it. Or uh, making tunes on it, you know. I never saw it as anything else other than a games machine. Same with the Amiga. By the time I sort of, my eyes opened up <laughs> when the Amiga was still around, like 93, 94, it was just advertised as a straight games machine. I think it was in Europe. It was marketed differently, and that's why there's so many high-res monitors and stuff. Yeah, there because, because it was that it, um, the Mega Pack ever the the song Sunshine on a Rainy Day. That's the that's my like like vivid memory of the Amiga. It's like that advert was on all the time. Do you certainly you certainly um, had on the ST as well? You could buy it even in the UK with the high-res monitor and the laser printer. Um, and that whole package cost you less, say, than a base Apple Macintosh. But it was actually more performant. And if, if at the time, I do remember seeing um, the Apple Mac with its, again, monochrome high-res monitor. Same sort of setup, really. And they were very similar machines. And people forget but, that. And, yeah, and quite a lot of them, um, when it comes to, like, gaming history... Most of the time, the Victors are not the most powerful machine out there. In fact, it's usually the more streamlined and easier to program would be the Victor. Yeah, and that's so, and, yeah. And funny you mention that because if you look in to get the books, for example, on the Atari ST uh, operating system and GEM APIs, so you've got the hardware mm. and the graphical interface APIs, they're so well documented. There was a lot of really good business software, and you kind of think, damn, this would have been easy to write for, too. So, again, yeah. just 
I think it's marketing then, that, you know, there's a lot of stuff needs to happen. But like in Europe especially, the Mega Drive and the Amiga went hand in hand because they were so similar. So, you know, the ports that you would get over most of the time were very close to the Amiga ports, like especially the Bitback games. Mm. Like playing Speedball or uh, Chaos Engine. All right, Chaos Engine might have been a little better graphically on the Amiga, but it was just as fine on the Mega Drive, and that's where I played it originally. And then when I did my like top 30 video a couple of years ago, most of the games on there were Amiga ports, and I didn't oh, really? realize that. And people were commenting and saying, oh, you must own an Amiga if you played all these uh, ports. I was like, no, uh, this is where I played them. Because <laughs> I owned a console at the time. I never had it. Well, apart from a... Uh, uh, um, it was like a Windows 3.1 machine, 286 or whatever. I didn't have computers mm. uh, for myself. I just had like, consoles until like later in life, like 1998, bought Amiga for like, 50 quid. So, so fair fight. In answer to your your question about the games on the cartridge, Chrissy took one of my um, development cartridges. Uh, for the ST and he did just that he put some games on it um, so I don't know if I need to bother now I pr he, he proved the point <laughs> you effectively yeah you built your uh, built a flash cart now yeah and he's you Which know other cool. people that's this is the weird thing so Chrissy and sad Ken and everybody I'm making this hardware um, Scott which um, I've been a bit busy to order the parts so yeah. I sent some PCBs out to say, look, here's some PCBs, guys, for you to enjoy. Uh, and they all went ahead and built all the stuff before I had a chance to. <laughs> <laughs> so they're playing with all these VGA adapters and uh, cartridges and things. And I haven't even got one yet. <laughs> so I think that's kinda, it's kind of cool, though. It's gratifying. At least they worked. Oh, this has got a nice pattern here. And the best thing is it opens up the preservation as well, because... Even though Nintendo doesn't want you to fucking back up your games, but for computers like that, it's critical. Because those discs are not going to live forever. I'm worried about um, systems that have this online element. I'm worried about, I like my Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I might want to play that when I'm 70, and I don't know what's going to happen with all the DLC. I, I know that there were some, uh, like, satellite... Well, Zelda games where they managed it's happening right now. They managed uh, to get, keep it going, didn't they? They managed to get yeah. the DLC for it, but well, tricky, that's one right? Of the reasons why um, I got a JTAG Xbox 360 is because quite a lot of the games that you could could have got, you can't get anymore, and there's only a hand compatible with the the Xbox One now. <laughs> it's like, well, if what happens if I want to play those games again? You can't. You're fucked. So it's like, well, now every time I have an older system, it's, I get it modified. It's like, well, fuck it. <laughs> They're going to kick down my door and give me shit for ripping a game on a fucking hard drive from like 10 years ago. Yeah, no, I get that. Absolutely. Oh, fair fight. You're not going to be hated if you mention modem, but me and Gary have been cracking on, especially Gary, on uh, writing loads of retro net software for the Atari ST. So... Um... That's really something that we will probably look at. Um, but, you know, putting the RetroNet in a, mo you know, the US robotics case is probably less critical, less priority right now versus getting the ease of use software. But it's pretty amazing. But can you run games on it? Can you run games on it? Can yeah. Will it play Crisis? Oh, God. I've got. I found uh, a copy of Crisis actually. Crisis is fucking crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. It was a great game to test your fucking latest system, but if you actually sit down and play it, it is fucking boring. It's so boring. Is it really? Crisis Warhead, though, I'll give it to him, is a lot of fun. That's only because the main character has character, and I... he's basically Jason Statham and every other Cockney. <laughs> fucking stereotype rolled in the one. I um I only use Wing Commander to test my uh, performance to make sure <laughs> I can get some of those sweet, sweet what are they called Kalathis or whatever. But it was always like that, wasn't it? Uh, ev like everything had to have a killer app and it had to have the best graphics and all that. But when you actually go back and play those sort of games, like I uh, 
recently, or like last weekend, I thought, you know what, I fancy playing Orphan, which was like a launch title on the PS2. And I remember playing that with a friend of mine, and we were like, oh my god, this looks amazing. You see this dragon flying across the the level and all that. I was like, wow, it's not going to get any better than this. And when I played it this weekend, I thought, well, I must have been fucking blind or stoned or something, because this game looks terrible. like shit. It's <laughs> fucking awful. <laughs> it's like the main character has like five polygons, and this is the PS2. And it's like, oh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe my eyes deceive me. <laughs> I think it's it's interesting to see what games stand the test of time, really. Yeah, yeah, and especially a lot of games that you play, thinking, "Oh yeah, I'll be playing this in twenty years," and then you go back to it and like, "No, I'm not playing this game again. <laughs> I have no patience for this shit anymore." I'm finding I kind of I guess because we had a SNES, I find a lot of those I can still play. Um, Super Mario Land, all of those things. They're just yeah. very playable and they suit even a modern way of playing games when you haven't got much time and you just want to get on with it, you know. Yeah. Quick bash. Well, but the, the computer game. <laughs> yeah, Splathouse is good. Um, I find the games on like the Atari or Amiga or whatever hit and miss. They can be terrible. Like, I'll go, I can't, I can't be having this. But then I think if I go back to like the 8 bit stuff, there's a couple of games on the B, but you know, I can play Repton, Chucky Egg, yeah. uh, Citadel. A few of those I can just, I can really enjoy now. Yeah. Um, but anything on the Commodore 64, I can't outstand at all. Uh, Spectrum, very, I can't stand anything on that now. So it's funny, even though at the time I, I did play quite a lot, a lot of si Commodore 64 games. Yeah, you have the memory of those good times, and now you go back. Like, I really can't be asked to wait, take fucking ten minutes to play a game that I won't like in five. <laughs> like, yeah, I I've got better shit to do right now. I'm kind of like that anyway. With games like with Dark Souls, I thought, oh, I'll do a video series on that, you know. And I completed all the Dark Souls games. I fucking love them. But going back and playing those games again after you've achieved all you've done, I no, I, I'm not doing it. It's done. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. Fucking so done. Jason's saying is the PC Wii emulator any good? Well, I haven't tried it, but I've oh, tried so a Wii U emulator and it was really, really good. So if a Wii yeah. U emulator is good, the Wii one must be alright. Yeah, the Dolphin for Wii in GameCube is perfect. Uh, CMU the, for the Wii U is pretty good. There's a few games that work really well, like Bayonetta 2, and I think the Wonderful 101 is pretty good too. But it's still a little bit hit and miss. But yeah, if you if you want to play the games specifically that are good and optimized, it's great. Especially was, playing like Bay Bayonetta 2 in like 4K at a stable frame rate, rather than playing at 720p and maybe get like 20 at any given time. Yeah, nice. I think that um, if I recall, I had a go at Breath of the Wild. I feel as I've yeah, got legitimately yeah. so many copies of that on so many friggin' systems <laughs> that I, I, I can just download and try that. It was really complicated, actually, if I recall, though. It's not... Getting the games on are a bit tricky because they kind of, it emulates the Wii See, U yes. really accurately. So yeah. it means you have to kind of get past... You have to hack it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, CMU is very, very reminiscent of the PS3 emulator where you got to install it like it's the actual console. Um, yeah, so that can be a bit flaky because I'm trying to play Hyrule Warriors recently on CMU and it's supposed to work really well, but I can't get that game running worth shit. And I've tried everything in the book, I've looked at the forums, everything, it still doesn't work for me. But then you go on YouTube and people are playing it flawlessly. It's like, Ugh. yeah, it's just the um, compatibility, I'm guessing. <clears throat> Scott, you've touched upon something. Let's talk about Hyrule Warriors. How good is that game? I fucking I like Mushu games anyway, so I'm gonna fanboy out. But I'm not really a big Zelda fan. I've only played like a handful of games, but Hyrule Warriors. I, I think I clocked like a hundred hours on the Wii U. Just uh, I bought all the DLC. I did everything on there, and uh, yeah, I like that game a lot. 
It's got the the IP lends itself to it really nicely. I thought. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and it was funny because when that game got announced, everyone was like, "I'm not playing this shit because you know Koei just ruins everything. They just take any IP, bro. And it's probably one of their best games. <laughs> and it's a high bar for any other game that's gone they've made since. And I, I know it gets slagged off, but I think the 3DS version is really good too. It works. Um, I actually never played the 3DS version, but I can imagine it's uh, pretty fun. It's like a scaled down version. Obviously, yeah. you're not going to have all yeah, the obviously. same amount of characters on screen. But yeah, I like this whole. So I never, I, I never saw that uh, genre, and um, I, I, I love that, and I, I'm really glad to have picked that up in like CEX or wherever. Yeah, I think I bought it on a whim, and yeah, I, I popped it in. I played it for months. I like Mushu, uh, Mushu games anyway, but that really sort of like. So tell me what's Mushu? Is it that that's that genre? Is it? It's a genre, yeah. It's basically just a beat 'em up, <laughs> a 3D beat 'em up now, and they've pretty much cornered the market on those. But I, honestly, when it comes to the the Dynasty Warriors games, they're fun, but I like their more themed games. A bit like GTA, I prefer the ones with a theme. So like uh, they made one for Berserk. Which you know, I'm not a big anime fan, but I do like Berserk, and that game is fucking incredible. It's gory as all hell. And another one I've been playing recently is uh, Warriors All Stars, which is basically a fan service mashup of like 15 different games. So you've got like characters from Dead or Alive and all that sort of shit, and that's quite a lot of fun as well. And I kind of like it when they do those types of games rather than just the Romance of the Three Kingdoms for like the 50th time. Right. Sorry, I just I just Gen got a little bit of Yes, sir. I'm going to disappear for the night. Okay. I have to get on with some stuff. So okay. I will love well, you and leave you, and I'll catch up with you all very soon. Thank you very much, Mr. Dalton. I was I was a little Bye, bit distracted because I'm punching um, a chainsaw out of the air somehow. Like a baby there. That's <laughs> a weird bloody baby thing. Okay, guys, catch you later. See you later. All right, see you later. Ah, oh, fair fight. You just, had a, you just sold my Wii U, kind of wish I didn't now. You can get them now for like 70 quid on CEX. That's when I bought mine about two months ago. I saw it was of £80 in CEX on Saturday, a uh, Legend of Zelda Wii U as well. You know the themed one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Which... oh, I do like those. But I've got the <laughs> Legend of Zelda theme themed 3DS console, and it's brilliant. Yeah. I, I, the weirdest thing is that I never really liked the Wii U until about a year before it finally died. Because <laughs> it was like the games that I wanted to play, even though they, they're questionable in quality, were the ones I really wanted to play, like um, Devil's Third. Devil's Third is not good, <laughs> but it's one of the funniest things I've ever played. It's a total PS2 bargain bucket game, but man, it's so much fun to play. Especially when you're playing a guy who's well, it's a Russian guy called Ivan. He never wears a shirt and he's covered in tattoos. So you can kind of guess the uh, mentality of that game. Right. It's pretty pure aisle. And I think it was made by the, the um, guy who like made all the Devil May Cry games, and then he branched off to make his own auto project, and it turned out to be a complete fucking shambles. Don't you think, though, what really surprised me is when um, Breath of the Wild came out, that it kind of showed you, really, the potential of the console. Like, they yeah. just really know how well, to make games for it, you know? Of yeah, the thing is, with Breath of the Wild, if they released that game, all right, it probably wouldn't have been nowhere near as good that then it was now. Uh, if they released that like two years, three years, when they were gonna do it, because they announced it like when the Wii U was first started in E3, that probably would have saved, honestly. But uh, they released it <laughs> way too late for the Wii U to ever be relevant again. If it was a launch title, it would have been yeah. amazing, wouldn't it? Well, that's the only game that pretty much carried the Switch when it first released. It was definitely my first game. You had, yeah, you had that Mario Odyssey, Rabbids, something, and that was about oh, it. Oh, Rabbids, yeah, the Rabbids uh, Mario. It's actually quite fun, basically XCOM. 
in the Mario universe. It's yeah, so it's exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a lot of fun. I've probably played that more than anything else while I had my Switch. I still don't actually have many Switch games. I think I've just still got like just Breath of the Wild, Splatoon, and uh, the Rabbids game and something <sighs> the else. The thing is, I'm, I don't really care about the Nintendo first party games. And uh, it has to be something... Well, all right, I did play Odyssey, and I absolutely loved it. I, I think I played it in like a week. But I, I just don't really... Uh, Nintendo don't make games that I particularly ah, want to play. So trying to play... Uh, trying to use their system with games I don't really care for is a bit weird. But now they release all, like, fucking... Um, oh, that tactical RPG game. Oh, Fire Emblem, and that looks amazing. <laughs> so, maybe I'll get one in the future. When they're like 150 quid. <laughs> I, I'm one of those people, I never, I tend to be one generation behind on consoles always. Yeah. So, I think that's why my Switch collection also is so bare right now, because it's it's just not the way I do things. I like to buy games when I see them really cheap, second hand. Yeah. I bought my 360 when they announced the one. You know, where someone's selling yeah. like their entire massive collection for like two hundred yeah. quid, and I was like, "Yes, please." I'm a bit of a cheap house as well. I don't like spending fifty pounds on a game because most of the time I do, they don't last long. Well, what I find <laughs> is, it's, if I buy off. games like that, I never know. You can be disappointed. Yeah. Oh, Nigel's um, uns unsubbing because it's not an Atari. No Atari. <laughs> but it's got the kind of same CPU in it. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, it's like I bought the last uh, full price game I bought was The Sinking City, but that was only because a friend of mine had a coupon for it. Yeah, so I got like 20 quid off. <laughs> so nice. it wasn't full price, but I've been wanting to play that game for ages anyway, so I thought, ah, I'll use it against that. But I don't like, I don't spend in the full price on games rarely anymore. It's hey, just you, not worth you could it. have worked at a CEX. That would suit you, wouldn't it? I applied for a job there, they didn't want me. They said you don't know nothing about games. <laughs> no, I didn't even get a fucking interview. That was the one in Oxford. What was the? Oh, that, that's a shame because I would have thought you'd have been amply qualified. Yeah, but the thing is, then I'd have to really grow out my neck beard and wear some sort of metal T-shirt for a band I don't like, and just be a nihilistic prick to everyone. That's the CEX way. <laughs> Woo! Well, they all are, innit? They're all like, oh yeah, we're trying to be really cool and all this stuff. I was like, no, this fucking. Look, stop talking to me and give me my fucking game. I'll give you your money and I can fuck off, all Do right? You really yeah, talk I don't want to know your. Yeah, all right. Oh, I'm, I'm being an asshole. Now, the <laughs> the ones in Reading, which I go into quite often, they're pretty cool. Uh... But there's one guy who just doesn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> I just want to buy my shit and fuck off. <laughs> Do you always check when they're putting the stuff into the box? Because sometimes you picked up the box that's like the extra cool edition with the extra book and the extra CD in it. Yeah, and you yeah, just yeah. make sure they're putting that right one in there, not yeah. like a boring <laughs> I've done one. That a couple of times. I bought a copy of the Order 1886 and the special edition one, and I see him popping just the standard edition. Like, ah, no, 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 it's the steel tin one, that one over there. Like, <laughs> if I want the proper one, I spent ten quid on this fucking game. <laughs> I'm hoping to find some sort of lost gem there when I go. Some you know, mislabeled. Mega Drive game that you can't well, buy anywhere else. I think it will. It could I, happen. I, well, when I flogged my Atari Jaguar there, they thought it was this Jaguar CD. And I thought, okay. I had a look on the website. They quoted me like 80 quid for it. I thought, okay, cool. Then I was in the store. They quoted me 300 pound. I'm really? Like, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll take 300 pound. <laughs> anyway, they took it in to test it. And I thought, they're going to call me about half an hour and realize it's only the Jag itself, not the CD. And lo and behold, half an hour later, it's like, oh, hi, yes, uh, we made a, um, the person you were served by is a new guy, and he didn't realize that it was actually just the Atari Jaguar. Like, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Mm. Oh, at one point, he's going to rip them off, so. So how does that work, though? Could you, couldn't you just say, yeah, well, your loss. <laughs> well, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I felt guilty about it. I was like, do I keep my mouth shut or just whatever? But nah, it's cool. I knew I wasn't going to, yeah. So what I'm you're telling me, mind. though, is base. Oh, what? You, you sold a Jaguar for 80 quid. Yeah. Wow. I, I kind of feel that you probably could get more for it now. 
Well, I bought it for 30 quid, so. Bargain. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember you very kindly uh, gave me a Game Gear? So yes, I've been keeping an eye open on Game Gear stuff because I want to get a screen, for, screen it, but it's, for it. Yet. It's ridiculously priced right now. <laughs> I know, they're like 130 quid. And what's really weird is I'm finding loads of Game Gears now on the market and they're like from 20 quid now. And I'm like, what? What is going on? Should I be buying up all of these? Because that well, sounds... I'm... Or are they all just getting screwed now? They all need recapping. Uh, probably, yeah, because the caps are dying on them. But when I got that one, it... Well, I bought that from... Black, uh, maybe a year, two years ago, and that was forty quid. And they sit there, and the guy who sold it to me says, "Oh yeah, it's been recapped." And, well, this has never been opened, so how can it be not be <laughs> yeah, recapped? I'm like, yeah, 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 trying it on them. I, I even bought a capping kit for that, but I just haven't got round to it because you see, it's got millions. And yeah. what's really funny is the caps that it was fitted with. Obviously, either you can't get or they just ridiculously expensive so the capping kits just contain the standard cheap and nasty caps but well, they're a different footprint so it's just like a... 90s. yeah that's the early 90s for you they had to build every single machine with the shittiest cap the funny thing is i remember at the time i don't that the screens weren't great even then so you think no, wow the screens were fucking awful <laughs> i think the only screen that sort of did the test of time sort of excuse me was the Atari Lynx but really? even then I played one recently and I thought no very smeary but yeah I, I I had vivid memories of the screen being a lot higher res than it actually was because <laughs> a friend of mine had one when I was growing up and I used to play it quite a bit like oh yeah I remember that it was quite sharp and like, what about the sort of Game Boy colours were they any good nah the Game Boy screens are awful Really? Even the colour ones? Yeah. It, it didn't really... The standard for those screens weren't really great until, like, the... My, no, not the Game Boy Lights. Well, I'm thinking, because like even second... I had the... I've even got my original Game Boy Advance still. I might even have the box for it. And, um... They were pretty, you know, meh, I think. By modern standards, especially. Yeah, but you. I think I'm saying that actually. No, they were good, but they were bad because they weren't illuminated. I think that was it. But in terms of yeah. like their their refresh rate and smeary stuff, they didn't really have any of that going on. Well, yeah, and it's like when you watch the retro future and see how bad the screens actually were. Like, oh yeah, they could have uh, really improved the screens. Well, right back in the day, probably not. But now, like, yeah, I would not want to go back to original Game Boy screen if I could avoid it. Um. I find what's weird is I've got um, a f few variants of the, the different um, handheld ones that I think the I've got the, the little Legend of Zelda 3DS yeah. is actually sharper than the 3DS XL because it looks sharper. Do you see what I mean? It's tighter, it's, yeah. It's, it's tighter. Screen. Yeah. And the well, kids. Same, I... <laughs> When you said that, like the, I remember the Game Boy Advance because I bought one of the original ones on launch day, and the screen on that was fucking awful. It was so dark. It wasn't until the SP where there was, they were worth a shit. And the SP, the SP, I, I fitted um, something called an afterburner mod onto my GBA, which uh -huh. is a front light, which is effectively factory fitted in the GB ASP. <laughs> and then the later yeah, SPs, actually, they had a proper backlight one. And yeah, that's they the... did. I, I think I've got the front light SP. We didn't yeah, get, yeah, we didn't get the fancy expensive. ones in the in the UK. No, no, I know you can get one on eBay, but like it can be 50, 60 quid dearer than the uh, front lighted ones. I had a front light one quite a bit because I played. I think it was like Final Fantasy V and VI on on that because I bought once I bought the advance so i wanted to keep playing it i had to buy the other one so i could fucking use it <laughs> well my, my kids use the um two ds's and they've got great screens on them but that up this that point now everything's good do you know what i mean yeah, you can't yeah, it's, get any it's, better now it's all right now is but back then it was very hit and miss. what's interesting about them if you open them up the screen for the top and the bottom screen it's just one screen yeah it's just yeah, one panel. Just the bezel in front of it. 
But one system that I did play, the uh, handheld system I did play a lot, even though it had pretty much barely any traction in the, the uh, UK, was the Neo, Neo Geo Pocket Color. Mm. And that was very reminiscent of the Game Boy Advance screen-wise, but it didn't have as much blur, and you could actually see it in normal daylight. I don't think I it was a proper lot. color, though, was it? Eh, it kind of faked it in a way. It, it didn't was very have much like a Game Boy Advance, a uh, Game Boy Color, more like it. Sort of. If, if well, I recall, it did, did it. I don't think it had um, like sprites really... were single color, weren't they? Yeah, I think the original was very much like a Game Boy. It was most black and white. I might be talking up my ass, though. I can't really remember. No, I but, think the uh, original was black and white. And, yeah. But there definitely was um, a color. But the, the way it did the color, I think it was a bit like a spectrum, whereas it, each yeah. sprite was yeah. one color. It, was, it couldn't have yeah, multi-colors. Kind of. Yeah, it was kind of in that same vein. But yeah, I played the, my Neo Geo Pocket a lot. Ironically, for Sonic games. Really? <laughs> Yeah, they had Sonic. Um, ah, I was gonna say Sonic Advance, but I, I, actually, I think it was called Sonic Advance. Anyway, yeah, that was pretty good on the uh, Air Geo. I do eye them up you... at the expos. To be honest, they always have. Every now and then, they'll have like a, I don't know, a Wonder Swan or a Neo Geo in a yeah. little soft pack, and it'll be like a fiver or something, and you're like, mm, mm. yeah. Every <laughs> now talking about, it, I thought, you know what, I could buy. One <laughs> fancy playing it again, yeah. Because some of the um, uh, even the like Neo Geo like scale down conversions were pretty damn good because they had like kid version of uh, Fatal Fury, which is pretty damn good. Kid version, <laughs> yeah. Basically, it was like virtual fighter kids, but with Fatal, Fatal Fury characters. Oh, nice. Well, I'll have a look out at the expo, see what they've got, maybe. Maybe something will no, pique right. my interest. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about it now, so the price is going to go up. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the back office effect, that. But normally it just makes <laughs> the prices go down. have been slagging it off. Maybe that's what we do. We just slag them off, slag them off, slag them off, slag them off, slag them off. And then go, <laughs> buy, them buy them up, buy them up, buy them up. Then wait for, like, 8-bit guy or somebody to <laughs> review it. <laughs> or send in one. Send in one from our massive stockpile. <laughs> Or just do what, like, like with Metal Jesus Rocks, you release a hidden gem video and all the games you pay and triple the price. Great, thank you. Now, you just remind me of something. I um, saw my brother, I think it was earlier this week, um, at his pad, and uh, he, sh he sh revealed to me his secret project that he's been doing. And. <laughs> His, his secret project is collecting all of the Castlevania games. And yeah, he's, he's pretty much... Pocket. He's got all of them. He's got them on the Sharp. He's got the different Mega Drive ones, SNES ones, GBA, you know, so many of them now. And he's even got one of the Tiger ones. Do you remember the <laughs> Tiger Electronics? Oh, fuck me, yeah. So I'm yep. hoping at some point to try and... But we, it's like... Not, neither of us have an N64. We just realised, oh, we don't have an N64 anymore. We can't play N64 one. I can't play N64 games anymore. <laughs> I've tried so many times. The only times I can play N64 games would be the, the wrestling, the yaki ones. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I just can't get on with that fucking controller. I think that the 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 Castlevania on the N64 there was a, it was terrible. There'll be an yeah. AVGN episode about it. But there's two. There's a them. second. There's a them. sequel that's meant to be actually quite good. Yeah, well, because basically the first one was botched so hard they sort of re-released it like a year, like six months later. Oh. And called it something different. I, I'm, I could be talking out my ass there. No, I, I think, think you're right. That's, that's how it works, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I don't know. The N64 I never really got into. I never so, gelled with it. I never yeah, gelled I with it. Yeah, I did have one, and the and I did play a lot of Perfect Dark and Goldeneye and all that, but going back to that, I can't play those games anymore. And the only ones I would play would be the, like I said, the WCW wrestling games that came out, which were pretty good. Back when I actually played wrestling games. Oh my bloody life, this is hard. <laughs> You human forget how hard this, games were, don't you? You've punched this human vagina for fucking <laughs> 10 minutes now. I can see it's, it's going to slide, and then you've got to really hold the jump button down because it's it's one of those, if you let go of jump, you'll drop down quicker. 
Which is quite good. That's why these games are quite controllable, because you can move in the air and you control how much you're jumping. But it always made me laugh watching Rick jump in the air, because it's just so deaf. Look at that. You've got just... It's, it's really seconds you've got. Ah, Neil's in the house. Ah, okay, come on. Is that what that is? It's meant to be a vagina. It does look a bit like one. Uh, probably. <laughs> With Splatterhouse, they pretty much did everything to offend as many people as possible. But this wasn't it like if you were in Japan, you had Japanese versions of these games, and it's like way worse? Well, like, well, I, I can't remember if it was Splathouse, but there's quite a few of the bosses. Oh, actually, it was Shinobi 3, I believe. Uh, where it had like Spider Man as a boss and Batman and all this sort of stuff. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and they get away with fucking murder over in Japan, but you dare do that here. But the yeah, like Splathouse was like perfect. It was like right in that point in time where games are supposed to be for kids. We can't have violent video games tainting our generations and all this shit. Ah, uh, fun times. Ah, uh, okay, got it now. So if you stay still, he jumps towards you. Yeah, you just and then you can punch him. him in the head and jump him. But if you try to jump while he's moving, you're gonna he's gonna hit you. Uh, back in that era when they thought Night Trap was the biggest porniest game ever. Oh my god, <laughs> that thing's terrible. Yeah, I've I've had bigger stiffies watching Play Bus. That's how <laughs> sexy that game is. I don't know. That's more uh, <laughs> more I need to let on with people, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's fucking stupid. Did Play Bus feature kids? Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what would make oh, it weird. No. Yeah, this is... Uh, <clears throat> oh, Let's rewind that. Off. Yeah, this video is now turned into Operation u Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Retro edition. <laughs> Bang! You know, when he punches there, it feels like he's got some weight behind it. Even yeah. though it's like a pixely game. Well, Splathouse is when I was growing up would come out at the same sort of time when I was watching the Friday the 13th movies. So I had a, like a, a obsession with this game for quite a bit. Especially oh really? Cause, yeah, because at that time my, my uh, sister used to work in a blockbuster. So she'd rent eight, all the movies and we would just sit there like on a Monday where I used to be babysit by her on a Monday night and we would just go for all the films. So this and Splatterhouse and quite a lot of is very evocative of that time of my life, which is pretty cool. I was just watching video nasties and <laughs> playing violent video games. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I really wanted... Oh, what the heck? <laughs> oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. It just... <laughs> Bloody hell. Turned into a spider. I, um... I really wanted to watch the other day like a, a, an action movie like Aliens and but not Aliens do you know what I mean um, and I can't really think I couldn't find any on Netflix I couldn't think of any that's as satisfying can you think of any substitutes what for Alien mm, Aliens Aliens Ugh. probably Starship Troopers oh <laughs> yeah that would have been good <laughs> because it just doesn't give a shit and I love that <laughs> I love the Starship Troopers book. I wish they would make a movie of the book. I don't know if you've ever read it. Uh, no, I've never read the book, but I've uh, played the game quite a bit on PC. It was very much like... There was a Starship Troopers animated series, actually, which had some early oh, yeah, CGI. Yeah, 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 that was more yeah, uh, like it. Yeah, I remember play Yeah, I remember watching that quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Neil just rather than mention very much like John Cabot's the thing. Yeah. Oh, that's a classic. Actually, the game's pretty fun as well. I remember playing a Starship Troopers game on PC, which was like a kind of an RTS. Yeah, it was. It was one of the first like horde shooters, pretty much. That and was I played good. That a yeah. lot. Yeah, I played it like land parties quite a bit because it was like between playing Red Alert and fucking Unreal Tournament. Like, oh yeah, there's four of the Starship Troopers. See how far, see how long we last in like the siege, siege mode where just basically it was a mode designed to melt gaming computers at the time because <laughs> it was just so much shit on screen. You'd crawl to like one frame a month. It was that bad. What's really fun though. What's really weird, I remember a lot of games we used to play at LAN, LAN parties and 
no one ever talks about them anymore. So I'm going to give you one. One we used to play a lot of was Shogo. Do you remember Shogo? Ah, yes. Uh, Mobile Armor Division. Yeah, uh, Shogo Mobile yeah. Armor Division. And it, we used to play the squishy patch, which meant you um, you could get out of the mechs. Well, so, you could anyway in the single player game. Although, I've no, but you could only do it at player. checkpoints, really, when you were going into a uh, building. I, I, this was like, the, I think I played it maybe through once in single player, like, years. And do you remember Atari had a game, I think it was Atari, like a tank game called Battle Zone. Do you remember Battle yeah. Zone? Yeah. They did a remake that. of that, which was a really great game multiplayer, where you go There's around in... the a VR version, because, well, it, it was kind of a VR arcade game anyway. It was one of the first sort of to mess with that. But they've now recently done a VR version, which is pretty fucking good too. Well, I'm just wondering if, if, if anybody ever played it, because it, I remember, I think it was Battlezone, you, it was it was CAD RTS elements, so you had to set up a base and mining things and all of this, but you just drove around in these tanky things. Um, and if you had if you played it in multiplayer mode, you had really cool sniper mode, so, you, you know, a human could take out a tank if you shot the other human out of yeah. the cockpit and stuff. But again, yeah, nothing about it. I don't think, you could probably just do a YouTube channel just doing these games that people will probably remember but they were abandoned so early on yeah they were and it, it was one of those things that kept, it came out and everyone was like oh yeah this is going to be the future and it's just like no one talks about it. kind of like what mechwarrior became for a while because i played oh, mechwarrior mechwarrior Mech three and four especially i played them a lot online when i was uh when i finally had a game pc worth a shit and um, I played those all the time, all the time, and then it just went to shit, and no one really talked about it. All right, you got the free-to-play game now, which is fucking awful. But yeah, I was like, I really miss those types of mech games. I even played Hawken for a while, which was sort of like a like a arcadey version of MechWarrior, but that went to shit as well. <laughs> I think that um, I found that my original gaming joystick as well that I used to, which was Microsoft Sidewinder Force Feedback Pro. That was my Mech Warrior 4 <laughs> joystick. And I used to play that online in a clan. I used to play Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator. Those are the days when you had your yeah. NTL cable or whatever it was. And uh, it was a bit like with um, Steel Battalion. They kind of missed. All right, they had the multiplayer game that came out but by then I, I didn't have an online connection but it's still like they had the big controller and all this stuff and they could have just made a, a fantastic multiplayer game out of that alone but it never really went off the ground it's the uh, mech game on the xbox the mm. fuck off controller yeah 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 it's yeah, always yeah. fun because you, you let your friends play it and it's like oh yeah yeah have a go on it this is how you start it this is how you do this it's like, okay they sit down and you just press the eject button they fucking explode and that's it <laughs> i did a little video i didn't i did a little video on that where i set up the whole controller yeah everything and someone lent me the xbox the controller the whole works and it was just awful. It was the worst thing I've ever done. And it was the biggest disappointment <laughs> I ever had in my life. Do you know what I mean? Because it was such yeah. a... Oh my god, this is crap. The learning curve on that game is fucking ridiculous. It's like take a three-week accountancy course just to get the game... Just to get the... To play the game. But when you got over that hump, it was... Like no nothing I've ever played before. It was uh, way ahead of its time. But also so niche it was never going to be anything other than a few people were playing it oh yeah i remember that cool but that's it and i actually played. booted up though uh the um new version of it the sequel oh, with the, the connect oh with the kinetic the connect whatever the and my kids were in the room and it started effing oh, and jeff in so i had to turn so, it off it's terrible they missed the boat on that is it terrible is it's there much awful. connecting in it, or is it... Yeah, because most of the stuff you have to do, you have to use hand-waving to do it. Oh, so that Rather ruins it. Press a button and let it do it without any fucking around in input and all that shit. No, you got to wave your hand like an idiot trying to get it working. It didn't work. I was wondering why it makes you sit down and stand up and put your arms out. 
actually it sort of brings about memory because it was one of the games I uh, reviewed for like an old website I used to do <laughs> reviews for, and that was one of the games they gave me first, and it was uh, yeah, um, was not a fun review to make. <coughs> All right, it was cathartic because I just fucking talked shit about it for. So you give an honest review, though. Past. Hmm. You give a nice honest review. Yeah, because it was fucking god awful and a complete waste of time. And even though we play games to waste time, if you're wasting my time trying to make me waste my time, then no, no, thank you. <laughs> Save yeah, your you want to enjoy it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, and that game is just completely misses the point. And what pisses me off because they're trying to cash in on a, a franchise that was niche to begin with and it had a lot of credibility because of uh, how the game was treated beforehand because they treat that series like a fucking simulator you know it was in the same breath as like flight sim or elite mm. <laughs> and then they completely fuck it with that sort of stupid side game uh. no probably just bored chat yeah, I bought the shout chat talking about Steel Battalion. <laughs> no, there's I'm sure there's I'm sure there's some Steel Battalion fans. Well yeah, it's still going. You still what you can still see people on YouTube playing the game. But yeah, they they need to bring that back. I or someone needs to repurpose that controller and use it in VR or something, that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, we it's, but it'd almost be. Did it? What did it have? It, it connected. Well, it's probably just USB, isn't it? Well, yeah, it, it was its own Xbox connector, but you could probably repurpose it for USB easily because it was basically that's what they were. They were USB controllers, just in a in proprietary input. Certainly, I know the 360 is because I've got like a. Oh, hang on a. Um... I never really noticed how. The, the, does the 360 have wired controllers? Because I have the wired yeah, controller for can, the PC. Yeah, you can buy wired controllers, but they're just USB. And I have a weird adapter that's, I think, maybe it's from an original Xbox controller. It's like a round DIN thing to USB. Yeah, uh, even the 360 had that DIN thing, because it was more oh. for if you pulled the, the cord too hard, it would uh, split the cord rather than pull the console off the table, that sort of shit. Oh, it was that's like a handy. weird. It was like a weird safety concession they had to make with the original Xbox because it was so bulky. I hope there's not too much, le too many levels left in this game. Yeah, um, I can't remember it. Really. <laughs> I'm trying to think what the last boss I it's, fought was. I, I think you can beat this game in like an hour. It's one of those. Oh, so that means we're nearly there. I feel that I'm getting tired, but you know, you I want to see it through now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long day tomorrow, but oh, I want to see this through. So Nigel was play. He still plays MechWarrior Two and MechWarrior Four. Battle. Yeah, MechWar. Well, and there's still that new one coming up soon, and I'm hoping it's not going to be a complete betrayal like the fucking free to play though. So tell me, didn't Microsoft did a kind of an arcadey one there, right? Was that? The same thing. Oh, as the... uh, Mech Assault. Yeah, yeah. I, f I think they're in the same universe. Don't quote me on that. But they were more just straight arcade games. I played those quite a bit, actually, on live, especially Mech Assault 2. So, uh, what was your Mike favorite Mech. Mech? What did you um, play as? <sighs> now you're asking me. I don't really know them off by heart, to be honest with you. I think I was. Um, I used to use the, like, the Daishi a lot, which is like the big heavy tank yeah. one. And I would, um, I would armor it up to, with just insane things, and one shot would just totally make it shut down because it couldn't get rid of the yeah, heat. Yeah, because it would just overheat like. So fun. that my role within the clan was just to basically camp back at base, and then just like eye up, eye up, and then just go bang, like just decimate something. Yeah, just fire that shot off and just wait until just... you cool down again. It's like. Um, Dick press ups like Jack, that Jack Black thing. Yeah. Do you remember that cock press ups? <laughs> yeah. And that's it. One is all like you flat need. On the floor and just yeah. One like, is all you need. <laughs> <laughs> I love that album. Actually, I might have to just get that again. It's nice just being your fun. Yeah. Fucking. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So what's your plans for the weekend then, Scott? You're work you're doing a bit wow. of work tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm working tomorrow for a few hours and then probably trying to get this Need for Speed shift video done by the end of the weekend. Because it's been hanging over my head like a fucking sword of Damocles for like two weeks. Ah, oh, there must be, you must be getting itchy now. It's been that long. Uh, no, I, I, I try not to rush projects because when I do rush them, I just end up hating them. So um, maybe it's a bit of procrastination as well, which doesn't help. All right, I'm not going to be beating any algorithms because I'm releasing fucking every three hours, but. Ah, I'd rather make a video that I find entertaining and hopefully people will find entertaining too. Then make some shit that no one's gonna watch. Yeah. That's the YouTube way. Oh yeah, I could release uh, episode 59 of fucking The Last of Us like anyone's gonna give a shit. Sorry. <laughs> it's still annoying the fuck out of me, that is. Yeah, it's on my channel where oh, I put zero so. effort into it. Come on! Put some effort into it, Scott. Yeah. You could you could be big in Japan. <laughs> well, ironically, I've got like quite a lot of viewers from Korea going through the my analytics recently with uh, Neil. Oh. So, oh yeah, he's, he's got this, he's got that. And, like, hang on, why is there a lot of people in Korea watching my stuff? Am I uh, adhering to the North Korean ideals? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're gonna abduct you. Maybe yeah. You make you perform on national television. I'd be like that fucking, oh, was that the uh, ex-Navy SEAL that became <laughs> like a massive movie star in North Korea because he defected and shit. Really? Yeah, there's, I can't remember the, there's like a few expats that like crossed the border and became like prisoner of war slash celebrities in North Korea. Was, yeah, I can't remember what the, um, <sighs> Uh, there's a channel called Biographics. He, oh, like, I like that. Uh, That's good. Yeah, uh, I can't remember what the, the uh, guy is called, but he basically it was recently he did a, a video on the guy and it's so fascinating. I was like, mm, okay, yeah, go to North Korea and become a movie star and all this shit. Like, no, I'd rather be free and eat a burger <laughs> and say racist things without getting fucking executed. Which I, I um, was way. once looking at a website. It was like Quora, one of those ones or something. And someone was asking that, that question. How do you um, emigrate to Russia? What's the process? And, um, you know, from Europe or something. Well, get a cheeky breaky, duh. You just, do, yeah, just do that. But all the answers were basically, yeah, It's there was a process. <laughs> it's really difficult, but it's like literally why the fuck would you want to do that? And about 500 Moa Russia jokes. <laughs> but I think it must happen. Oh, well, no, I, 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 would, I would like to go there on a holiday just to see what it's like, but, you know, whatever. I thought it was amazing to go. I definitely would go back. Well, like one of my favorite, I can't remember what the channel's called, but he does a lot of um, walks in Chernobyl. <laughs> and he meets some really like interesting people that are just trying to live their lives in the fucking exclusion zone. Oh, really? And um, I can't remember the channel's called. It's pretty popular. Yeah, I never remember names or crap. But, but yeah, he there's one video. He's he just goes for a walk around. And he finds like this little house, and it's with this elderly couple, and they've been living there for fucking years. And you know, they're fine, they don't have 16 toes and all that shit. You know, they're trying just to survive. And this fucking old man, who was like, he must be like in his 80s, but he's like there telling jokes, he's swigging fucking vodka, he's smoking cigarettes. <laughs> well, they basically so just never left. Yeah, they, they just never left. Uh, when the, the you know, when they got, everyone got cleared out, they, they they're stayed just like behind. hid. Yeah, they stayed behind. And uh, it's like so weird because. Most of the time, because Chernobyl was sort of like the hot, sexy thing to talk about, especially back when Stalker and all that was about. And <laughs> everyone was like, oh no, nuclear shit. It's like, no, they just stayed there because they wanted to stay. Well, if you watch, um, I do like things like if you watch um, Thunderfoot. Ah, Bold and Bankrupt, that's it, yeah. Um, he, he did a video on um, showing you literally because there was a, a tv show isn't it chernobyl yeah he's saying it's all bollocks 
and he did a video <laughs> showing there's a website you can do where you just type in like it's on Google Maps. Yeah. And you type in the mega tonnage and the location and it shows you where all the different fallout zones and everything are. And all of these things are so tiny in reality. Yeah, like, it's, in a it's, it's funny how the sens sensationalized that whole thing was. Because, yes, it was bad, but it was nowhere near the apocalyptic sort of shit that they were portraying. All it's the really hundreds cool. and hundreds of nuclear missile tests they actually just did for the military, for example. Yeah. In, in the US, Europe, Russia, everywhere are, like, massive in comparison to these things. Yeah, and... In a way, that that curiosity sort of makes me want to go there one day. <laughs> I think that sort of stemmed from playing Stalker and uh, had like a mild obsession about it for quite some time. One uh, of the interesting facts is how animals and stuff are doing really well because <laughs> they've not got yeah. any humans now messing them around. Um, All right, there's, there's still some fucked up things about it, especially the bold and bankrupt. Uh, I think in that same video he walks by a graveyard and it's literally you could probably lift some dirt and see bodies, it's like they had no time, they were evacuating but they just threw these people in a grave and tried to give them some respect before they fucking laid it and it just, it, yes it's depressing and kind of dark but it's still like wow that's fucking heavy but yeah, you know, it's, I just find that interesting really Oh, come on, game. Can't have much All right, left. it is kind of funny because he does walk around with a knife and he just brings it out every now and then when he sees danger and nothing happens. It's like watching the fucking documentary in Discovery Channel, like uh, Gold Rush, when I watched that briefly. Where every single week, are they going to save the gold mine if they find this little gold nugget? And by the last episode of the fucking season, they find this little nugget that's worth a couple million dollars and they save the company. It's that sort of shit. They just lead you by the f neck for like yeah. weeks until something happens. Oh, balls to this. <laughs> I'm tired now. <laughs> <sighs> I've got another like 12 minutes and it'll be four hours. Go on, I can. Oh, God, I'll give myself 12 minutes and that'll be it. That'll be it. That's it. Fuck it. But this bad guy, look, you've got these things in it which are like slimes and they don't seem to be... You can't kill them. They're just built to fuck you over. That's all they are. So I don't know what you're supposed to do. It's just, once again, another enemy just built to screw you over. Especially because your hitbox and brick is so fucking big. In fact, it's bigger than the sprite. Oh, is it really? So, yeah, if they get underneath you, you're going to get hit no matter what. I'm trying to think of something AVGN to say, but I'm not as smart as him. Uh, shitload of fuck. Just <laughs> yeah. combine swear words, really. Yeah, because if if it'd if be like Need for Speed, more like Need for Shit. That's <laughs> yeah. basically it, isn't it? That's yeah. And then every fucking AVGN clone for the next ten years. <laughs> Splatterhouse, my ass. I'd rather. I don't know. Fuck, I can't well, even yeah, about it. Oh yeah, at least I'd rather watch AVGN than Joe. Then who? Sorry. Angry Joe. Which one's Angry Joe? I don't. Yeah. Basically, if you type in a game review, he's probably got one. And it... <sighs> all right, he's one of those. He for his fans, I can imagine he's fucking incredible, funny, and all that shit. But for people who don't like him. Or think he's kind of disingenuous. I cannot stand his videos. I avoid him like the plague. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's yeah. Fuck. Maybe I'll. <laughs> yeah, you're getting fucked over a picket fence. No, I'm one. just, I'm just like trying to work out like <laughs> these things must be killable, but they really aren't. They really aren't. But yeah, it's weird. It's like back in the day when everyone wanted to be part of Channel Wars and like Angry Joe and you're now like. Yeah, they may have their fans, but I really don't want to watch this guy. So was Ch Channel Awesome was like an MCN type thing, wasn't it? Um, no, really. It was more like... It was, a, it was basically a labyrinth for it. 
which I tried to uh, apply for a few times and never got it. Well, Nigel doesn't think much of Angry Joe either. <laughs> nah, it, there's, there's creators that are, you know, they make their comedy character, but they just, you're just too fake, really. All right, even the AVGN is a character, but you can tell when the character is being earnest, not just swearing indiscriminately for no good reason. There is a character and pacing in. Yeah, and there, yeah. Are, there are actually, a, even AVGN, there are AVGN episodes where he actually doesn't hate on a game. Yeah, but even So then, he, I don't think he hates on games unless they're asking for them. Yeah, I think really most of us have some kind of a front when we're making videos, but you got to tr you can't just be... You've got to have a little bit of heart. And I think that's where I was trying to get at with the guy who said, oh, mm. sub to my channel when you just had dry, no commentary play playthroughs of shit I don't care about. It's because he, there's no heart there. It's disingenuous. And I don't give a shit if it's, you know, cutting edge or not. I You could be recording that video on a postage stamp for all I care. But as long as we can get a character over, it's interesting. God. Like, yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I can imagine you're doing your like teardowns and stuff and you're thinking well no one's going to watch this shit but it's because people are watching it it's because your character I wonder maybe I I, I think um, especially on a long teardown I think that's probably the most real I maybe am um but yeah, I wonder. I, I quite like the idea of a teardown character. That, but I think that's like Electro Boom, isn't it? That's what he's really good at. Yeah. And yeah, well, are you, hey, don't you really need. Nah, I can't speak. <laughs> I just lost my ability to speak then. That was weird. Um, I don't know. It's just. I just like. I like watching people who have a bit of humanity to them because quite a lot of channels who are successful they just play into their persona and they don't do anything mm. above that uh, like one of the prime examples even though you know he's doing extremely well for himself and all good to him is scott the was scott the was's content is so fucking condescending it's like oh yeah this is what a super nintendo everyone knows what a fucking super nintendo is <laughs> and it's just like that uh, but people love his content so I can't really bag on him for that but it, it just there's no personality there I'd rather watch like the gaming historian who all right, oh yeah he's, he's basically he's the tech mind of retro gaming he's very dry but he knows what he's doing you know like, this he knows his shit and I'd rather watch someone who knows their shit than someone who's sprouting off wikipedia <laughs> you know it's um yeah once you have that 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 sort of buy-in with people that you are a real person and you care then the rest will just click into place you you, you certainly can't be a bit of um if you're in the mood for it, a bit of gaming historian and lgr that's a good combo i reckon yeah even though I'm not really, I don't watch as much Clint's videos anymore because he's just to just reviewing PCs and stuff. Yeah, you know, I used to like his game reviews. Yeah, I don't, but, I don't watch it anymore really. But you know, he he managed to, you know, people like his like him as a person. That's why they watch, rather than you know whatever he's reviewing or showing on camera is irrelevant. He did one game actually though, which interesting. Speaking about shovelware, abandonware from decades ago, it was something called like the Star Wars Droid Factory. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah. It looked yeah, kind of yeah. cool. Well, I reviewed the uh, another Kinetic game, Star Wars Connect, and that Ooh, that was yeah. terrible. It was based, I think. If that game was made in the 80s, then you could probably blame cocaine. But in the <laughs> mid-2000s, 
really going to be the excuse for that one. Especially when you're playing DDR Star Wars Edition. Holy crap. They had the fucking dancing bit, didn't they? Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, because it was made by the same people who made the Michael Jackson Experience game. So. Oh, really? Because I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I really like the Black Eyed Peas so, Experience. Anyway. That's one of my favourite games on Xbox Connect. Really? Yeah, and then the, the, the dancing thing in the Star Wars is pretty much that. Yeah, I think it's all made by the same team. I could be talking to my ass. Wow, they did a great job of that. It's got the right level of humour on it, you know. Yeah, all right. All the covers. Know, I'm not a big Star Wars fan anyway, so when I was playing the game, I, the dancing thing started. I thought, all oh, right, I know what this game is now. It's just basically trolling Star Wars fans. Yeah, and I think I think they would like it. <laughs> or they know it's tongue-in-cheek. Oh, no, they didn't. They fucking hated it. Did they really? <laughs> went mental. Ah, big time. But that was in the midst of like the motion control backlash anyway. Because by then it was pretty much everywhere. Every, all three systems had a motion control thing, and I think everyone was fucking sick of it. Sony's was the lamest looking thing I've ever seen. Well, I remember... They're still using it now, aren't they, with the fucking VR? Really? Yeah, the old uh, ping pong ball, blue, ping pong dildos of truth. I yeah. just, I just witnessed. I think it's this guy's wife and child ghost of his wife and child their soul being dragged down to hell uh, is that yeah. what this game is about is that what he's trying yep. to do he's trying to save his uh his wife and kid wow all right in the remake he's uh trying to save his girlfriend which is not as wholesome <laughs> did they yeah. actually even get rid of the wife and kid sprites i don't know they didn't in the third game because the third game is probably the most the darkest one of the darkest games on the Mega Drive. Bithead wow. one thousand five goose. I have not heard of Bithead one thousand. Oh, Bithead one thousand. That does ring a bell. I don't know if I actually watch the stuff though. I'm very aware of YouTube. There's like some channels I can watch obsessively, and there's other channels that I never watch. Well, recently, it's just been nothing but Kim Justice videos, just watching all the like the computer wars and stuff. I um, I just flick between uh, yeah, flitter, flitter's a better word, um, <laughs> between channels, and I'll go on them, go then go off them for a while, and yeah, um, be really into weird channels like science channels or whatever, and um. Find channels that I think then oh they're doing too well and I'll get annoyed so I'll stop watching them and then I'll watch them. Yeah. <laughs> well no, I, I I tend to try and watch anything that sort of ends up in my feed if I find it interesting. But then there's some times where I'll just go and watch one channel like for two weeks straight and just watch everything they have. <laughs> Sometimes then... though something's like too good but too uh, it's hard to explain in a way. Sometimes if something starts turning into too much, like I could yeah. watch it on the BBC, it I, yeah. it loses some interest to me because it's kind of like, well, I could just go yeah, and watch a it. real documentary. It or needs to be a like, bit more. Or sometimes if I watch like a a, a channel that I kind of ha feel like they're you know I'm not ripping off by chance, but um, I feel like I'm stifling my own creative process making videos because I'm watching them too much. So I feel like, oh, I should be more like this person. It's like, no, it doesn't work. You know, i got to play to what I know rather than what this guy's doing. I know exactly exactly yeah. what you're talking about. And yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, that's a really great idea. I should do And you're like, what the hell? That's like literally you've just, you're copying it right at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't use, you can't really use YouTube as inspiration for something you want to do, ideally. Yeah. Yeah, and I try not doing it anymore because I when I used to like when I write a script for a game review, I'm watching like a review made by someone else, and all of a sudden I'm realizing that I'm taking ideas from what they're saying and putting it into mine. Like, no, what am I doing? I'm just it's like plagiarizing, and it's like, no, that's no, cut it out, do it, do it myself. All right, you can take inspiration from, like for instance, like if you're doing a an essay on the Amiga, you're going to watch Kim Justice video because, you know, Damn. Neil, because they've covered a lot of stuff on the fucking Amiga. It just makes sense. They're a repository for information. But not rip off whole, whole things that they actually do. I'm losing my 
English. I can't speak anymore. Yeah. It's so late. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! No, you motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> That is insane. Yeah. I have to see if Mike Matai's done a video on this and go watch him for a bit. Well, Do you watch his stuff on it? Mm. I, fi I find... Mike's oh. good when he's with James. When he's doing James and Mike Monday. But I can't... I don't like watching his stuff on his own because, once again, he feels... Dis he's gotten better, I'll be honest. When he first started doing like the solo videos, it was a bit like off-putting kind of disingenuous <laughs> yeah he's uh it depends on the video because sometimes i can like the glitch videos i've watched all of them and i like him oh but the glitch then there's other Gremlin. videos i just can't watch more than five minutes like i'm done i can't watch it very picky oh 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 punching stuff <laughs> Naval History Channel. Oh, Nigel, if you like that, there's a there's a, a channel, and I can't I can't remember what it's called. It's like called it's it's a it's like a Eastern European name. It's like Binkov's Battles or something. Anyway, type in it's if you type in like could UK invade Spain. He does all of these scenarios, and then of any global, you know, US versus UK, and he works out all of the tonnage, all of the armaments, what each military has, how the battle could go down, you know, like does the whole strategic planning. And it's 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 like a fascinating oh, like, channel, like fantasy um, battle. Sort of yeah, thing. basically, I think yeah, it's called like okay. Binkov's Battles or something like that, and it um, it's really interesting because. Obviously, he's getting all of the information from, like, Jane's... Remember those Jane's things, which tells you all the military stats? Yeah. And it's just fascinating, really. But even that, like, I've, like the last few nights, been, I can't remember what the channel's... I, but there's one channel that uh, invet, it just reviews all the Warhammer games, the video oh, yeah. games. <laughs> and... He, you know, he barely has like he only has like ten thousand subscribers, but his videos got like hundreds of thousands of views because it is Warhammer. It's really niche, but the people who love it watch it re religiously. It's a uh, pretty funny, and he's just basically lampooning all Warhammer games. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Ah, <coughs> man. I and thought. Even then, he a lot of law videos as well he, he, he's done he's just basically taking a piss out of all the factions of Warhammer did you see um, there's that Warhammer fan movie that someone's made yeah it's not very long it's it's like a few minutes it's pretty basically. fucking cool but it's <laughs> insane it's like one person did that well like a few years ago when uh, that one person guy did the uh, Power Rangers like the edgy Power Rangers version. That was fucking cool. I don't think it exists anymore online because they fucking took it down. No! <laughs> this is like the worst bits in Castlevania. You remember like the bloody Medusa well, head it, shit? It's just designed to fuck you over. That's all it is. You can't get the pattern down because it's just that. <laughs> ah, yes, it is, Nigel. It is, yeah. Arch Warhammer. Which is another part of my nerdy like life at school, <laughs> sort of coming out again. I never played. I ironically, I never played Warhammer tabletop. I always I painted the figures, I collected them, never played the game. Yeah, but that's exactly. I don't know if you caught that earlier when I was saying that because I, I started this stream to play Warhammer and I said exactly that. I wanted yeah. to play the game, but nobody would be around. No, I didn't know anyone who would even play it with me. Ever, I think. But so I just painted all the little figures and made my little armies, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Go, oh, look, like... I've got a heavy bolter. Yeah, yeah. What? I always remember that. Like, oh, yeah, heavy. And the friends I used to hang around at the time stat out their, uh, their uh, marines, but I'd never seen anyone play it. <laughs> they'd paint it, they'd stat them, but they would never play it. I think, I, no, I'd tell a lie. I did have one friend who said he played the game he, he said oh yeah i play ultimate destruction which is basically oh let's spread out all the hundreds of pounds i spent on these figures onto one table and then seven all-out war it's all about spectacle uh, okay. about 
And um, I used to go up into his room and he'd have the table, all the stuff laid out. And I, I don't think I ever seen him play a game. He just had it laid, like it's some sort of fucking <laughs> penis extension for no oh, really. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Pretty funny. I, I think I've still got some uh, Dungeons and Dragons character sheets somewhere. But although in those days it was advanced Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. they seem to have dumbed it down now. I played a lot of D and D. If I didn't play Warhammer, I played D and D, and then I, Shadowrun for a bit as well. I'd quite like to. I think I th I still think I would like to play uh, a D and D now. Um, but if there was some some sort of online version. Can we do that via like I'm, streaming and web conferencing? These I imagine days? there's a fucking yeah, but I I can assume there's a web-based version of D and D. There's gotta be. Oh, for fuck's sake! I've got a save game, a save state where I just die. <laughs> but I get them. I'm sure I get them. I did it! Ha ha ha! Oh, I actually did it! Oh my god! I can't believe that! Amazing. So Nigel was in a huge role-playing game club. Wow. Oh, I've got to fight the Orb of Fundera now. Nope. I've spent many of hours in a games workshop. Never played the game. <laughs> but it was always the funniest thing. You buy the new rule, you read through it, never play the game. You yeah, go so into what, a war. Yeah, what was that in games workshop then? Because you always see people playing. Did, was it like you could just go in and buy and paint and you're supposed to just, what, never leave the shop? Pretty much, yeah. It was like a... It was like a sanctuary. I, I don't know what they're like now. But I used to go in just to peruse, you know? <laughs> it was weird. Or I would buy the new rule, uh, rule book and then read for it from cover to cover just because I wanted to. <laughs> I don't know why. I I do you think that? Um, do you think all the characters that are in the cupboards there were they painted by the staff? Um, oh, like you know, so. you've got to put on the next this tank in your display, and it's like I wonder if they received them painted. Like there's a a, a special you, games workshop place in. Could, if I remember right, when I used to go to the games work, my local one, you could buy them painted. I don't know if they were from the factory that way or the staff did them. But yeah, I can remember. I can remember you could buy them, but they were like, like five, six, seven pound more expensive than the standard kit. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 charge you a premium for it. Oh my god! Look at. All right, so you can <laughs> see this. Like, it, you fight the. What are you supposed to do at this point? Oh, they don't. Hit, oh right, I thought it was hitting me, but it's not. Fair enough. Punch the orbs in the balls. All about pattern recognition. There you go. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, got that one really quickly. Yeah. But then it's the lightning, and you got to be careful of that hitbox. It will fuck you up. Yeah. So that was a practice. So. But the orbs appear back really quick like that. So you got to be really yeah. careful. So you got to get in and get your punch. Oh, oh no. Still got me. Yeah, it was weird. It was like everyone was super hot in a war hammer, but I don't think anyone really played it. <laughs> Did you ever play Rainbow. Laser Squad? Oh, no, I say Laser Squad. Space Crusade. No. Oh, hello. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Do I have to kill her? I don't know. I haven't played this game so long, mate. This is just. Oh, my word. You're my hero. <sighs> no, look, that's right work. <laughs> you oh my you word. Your Tari is run amok. And the <laughs> Frost the Raptor is in the chat. Please do not swear. Please do not swear or say balls. Look at this <laughs> game. And please turn off your. <laughs> Sound on your stream. It's like people in on the radio, don't they? They always tell them that. They've got that thing going on where it's going wah wah wah. Really sound loop, yeah, yeah. 
Oh god, it just reminds me of the fucking retro limb live streams. It's like, oh yeah, I can hear him like 15 times. What game is this you play? Splatterhouse. Splatterhouse 2? Yeah. Anyway, I think I'm going to have to let myself die because I've only got one heart and I, I don't think I can... There's no point spawning from this point. So... It would be cool if you could put action replay codes in, wouldn't it? Well, then does emulator support it? Well, I don't know what, what emulator you use. It. So, <laughs> so oh, it's... it's, it's I don't know what it is. Fusion. It probably oh, does support Fusion. it, but... That's yeah, why when we so. loaded this game though, it even had a trade a trainer which um, I ignored. I said, "Nah." I think I I think it I must yeah, have. Yeah, but that was baked into the ROM. Was... Baked in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't used Cake of Fusion in fucking years. I just moved on to Retro Arch and just used the one they give you, really. This is a bit weird. It's like it's just like a sequence of um, bosses. <laughs> the actual game in between. The, yeah, the final uh, few levels are like that. So my and my te just... my technique obviously is failing. What I just did there that was the lamest. And it's just thing. designed to fuck you over. That's all it is. But I'm playing it with seemingly infinite um, lives as part of the trainer. I think that was on it. Um, oh cock! But, but, but do you know? It, would it have infinite continues? Do you think this game? Um, I can't remember to be honest with you, but Splathouse is one of those games where you needed that infinite continues because if you didn't, you would have just f completely quit playing the game in the first two levels. It's just like more persistence than uh, actual skill. <laughs> well, I'm trying to like even. It's a bit like playing Flappy Bird, really. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought of a um, distinction between <laughs> Flat House and Flappy Bird. You just gotta like keep grinding at it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's not fun. Although I'm not uh, turning it off. So I don't yeah. know. <laughs> why <laughs> am I not turning this off? So yeah. You're right well, about that hitbox, well, that's mental. Know. That's why that gets you on that when you're pointing left. It doesn't seem to get it get you when you're this direction. On, on this, the way it's laid out for whatever reason. Punch her in the face. Mm, 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 mm. Look, I'm behind, ahead of you now. Yeah, there's a lot of it. It's about pattern recognition as well. Like, once you've got the, the pattern down, you can just get on with it. This, this guy reminds me of that blue guy from that movie. Do you remember the one where he, Dr. Manhattan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, lucky you can't see his dick. Oh yeah, there was some cuts where you could, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like one of the final scenes where you're just standing there and it's like, oh, blue dick. It's like, that's unnecessary. <laughs> What's funny about that movie was, when I saw it first, I absolutely hated it. I thought it was a pile of shit. Absolutely what? You cut out then. And then I um, I said it was, I thought it was actually absolutely terrible. He but I really liked it. Um, Second time I watched it. I love, I love the Watchmen. I, I do like the film, but going back and playing that and having the fifteen, well, the four music videos, full length ones, kind of like, yeah, cut these out. <laughs> we don't need this. But it was, yeah, it's probably Zack Snyder's best movie. What do you think of Sucker Punch? I actually really like Sucker Punch. That's pretty much the same vibe, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's. But that's also, part of it, isn't it? That's how it works. It's yeah. It's if you can buy into the conceit, yeah, just the silliness of it all, it's fine. Oh, what a dickhead I am! I've worked. Oh, I worked it out. I worked out what you're supposed to do and how you to not die doing this. You hit them all but one, and then yeah. the orbit is because it only fires them all back at you when you get rid of all of them. So just get rid of all but one, and then run in. Oof. Don't. Oh well, better late than never. <laughs> oh, hasn't the boars here? And that's what distracted me looking at <laughs> the chat. <laughs> yeah, we could talk about our blue guy dicks. Blue guy dicks. Blue guy dicks. Asnivor, do you prefer a blue guy dick or a green guy dick? <laughs> it's like the fucking 
red pill, blue pill in the Matrix. <laughs> Which dick are you going to tug? Which dick are you going <laughs> to tug today? Reality? Oh no. <laughs> oh, I've lost so much, so much ground now. Swallow the green penis and go back to your normal life. I never really ne remember <laughs> which is the worst bit. If it's the which is the ba the good pill and the bad pill, really. Uh, oh, I don't know. I watched the. the... Isn't that the point, though? Or yeah, the but idea that maybe it's a good thing not to know. But like the Matrix is one of those films that's infinitely quotable by the comics. <laughs> And it, well, they had the fucking remaster come out recently on in the cinema, and that was a lot of fun. In fact, it was the last free film I got to watch when I'm working inside. Uh -huh. is, the, um, is the Matrix based on anything that's been around for a long time? Because I feel as if the whole idea of we're all in a fake universe thing isn't a new thing. Well, it's sort of like they basically made a pulpy sci-fi. Sci no novella cool basically it's like it's something you would read in like the 70s and then they just put it on a big screen with it's like a lot time. of William Gibson stuff in fact yeah. that's probably the closest yeah. or Philip K. Dick yeah maybe more Gibson though because it's more of that cyberpunks vibe and I think actually if you think of the Matrix even Keanu Reeves when he was in Johnny Mnemonic that's kind of also quite close, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't mean to vibe the film too much. I just meant the idea of we're all in a fake universe. It's all not really there. Mm. I kind of had an obsession with that as well. Like, oh shit, that's next level. <laughs> it's like, is this real life? But then realise that you shouldn't be watching The Matrix, especially the early 2000s while incredibly stoned. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. I think I remember my RE teacher at school telling us we've got no way of proving that we're not a, blade, a brain in a plastic yeah yes yeah, so let's not worry things. about it so that means that the matrix isn't based on it that idea's been around for a while we... oh yeah it's it's very it's a very poppy pre uh, premise that you could probably make a thousand stories of but they just made it look cool <laughs> Basically. But it was that was literally that was literally that um, what's his name Descartes right? I think therefore I am. That was his thought experiment. That is basically it, and that that's from all the way back then, which whenever that was. Yeah. But even like I'm playing The Witcher it, right now, and it's based on. Yeah, all right, it has its own series of books, but the main grunt of the storylines are based on fairy tales. <laughs> and fairy tales have been around since the dawn of time, if you want to call. It. Yeah, all fantasy never... stuff is fairly derivative. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's derivative. But if you can make that derivative interesting, then people don't really dwell on the stuff you took influence yeah. from. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing either. Yeah. Even if you look at the, the Harry Potter thing, um, I mean, I don't think there's anything original in there, but she did a great job putting it all together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you put it in a compelling way, then people are going to watch it. Oh, you dead fucker. Alright, I think I've got the pattern now. Kind of sus. That, Nigel, they're not remaking The Matrix, they're actually making a fourth movie, which is... Yeah, okay. The Revenge of worse. Neo. They can't be, <laughs> we can't be any worse than fucking Jupiter Ascending. Ooh. That's the Man. weird thing, I quite like that. I love that film too, but... Um, I've not seen it. Uh, <laughs> once again, it's a film that came out in the recent times where if it came out in the 80s, you could blame cocaine. <laughs> oh, I, I, you guess, the Wachowski siblings would be rubbing it into their gums thinking, oh yeah, that's a great idea, then write that down. Is that the one with what's the name in it? Myla Kunis in it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah uh, I saw the trailers for that and I knew it was going to be cash. And Eddie Redmayne fucking chewing chewing the scenery and it's glorious to watch <laughs> there was one I watched that was absolutely dog shit uh, I turned it off which is unusual for a film usually once I'm kind of half an hour into it feels like I must finish <laughs> oh what the oh, it's a sci-fi film uh, oh it was absolute terrible big long name some guy's name and there's something something 
<laughs> That's no just idea. some guy's name, something, something. Mm -hmm. Mace That's Griffin. it, you must know what I mean. <laughs> when you said that, I just thought Mace Griffin, Bounty Hunter, but that's a okay. game. <laughs> no idea. Oh no, the last, I think the last like film I walked out or watched it was probably Passengers, because they completely missed the point of that fucking movie. <laughs> Oh yeah, I quite liked Passenger. I remember seeing that on an aeroplane or something. And to be unfair, yeah, but, I only ever watch my movies what, on aeroplane. But what makes it what makes it annoying is that that film might be all right on its own, but it's based on the material that would would have made a much more compelling film because the the theatrical film that we got is just two star-crossed lovers in the middle of space. When the actual first draft of it was more like a horror film. Yeah, because if you think of, consider everything from her perspective, it's amazing. Yeah. It's the, it's the creepiest fucking film you've ever seen if you it, yeah. it, it change the viewpoint around. Yeah, and it seems, yeah, they missed the point. Oh, now you're going to talk about John Wick. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, so I do yes. like John those. John Carter, that's the one. John Carter, but that was the film name. It wasn't under something, something, something. The one <laughs> of Mars, the one where he's on Mars and you can jump and stuff. Yeah, it Oh, I quite like that one, yeah. Based on those old books. A, it started out as a confederate general or something. That's it. That Yeah, they, that's oh, a really old... Yeah, that's, those are based on some really old books. I ended up getting pissed off watching fucking Interstellar as well. Only because that film's like 15 hours long. Oh, I love Interstellar. And the, like end, well. and the, <laughs> and the ending. Fuck off. I don't, I don't like her, though. She gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't have to Mm. Well, that's because she was everywhere. She was basically a more talented Kira Knightley. But you can't have love, actually. You fuck off, Kira Knightley. I'd much rather have Kira Knightley than Anna Hathaway. <laughs> no. <laughs> no! Oh, upsetting the patriarchy with that line. <clears throat> okay. So, jump, duck. Jump, duck. Avoid the mild racism Jump. from the uh, Duck. Lovecraft figure. Yeah. Oh, hang on, am I supposed to be killing this guy? By Kick, kicking him? punch, it's all in the mind. Kya! No. And no, I didn't mean John Wick. I thoroughly enjoy John Wick. John Wick. All three parts of it. I actually saw, I saw the first one in the cinema and hardly anyone else in the UK did it. It was really bombed over here. Well, it was... It came out like six months after the fact because it came out in America and I bought it on DVD, American DVD. It, it came out in the UK like two weeks afterwards. <laughs> That's how long it took. Yeah, because we saw the trailers for it and we said, well, looking forward to that, can't wait to get that and all the rest of it, blah, 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 blah. And then we had nothing on it for ages and then it was in the cinemas for like two weeks. We did manage to see it. I yeah. enjoyed it. Brilliant. Then, yeah, I was well. That's when I started working in the cinema when the first one came out, and I think out of about the first screening, there was only about like ten people watching it. <laughs> one of them was me, <laughs> and then by the third one, it was sold out every single night. Yeah. Obviously, everyone caught on. That could have happened with Batman as well. That Batman Begins film, which I thought was a great film, it's just as good as the Dark Knight. I thought. Um, not many people saw that, and then the Dark Knight, it can all win me. Yeah. Yeah, when um, Dark Knight Rises came out, fucking, you could not keep the seats open. <laughs> people wanted to watch it. I was disappointed with that. Well, by then it was like, where can they go from here? Can they go in the darker? No, it's now a big franchise once again, so they're going to make it basically like Batman and Robin, without the, the character. And Arnie, of course. <laughs> no. It's the freeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that film is terrible, but I it's still find it. It's kind of terrible in a good way. But it's funny. It's it's fun. Yeah, I I, I always moan about it. I went to see, there's a, a place in Glasgow called the Glasgow Film Theatre. It's one of these old Art Deco theatres, you know, uh -huh. the style. Um, and they kept it that way, and they show a lot of old classic films and all the rest of it, blah, 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 blah. We went to see Highlander. I love Highlander. It's an 80s mm -hmm. film. And even in the 80s, Highlander, Highlander knew it shouldn't be taken completely seriously. They knew they were taking a bit of a bit of a piss. They were going over the top, yeah, but I don't know, all the rest of it. 
And so, when it came out, it was a flop anyway. Yeah, no one cared about it. it yeah, came out but the video. Eventually, we turned out turned good. So we're sitting yeah. watching this in, in the GFT, and these two millennial lassies are sitting a couple of rows in front of us, laughing ironically as if, look how shit this is. I can't believe people took this seriously. Of course they didn't. We no. had it in the 80s. But the, yeah, and the, the thing is, that film was made by Canon. Canon at the time about schlock. Even at the time, it was they were just doing yeah. silly films. Yeah, it was fine. It was fun. There's loads of films in the eighties like that. The Running Man, Total Recall, oh, all the rest of it. Yeah, love Running Man. <laughs> Bollocks. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, some people really don't get. Them. It's like, yes, we get it. It's a joke. We're all on the joke. You don't need to make a joke out of it. I don't know, I don't know why it annoys me. It annoys me anyway. That's right. I don't work in a fucking center anymore, so I have to put up with that shit. What do you do in the center? I used to be a, a manager. Imagine kids that didn't want to work, they just wanted the money. Yeah, so what did you... Do... I don't imagine you paid them well. Are you even trying? I am trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you do better. I like asking about the new kind of avatar thing on uh, YouTube. What, yeah, I love the cinema. I think it's a brilliant place to go. I go almost every week. Love it. <laughs> Ever since leaving my previous appointment, I ain't been walked into a cinema in, what was it, two months now? <laughs> Fudge. I need to get it out of my system. Oh, I, I just love it. Just that they'll be able to sit down for two hours and just your mind just fo focuses on something else for you. Yeah. Change. Yeah, the escapism. Come on, come no. Oh, how do I avoid that? I went and saw it chapter two last night, but it was a double bill, so I saw chapter one first, then chapter two on just one off. And um, it was in four DX, which was absolutely amazing. I've only seen four DX before, but it's been like I think it was Rogue One, so I think it was a PG or something. But this one was obviously a higher certificate, so they, I think they just wrapped it right up. A four DX is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Spray and the wind and the smells and all I've that. Only, yeah, I've only watched a, a couple of 40x movies. The fuck, first fuck, one I watched fuck. was Warcraft. And, alright, Warcraft's not great as a movie, but it was a lot of fun in 40x. Is that like those things you have at those... Sometimes on a pier, they have one of those little cinema things that does Pretty all these much, yeah. shakes the it's, sheet chairs yeah. around. And... It's basically the same technology, and most of yeah. well, like um, it's done to a really good, really high standard. Though. Yeah, and even with um, the like, there's like a Raven game, and the seats that they use are the D Max ones, <laughs> because uh, a friend of mine who serves, but well, he works at D Max, so he serves the arcade machines and the cinema seats, which is uh, pretty funny. Yeah, so you get, it's, it, you can get kicked in the back by it, you can get jets of air down by your feet and by your ears, so if like the big clown comes on and big, big jump scare and the thing comes on, you also at the same time get something in the it against you. so it really yeah. does get enhanced the kind of... But the behind the scenes, scenes, those things are a fuck that they keep making, they just <laughs> constantly break, they're so fickle. The fucking yeah, chairs. Yeah, once, if they go down, it's, uh, yeah. I didn't work with uh, D, uh, D box for long, but <laughs> I worked with it enough to really not want to work in a place with D box because it just fucking crashed. Yeah, it just fucked up constantly. Well, uh, Converse, I'm going to make. <laughs> Everyone goes and, see, goes and sees that. Oh, yeah, uh, the average customer's not going to see it. But, brilliant. Yeah, the average customer's not going to see it, but an employee, it was just like the bane of your fucking existence if you was on a D. Uh, a, D Max or D Box shift. Yeah, <laughs> it was not fun. Oh my word, where are we now? Right, so I'm going to retire for the evening. And I'll see you guys later. Gotta kill the last spunking boss. Good night.
<laughs> 99. 99. Oh, shit. Even my save game's in the wrong place. I just... Oh, that's all right. It was at the end of it. Oh. Oh, my God. All right. I think i got to keep going now, Scott. <laughs> I think i got to keep going. Hopefully, there's not too many levels left. Well, don't lose your shit all in one night. <laughs> See you next time. Oh, you will. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Whoops. So you nearly finished this game and it was the last bit, is it? I don't know. I hope so. It just seems never-ending. It just seems like just end boss after end boss with no game in the middle. It's almost like a fighting game. It, it reminds me of the you know, Street Fighter 2 when you have to battle the car or the battles. Yeah, because your your character you can he kind of stays in place when he's kicking and fighting. See how I can like kick right, kick left without moving? So it is very much like a fighting game, yeah. Yeah, and this this is like the between oh. levels game, mini game you would get. They didn't they don't stick with those for ages that for a long time. I think they jumped those. And you can see the different patterns. So you reckon the pattern repeats? If yeah, they the do. But they're complicated enough to you have to take time to really think about them. I almost fancy going online and just seeing how many levels are on this to see if I'm going to give up. Just like do a bit more another time. What are we, four and a half hours in now? You've been doing that for four and a half hours? Fuck. Not this game. It will delay tomorrow's video because I can't upload it while I'm uh, streaming. Tomorrow's video is of the three choices: two that look good, and then you upload the other one. From as far as I'm concerned, there's another. There's another. There's more choices now. So I made another one today, just before the stream. Stuff I need to do the soldering, so I'm going to start my new projects next week. I fuck them up. Hopefully not. Hopefully you'll just manage. It'll be fine. Well, nothing's critical, so I'll have a bit of fun either way. I'm just trying all these different combos because I'm going to check if this game might have had like a special move that I wasn't aware of, you know, like a panic move mm. that I could have used. I don't think it does. In previous levels, you've been doing stuff to try and hit back, like grabbing the spikes and throwing them. Actually, back that's a good point. Um, I'm just punching these these things, right? But yeah. you, uh, look, so you actually have to hit the main friggin' mass. Got it. Can you hit some of them back to hit? Yeah, yeah, no, you can't, but you just have to hit the thing. So you just got to work your way towards it. So, see like that, because I've got, I'm have got. i using save states. If I can just make some progress, a little bit of progress each time, yeah. it'll be cumulative, so shit. I'd love to do it without losing anything there. So that's that'd be interesting to see if you actually can do that. Oh, that was so close. Oh, that's close enough. Three hearts. I've seen some emulators that have a rewind button. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> Go 10 seconds back, so if you're going to shoot them up, you fuck it up and you just tap the button. Mm. 
Well, it's almost be like if, if you could hit the if if you could put it's dangerous to do, but you could put the save state button on your joypad on there's a spare button on here, but yeah. if you hit it by mistake in the wrong place, you'll be screwed. You just keep coming. But you're right. If it, if it would just auto increment the save state counter every time, you could then rewind between states and it'd be so fast, it probably it would just seem seamless. It was one of those um one of those pre-made, you know, the remakes of some of the old consoles and Nintendos and stuff. It may not be in an Nintendo, but that, that was one of the kind of features it came with, with a rewind button. No, I didn't see it working, so I just said Yeah, I think the, the SNES Mini, it records, it, you can, yeah, you can watch stuff as well, like watch what you were doing, so it kind of does have that. I don't know, it's doing it, it might just record it as vid like video, I don't know. Come on, come on. That's definitely the last boss, though. Biz Hawk. Oh, it's always the Biz Hawk. I was going to look into that one you were talking about it last time. Shit. Right, you've got to stop messing around. Start trying to figure out what is going on here. So I think with those dog head things, you want to be, you've got to be in a corner. Oh, but the second one drops straight down on you. Fuck. So you get into ah, what's happened? Save states. Of what? Sorry. You get infinite lives as well as save states, so that. I think so because I think I think it had infinite lives on a trainer when it started, so, and um, you could have infinite lives and infinite health. So if you really wanted just to piss through it, you obviously just do infinite health. But that's a lot less sporting, isn't it? Yeah, you might as well not just watch a video on YouTube instead. Infinite lives. I, th I think this game will have infinite continues anyway, so infinite lives just saves you time. Someone said you've got infinite continues. But the difference is on a continue might send you back to the beginning of a level, whereas an infinite life wouldn't. Yeah. That's fine. This is the way that you play the games that you could spend all your day doing as a kid, but can't as an adult. <laughs> I quite like the idea though, you know, like people using save states. It's, it's almost like technical, isn't it? You, try, you can set your own rules. We're trying to finish the game. We're, we're allowing ourselves slots. We're going to do... So it still yeah. takes time and it still takes some skill because you still have to progress. You just really just cutting the time that it would take you, whereas if you were a kid, if you were a twelve year old kid, you'd have all the time in the world for I'm just wondering this bit here that where they come down in this sequence, every now and then there's a bit where I won't totally Yeah, like that. Oh and I managed to hit the autosave. No oh, shit, but when I, I think it saved it later. Bollocks, it saves me getting hit. <laughs> Hello, Ashley, how are you doing? Right, so we need to do up, up, down, save. Down. Shit. So that's the same pattern now, anyway. So you can't get out of that, you gotta move. Crap. Down. <laughs> <laughs> My word. This reminds me of that. There's a movie with um, Tom Cruise in it where he's rewinding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that ages more? 
Yeah, Hedge of Tomorrow. It's, it's a bit like that, isn't it? Yes, I, I really enjoyed that film. I just remembered Asnivore has kind of something to do with all this. He he writes some code or other for the Biz people Hawk. doing Spectrum Long Plays. Is that what the Biz Hawk yeah, we were talking about that before to do some computer-assisted speedrunning. I was kind of maybe thinking about doing some for fun. Maybe there's maybe the idea that that is the worst save point I've ever made. That right where the head, head's coming down. Come on! Bang! Bang, bang. Come on, yep, yep, yep. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Die, you fuck. Oh, what? It's not even the actual boss thing. Okay, so there's obviously a pattern there. Oh, no. Don't believe that. Bang. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> I wonder if you have to hit, hit it while it's in this form to actually kill it. No, maybe not. You bastard. I don't think you, the bat damage gets damage. I think it's just to annoy you. What the f- how is it damaging me that time? I'm Shitting. not wondering what the premise for this kind of game is. You are a deranged serial killer rescuing your girlfriend from an evil monster. <laughs> yeah, you got it. And child, I thought. I thought I saw a child. I might have been imagining that. <sighs> I don't know why it's able to kill me now. Whereas before I was just standing in the corner punching it. Mixing it up by going to the other side. Nope.
at that timing. Yeah, I lit a candle for Robert in the dabby today. So distraught. Fuck you now. Look at this jumping shit. Nothing you can do. Yeah, I don't know about this top tier save scumming. I think. I can't bear it. I can't do this again. Ow. Frame so advance, think, fast forward. Do you think this comes down to memory then? There's very little you can do, really, at this point. Oh, so it's Game Genie. Hang on. Ah, oh, yeah. That's what I want. So let's do add code to enable code, click them and click OK. Let's see if this has worked. Balls. I'm just going to start the. Let's see if I get hit now. No, that didn't do anything. Right. I like this. This is just a new way of cheating. If we're going to cheat, let's cheat it properly. So, let's try this game genie thing. Oh, I don't think the code entered properly. That was the problem. Although, saying that, it does look okay there. Well, start with doesn't, it's not going to help you, is it? Say again? Well, maybe it will, maybe, no, maybe, maybe start well, because you've got those skulls up the top there as well as lives. Yeah, that's why so I want the hits, because it, kind of it says start with one hit points. Please select the time. One. Then continue the came and come back to this code finder. Okay. So does it remember the one? Oh yeah. So I see. Just check in case those game genie codes were just uh, crap ones. Yeah, they all look pretty similar to me. I'd settle for one hit point, to be honest, at this point, because I can't continue. I think it's taking the um, HTML code things. Let me do it again by hand. Zero, oh, zero, zero, three, three. So you reckon the code you're putting there is getting 
let's see what happens then. Oh, hang on. Just, just, is it worth doing? Because it says lives and hit points. Maybe just, I'll just put in lives in case. Yeah, because I reckon those skulls up the top are what you might mistake for lives. And... Oh, nothing seems to have changed there, there. Dang, damn it. So what a par code. It did say par code. Oh, there's quite a lot more. Passwords. I'll try the infinite life code, but I think the number should be in the same spot after a reload. So just use save states to find it. Are you playing Sega Genesis? Or yeah. Or is it Sega Mega Drive? Mega Drive. Try another one of these. I do like the idea of though decompiling the memory and working this out. I, I kind of feel I want to do that, so I'm gonna save the the state anyway. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually do a save state as as well. There seems to be Genesis codes as well as Mega Drive codes. Do you think they're different? I would even imagine that codes that work on the Genesis have no reason at all to work. Okay, Nigel, let's try this. What you were saying then? So, so, so when when do you want me to search? So, if, do you think I should pause now? Search four, right? Because we've got four lives. Okay, so we do code finder. We're going to search for four. Shit. Three. Dang. So we're going to add a code in here. AX2T-AA68. What is that code supposed to do? <laughs> it seems to have definitely done something like crash the game. Okay, so that's cool. It's cool that we um, it did something. So it does mean that that does do something. Right, so what should we do? So mix, mix zero, press reset first. It's a code finder. Oh, Oh, hang on. What's happened here? What did I click? Code finders. Why is it different now? Count one. Press reset first in code finder. Reset just takes you back to that though, doesn't it? Difference. Remember the value, come back to code finder. Okay, so that's one. And then you could. Oh, it's unhappy. Crashed it. 
I think that's because we still had this patch here. Gotta reset it. Okay, so if we pause that there, so let's. I haven't done this before, Nigel, but I've coded and stuff before, so it makes me feel that it's like using a disassembler. This is weird how it's coming up with all these things, isn't it? So, okay, so I want one find, too many, so. Okay, so go to code founder then one. All right, okay, let's start again. So I'm going to load, let's do the process totally from the beginning. So I'm going to reset there here. I'm going to go to file this thing. I'm going to go to code finder. I'm going to click count. I'm going to click reset. And then I'm going to put one. And then I'm going to click find. And then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK again so I'm back in the game. And then I'm going to unpause it so now it's zero. And then I'm going to go to back to here. I'm going to code finder, and then I'm going to put zero in, and then hit find. Whoa! Interesting. So let's see if any of those, none of those, seem to match what we had there. So I don't know if we can paste those into Notepad, or if it just remembers them. No, it doesn't seem to remember them. Okay, what if I just click OK? OK, and then now let it continue. And then pause it again, because now I've got four. That one. Now, what do you do with that? doesn't let me copy or paste it, which is kind of annoying. F F O O F seven So what do we do with the code? That's the memory address and is that the hex value potentially? <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's insane. Oh, -hoo -hoo! Oh, I love it. I love it. That's more fun than friggin' playing the game. I wish I had an action replay as a kid. I'd love that. I had a uh, multi face two for the Amstrad, and that's exactly what it did. I have I have got a I've got a multi phase two on the Amstrad that I fixed. I had a broken one. I had it for twenty plus years, and when I finally got an Amstrad, it wouldn't work. And when I opened it, none of the chips are inside. So I had somebody. I, I actually found the right chips that I needed, and I got somebody to burn the EEPROM for me, and they posted it to me, and it friggin' worked. And I haven't done a video about that either. <laughs> That's amazing. Actually, I'm disappointed it worked because I could have maybe begged the the case from you. Well, I reckon what I could do, if there's a... I keep facing it on patrons. If I have a hundred, I do a project to think, but I end up doing projects anyway. But I will copy the multi-face, 3D print a case, and make a whole reproduction one. Yeah, I've got the I've got the multi-face. Someone's, someone's made one for me, but I need a case for it. Oh, Nigel, hex editing is... is Awesome. I, 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 I use hex editors nearly daily. Um, I still do a lot with code and at the end of the day you need to get down to those bits and bites, don't you? Do you know that guy Duncan that made the, the text do we know thing? I don't. 
Sad Ken's friend, Duncan. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he makes cases for his thing, but he doesn't 3D print them. He buys these kind of pre made cases that are a really good size and just cuts them custom to it, and it looks a bit better. Yeah, if you get the right shape size, because there are millions of different shapes, types, and sizes, and you can put them in your CNC milling machine or laser cutter and cut all the apertures too, it'll look really good too. Save you a lot of time on Dremelin. I'm gonna so be. I, I think. I, I think my streams are just gonna be ha hacking games now. That's. I, I kind of want like let's just messing with them. So is this fucking bat? I think this bat is the key. I think you've got to somehow damage this thing before it pisses off. Otherwise, you'd be there forever punching that stupid thing. Oh. Good. Five hours I've been at this. Bedtime. Coffee time. Anything else time. Cool, let's put the music up. If I can. monstrous visage disappeared into the lake and the terror mask has left me well oh, I didn't even really manage to read that but what of the mask <laughs> oh it was caused by the mask Oh, so it was just a normal schmo. Good. Well, oh my gosh, everybody in the chat, thank you so much for the hacking advice. I don't think um, I'd have figured that out, but now I know the process. That's going to be mega fun. I'm guessing the reason it didn't work with the ones from the interweb is that there's so many ROMs of these games, so I guess it could be just a different ROM. So all the memory addresses will be different. Or it could be in the Yes. And thank you, Veloc... Ve Velocera... Hey, did you know that Velociraptors were meant to be really tiny and just look like chickens? Yeah, chicken size. Chicken size. Chicken size. There's a feathers as well, so it's probably not far off a chicken. Yeah, more of a turkey. Maybe a turkey. More of a turkey. More of a turkey indeed. So I think it's five five hours and four minutes. I think I've got to sign off. I think I've got to sign off. So thanks guys. I'm not gonna play the whole ending. If you wanna see it, go on someone else's stream. <laughs> good night. Have a good weekend and uh, well I'll see you probably tomorrow with a new video. Look out for it.